Welcome into our live NBA trade deadline coverage. I am Tom Downey. That is Will Scott. We've got producers Jeff Cooperstein and Jack Lotteray behind the scenes as well. We'll call them Jack and Coop throughout the night to keep you guys aware of who they actually are since we never actually call you Jeff, do we? It's, oh, it's, just, it's only Coop in there. We've got a trade already uh, beyond the Kevin Durant 1 a.m. BS that went down there. You're Celtics host, Will. Break down that the trade for us. Yeah, so the Celtics uh, wanted to address kind of the two and the three mm -hmm. after Jalen Brown's injury last night. So if y'all missed it, Jalen Brown suffered a facial fracture against the Philadelphia 76ers in that win. I thought it would increase the Celtics' willingness to get a deal done. They have done that. They're getting Mike Muscala, who is a very good three-point shooter, playing this season with the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder are getting Justin Jackson, who was at the back of the Celtics bench this year, really didn't play that much. They're also getting two second-round picks as well. The Celtics had three second-round picks this year. We don't know what year on the second round picks. I'm assuming 2023, but they did have some draft capital in the second round to give up, Tom. So Muscala heading to the Celtics. They were in the mix for Jakob Pertl. Do not yeah. quite get that deal done. We'll break down that trade and other ones later on. We will also do this trade briefly here. We'll get the graphics on the screen in a moment. Jay Crowder is on the move. He, of course, part of the Suns. Though He's going to the Milwaukee Bucks for not one, not two, not three, not four, but five second wow. round picks. I love NBA trades. Five second rounders. Okay, sure. Like, will they be anything? Who knows? But five seconds on the move in exchange for Jay Crowd. We'll hit that trade. The other ones here. Spend some more time on the Mike Muscala deal in a moment. But questions for you guys in the live audience. Shout out your city for us in the comment section. I'll give some shout outs here momentarily. I see Portland, Oregon, and yes, Daniel Moriarty. Five second round picks for Jay Crowder, which is wild. I love NBA wild. trades. They're wild. so funny. I, those will, I will probably be late second rounders. Um, there would have to be a salary match involved, a match there too. Uh, so we'll see what that ends up looking like here in a little bit for the Bucks and Nets because, again, NBA trades are kind of weird, especially for you who tend to follow the NFL more. I got New York, Monterey, Detroit, Chicago, Des Moines, Birmingham, Youngstown, Golden State, Victoria, and Woodstock, both in Canada, LA, Detroit, San Antonio, CLT, Birmingham, Los Angeles, Los Angeles. We got Turkey in the live chat too. Uh, Los Angeles, Carolina, Los Angeles, Dayton, Munich, Germany, Austin, Greece, Dallas, Germany. So we're going international on today's live show. Keep those comments coming with your city in there. Philippines, Manila, Lake Titicaca, H-Town. I feel like that last one's made up, but it's funny. Uh, or I guess second to last one. I know, but I feel like he's not actually from there. No one's from there. Hamilton City, California. Sherman, Serbia, Belgium. It's like if anyone says they're from Wyoming. No, you're not. Uh, Birmingham, Miami, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio is in there. Keep the comments flowing. This is the initial trade details on the Jay Crowder deal. Five second rounders going to the Nets. There would need to be, I believe, some, uh, and I'll pull it up here. I'll get, I'll get the trade machine cooking. There would need to be some um, money being balanced out there. Right. But thoughts on this trade here, Will? Yeah, I mean, you look at Jay Crowder. He was involved in the Kevin Durant deal going from the Suns to Brooklyn. There was some drama with him and the Suns this year. He did not even play in Phoenix this year, kind mm -hmm. of sitting out waiting for a trade. Day of the deadline, he finally gets a trade uh, going from Phoenix to Brooklyn and now from Brooklyn to Milwaukee. And I think the thinking was, um, regardless of what Brooklyn was going to do at the deadline after the Kevin Durant deal, they, they did want to have maybe that one move after the Durant deal being to send Jay Crowder. Now, are they going to keep Mikel Bridges? I don't know. Are they going to keep Cam Johnson? I'm not sure. Uh, but they did want to move Jay Crowder, and they have done that sending him to Milwaukee for five, not when the, what did LeBron say with the Heat not too long, uh, 10 years ago? Not one, not two, not three, not four, five second round picks uh, going to the box. And look, Brooklyn is trying to build up some draft capital. They might be headed hmm. toward a rebuild. They didn't really have any draft capital uh, this time last year. But after the James Harden trade, after the Kyrie Irving trade, after the Kevin Durant trade, 
they now have some draft capital trying to kind of build those picks back up after they traded a lot of picks to Houston in the James Harden deal. Yeah, this deal is going to be interesting from the money perspective. Might have to be someone like a Joe Ingles going back to the Nets as the salary filler, and then uh, like other pieces involved too. So we'll, that deal's not done. The money still has to get worked out, but the gist of it is five second rounders the Nets are getting back in exchange for one Jay Crowder. So we'll have some fun on that one throughout today's show. More trades, I'm sure, will be coming. I have very little doubts about that one. We're going to keep you guys covered throughout today's live show with all the trades, and it's all made possible by Athletic Greens. That's what's sponsoring today's edition of NBA Now, the live trade deadline coverage. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health, and I want a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 AG1 in the morning, and it makes me feel prepared to take on my day. I take my AG1 first thing in the morning, and I no longer feel the need for caffeine anymore, and I feel energized throughout the day. Plus, AG1 empowers the gut for whole body health. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be any easier, and that's why I trust Athletic Greens. I mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first in the morning. Well, I actually had it with apple juice today. It also costs about three bucks a day, and that's pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily hat with the highest quality sourced ingredients, making it the old win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D vitamin D, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Links in the comment section, the live comment section, and the description of today's video. It's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. To have some more fun here, Will, uh, as the Lakers are now making a trade too, by the way. Uh, we'll get that in a second. Name a player you think it's traded. We'll have, I'll have you give some shout-outs here. A somewhat minor Lakers trade going on here. Thomas Bryant heading to the Denver Nuggets for uh, Devon, I think that's how you say his first name. Devon, Devon Reed. Reed and three second-round picks. So we are eight minutes into, into today's live show, and eight th second-round picks have been traded already. It's really interesting. Eight of them. Thomas Bryant was starting on this Lakers team. Uh, I'm very surprised to see him on the move. Maybe the mm -hmm. Lakers have something else lined up. They apparently had interest in Yaka mm -hmm. Pirtle, but Pirtle is now uh, Toronto bound. Is, is Jeff Cooperstein's reminding me they now have Jared Vanderbilt on mm -hmm. uh, on their team after the trade yesterday. So maybe they'll, you know, maybe they're kind of opening the door for him to start. Mm -hmm. uh, Chua Laura saying James Wiseman could get moved. That's very possible. Robbie saying LaMelo Ball. I don't I don't think so. I think they're going to hold on to him. Liam Taylor saying James Wiseman. A lot of people saying James Wiseman in the chat. I think a fresh start would be really good for him. Arseem is saying Eric Gordon. Very possible. I know the Celtics inquired about him yesterday, but they just traded for Mike Muscala. They're probably out on Eric mm -hmm. Gordon. We got Hanoon saying OG Ananobi. Mike saying Kelly Oubre. Insight saying Woj Bomb. Yep, Woj Bomb. We're going to break that down more here in a second. Robert saying AD. I know, we, we, we can't say Thomas Bryant is a Woj Bomb. That's true. That's like... Well, what qualifies as a Woj that, Bomb? That, 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 that's like a Woj smoke grenade. It, it, it doesn't even <laughs> cause any damage. Uh, uh, Kevin, the, uh, the Kevin Durant was a Woj nuke. That's a Woj nuke. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Durant was a Woj nuke. Uh, I don't know if this count. This counts as like, a, like you said, a smoke bomb. A smoke bomb. Like it's just like we'll take it. A little minor, like they clear out the room before the, the big stuff comes in. At, or this flash grenade, whatever. Like that's uh, that's all that is. So. Sad saying Peyton Pritchard, very possible. We do know mm. that the Celtics offered Peyton Pritchard in a deal for Yaka Pertl, mm. but the Spurs did not get a first round pick from the Celtics in that deal. Mm. They declined it as we take a look at the trade details here. So Denver gets Thomas Bryant. The Lakers get Devon Reed. Three second-round picks. Y'all go down in the comments. Give us your thoughts on this deal. Uh, D.A., by the way, Coop. Thank you. Uh, so it's an interesting deal. Uh, Reed does not do much. Hasn't done much, I should say, for the Nuggets. And it feels like this is more of a Lakers just shuffling the back end of their roster. Though yeah. Bryant's been, been decent for L.A. this year. Yeah, he's, he's been, actually, he's, actually been okay. he, he's been quite good. I would say he's got twelve points a game. That's that's a good pickup for Denver. I mean, it really oh, is. The Lakers doing that there. 
That's very interesting to me. Well, uh, Coop brings up a good point. They got Jared Vanderbilt in that in that mm-hmm. trade, but isn't Vanderbilt more of a four than a five? I guess he can he play can both. He can play some five. They also shipped out Damian Jones, but they have Rui Hachimura, so I think they're trying to give minutes to Hachimura, Davis, and Vanderbilt yeah. over Thomas Br- or Th- Thomas Bryant there in the end. And LeBron can play small ball four too. So I wonder if the Lakers are not done yet. That, that, that'd be my, that'd be, that'd be my suspicion there. Some super chats. Let's get to these here from Olove. Should the Lakers make a trade for Mikhail Bridges? You can go first here, Will. Yeah, Bridges, I think, would be a good fit on the Lakers. Um, it's probably going to take three first-round picks to get him. We know how uh, Rob Palenka feels about those future first round Which picks. Which they don't now. even really have now. <laughs> so. Exactly. Uh, the, so the capital to pull that off, I don't know if they have. The, the should, yes. Can they? Uh, I don't know about that one. Yeah, don't know I, about I would that tend one. to agree. I don't think Bridges will. And there was a report earlier mm. that the Nets are planning to hold on to Bridges. Mm. Ahead of the deadline. I so would we'll wonder see. if that's just leverage type of deal. Right. All right. From Painful Punching Cat, I'm back. Y'all are so entertaining. Keep it up. Thank you, my friend. Happy to have you here. Punching Cat. And Jameer CP is Bones Highland getting traded. That is the Nuggets backup guard. I would not be surprised if he gets moved. I, that's I kind agree. of been the buzz for the past couple of days here. There's been a lot of teams linked to him. Good young player, just his second year in the league, uh, but on a Denver team right now where he's just not getting as many minutes. He's mm-hmm. just averaging eight minutes per game in their last six games. So maybe a different uh, been a DMP. F- exactly. Two games down. Yeah. Row two. I I think a different spot for him might be the best option for for both mm-hmm. sides moving forward. This is our super chat menu for you guys tonight. One dollars a shout out. Five dollars beer cheers. $10, whoever your team is, we will talk about them. $20 for some shots. I've got Jack Daniels. Did, did you grab your fireball or did you not? I got the shot glass. Oh, I'll, you, I'll have some shit. You want some, some Jack? Jack? All right, you can do Jack Shout instead. out Chad Jones, Tennessee whiskey. There you go. And then $100, one of us will do a beer bong or a shotgun. Promise it won't get spilled it, it, it is my promise there. So I'll do the first beer. Cheers from the $5 from Olove. Get that in there. Uh, note from our producer, Jack, here. We'll get this updated graphically in a moment. The Jay Crowder trade is a three-team trade, which I find interesting. Uh, Indiana is going to get Jordan Norwa and two second-rounders in this Bucks. They're also going to waive uh, Jimmy's in shambles. Goga Bitadze is being waived by the Indiana Pacers. So a lot of movement going on there in the NBA. We've got a couple trades already in the first 15 minutes we've been live here. We'll spend some more time momentarily on the Mike Muscala trade as well as the Celtics find their backup big, kind of play some four, play some five for them, good three-point shooter. feel like Mike Muscala is either in trade rumors or traded almost every single offseason. Like, yeah, or, or, or trade deadline year. I know that just happens every time. He's been a guy that, that I've had somewhat of an eye on for a while just because mm-hmm. the Thunder are a team that probably mm-hmm. going to sell the deadline. Even though Thunder have exceeded expectations this year, but Mike mm-hmm. Muscala, 31 years old, not a part of their long-term plans. All right, so that's our Super Chat menu, folks. Colin McDowell, we see your Super Chat. We're going to break down some of the trades here. Then we'll get to your Super Chat, Vision TV as well, but... There are some trades we want to get to here as part of today's live NBA trade deadline coverage. The Celtics have made a trade. Tom Downey and your normal Celtics host, Will Scott, here to break down the trade as Mike Muscala heading to Boston in exchange for Justin Jackson and two second-round picks. Boston was in the mix for Jakob Pertl. They go to a different backup big man option and a good shooter, Will, yeah. in Mike Muscala. Some initial thoughts on this trade as we'll break it down here. Well, the Celtics were looking to do two things at the trade deadline. Number one, get a backup big. Number two, get a shooter. Mike Muscala, you got both. He's a big man that can shoot the three pretty well. Overall, I think this is a decent deal for Boston. Celtics getting Mike Muscala. They're giving up Justin Jackson, who, of course, was at the back of the bench this year for Boston. Hardly played. He was expected to get moved today. They're also giving up two second-round picks. We don't know what year those second-round picks are yet, but the Celtics did have three second-round picks this year, so they had some draft capital in the second round to kind of move around. 
Yeah, the second round picks in the NBA uh, Meaningless. normally don't matter very much. It's the in NFL terms, you traded a six round pick is yeah. kind of how I describe that there. So Celtics get a, a good shooter, Muscal, who's still only in his age thirty one season, it is a reliable three point shooter. He's shooting just under forty percent from deep this year. He's been good in that area. So Celtics fans or anyone else watching right now, grade this trade for us. A, B, C, D, or F. We will go ahead and make this the pinned comments on today's video. So if by chance an ad break comes here on YouTube, well, ignore the ad. Let it play. Head down there and chime in with other fellow Celtics fans and grade it A, B, C, D, or F right now at the pinned comment. Look at how Mike Muscala has done this year, Tom. You mentioned he's a really good three-point shooter, just shooting under 40% from three. I believe now he's the third best three-point shooter on the Celtics in terms of a percentage there. Uh, they haven't been as good shooting the threes. Maybe they'd like to be this year. Shooting just under 44% from the floor, 6.2 points per game, 14.5 minutes per game. And, you know, I kind of mentioned – um, earlier that the Thunder were probably going to be looking to move some of their older guys. This is a young team that's still kind of rebuilding. Yeah, they've exceeded expectations this year, competing for a playing spot in the Western Conference right now. But Mike Muscala was certainly a trade candidate in Oklahoma City. So I think this deal makes a lot of sense for both sides, quite frankly. And the Celtics and desperately needed some depth down low. I mean, yeah, they won last night, but Robert Williams was out. Al Horford was out. You don't want to be in a situation where that comes in a playoff game and you're, and you're having to have Luke Cornett play 20 minutes. Uh, and Luke Cornett's done okay this year. That's not a shot at Luke Cornett, but Mike Muscala is probably just a better backup big to back up Al Horford and Robert Williams. We we asked the audience here to grade the trade. Uh, what would you grade the trade? Seems like you're you're high on it, but it's, letter it's grade. It's a solid B+. Plus. I'm mm -hmm. a little bit is, you know, a Celtics a guy here at Chat Sports a little bit disappointed they couldn't land Jakob Pertl. But at the same time, Jakob Pertl is a starting center. The Celtics yeah. did not need a starting center. You have Robert Williams. You mm. have Al Horford. Mike Muscala is really what you needed, a good, reliable backup big man that can also shoot. Nas Reed kind of fit that description as well. Mike mm. Muscala probably a little bit cheaper than Nas Reed. It's Nas mm -hmm. Reed is still on his rookie contract. He's averaging over 10 a game. So I think this is a really good deal for Boston. Adds a lot more depth to this kinda, team. Kind of feels like they had a, a this is what we're willing to move there, mm -hmm. but you know what What could we get for right. that? And I think Muscat fits that a lot better. It, it is worth noting, uh, Tom, that they did offer a trade for Jakob Pertl. Mm -hmm. They offered Peyton Pritchard. They offered Danilo Gallinari. And they offered a couple second-round picks. The Spurs declined San Antonio. Mm. They're in rebuilding mode. They're in tank mode. They probably wanted a mm. first-round pick. But it's interesting uh, that the Celtics did offer Peyton Pritchard in a deal. So something to monitor yeah. if Peyton Pritchard's going to get moved here in the next couple hours. Yeah. So we'll see what goes down. want to tell you about today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. Shout out to them for sponsoring today's show. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day, and I gave it a try because I wanted better gut health and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. And you can get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chatsports. I take AG1 every morning, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. I came into this year wanting to get healthier, and starting my year on AG1 has helped me do just that. I take it every morning. I feel happier, healthier, and more energized. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally could not be any easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. Done. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day. It's pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. Win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash chatsports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chatsports. The link is in the comments and the description of this video. I've been taking AG1 now a few weeks. I already feel the benefits. And, you know, I think I find it really interesting, too, that it helps me feel more energized because before I was drinking soda to try to get my energy up. But AG1 is a lot better for me than maybe having a soda every day. AG1, I really feel a lot better taking it every single day. Athleticgreens.com slash chat sports as we go back to the trade details here. You know, Tom, the Celtics right now are in a good spot in the East. Number one in the Eastern mm -hmm. Conference right now. 
And the East, though, is still a very tough conference. You have Milwaukee. You have the 76ers, who the Celtics beat last night. But I wonder But the Nets are out. (laughs) Exactly. Brooklyn's out. But I wonder if two things kind of increase the Celtics' willingness to be active here at the trade deadline. Mm -hmm. Number one, the Jalen Brown injury. Now, Muscala plays a different position, but still, it's important to maybe make some moves here today. Number two, uh, the trades that we've seen in the Western Conference go down the the last couple of days, and maybe the Celtics are not the clear-cut favorites to win the title anymore. I think they are. Some people might disagree. I think for the East, yes. I think the West, I would lean Suns, and I think I'd take Ticks to take the sun slightly over Boston because it's mm-hmm. it's Booker, it's KD, it's Aiton, it's Chris veteran Paul. Chris Paul in there. So I think Boston doing a good job to acquire a backup big. I do wonder if they're done at this point. That's something we'll monitor. And we'll keep you guys covered on because you can subscribe, Will, right? Yeah, absolutely. Be sure to subscribe to Celtics today. We're going to have you covered. And uh, Tom, I don't think the Celtics are done making moves yeah. today. I do believe they will make another move by the trade deadline. So be sure to subscribe to our Celtics channel, youtube.com slash Celtics TV. We're going to get you guys another video if the Celtics make another move. Peyton Pritchard again, a name to watch. Danilo Gallinari, a name to watch. And they're in a tough spot right now with Gallinari because he has not played this year. He tore his ACL playing in Europe last summer. Mm -hmm. He's been with the team. You know, some guys that get hurt aren't really around the team very much. Gallo has not been that guy. He's been in the weight room. He's been in the training room rehabbing at the Celtics team facility. So I just I don't know how I would feel about trading Gallo when, when he's been rehabbing, when he's been hurt. Uh, very, very slim chance he plays this year. Uh, I would say that's going up from 0 to 1% that he plays this year just based on how the recovery uh, has been going. But he's a name to watch as well. Now, the Celtics have addressed – the backup big situation. So I don't expect them to trade for a Nas Reed or Nerlens Noel or anything like that. If they do make another move today, maybe it's for a shooter off the bench. Maybe you give San Antonio a call about Dougie McBuckets. I'm not sure, uh, but certainly something to monitor as we once again take a look at this trade. Celtics getting Mike Muscala from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma City receiving Justin Jackson, two second-round picks from the Boston Celtics. Go down to the comment section. Great trade. A, B, C, D, or F. You guys get those votes in right now. We'll hit some super chats, break down any more trades that come in here. We have some details on that Thomas Bryant uh, trade. I think I saw the years on those picks. Let me double check. We also have this, by the way, the three-team trade continuing to stabilize here. Nets get five second-round picks. Bucks get Jay Crowder. Pacers get Jordan Norwa. Uh, and then two second round picks. I'm not sure if there's any overlap with those second rounders, but we'll see. We have some news. Mm. Golden State and Detroit in conversations for Sadiq Bay. Very interesting. With, with the Warriors' willingness increasing to move James Wiseman. Wow. So maybe a Which James is... Wiseman for Sadiq Bay swap? I think that would fall in the. Uh, uh, Woj bomb category. Yeah, I would say that. That's it's, not a smoke screen. That, that, that's, that's a bomb. That's not, if it goes down, that's more of a bomb. And actually, that, that, that's a Jake Fisher bomb. That's that's still in the rumors category. Still in the rumors category, at least for now. But we'll keep an eye on that one here. Uh, we're also going to break down more in depth momentarily this Nuggets Lakers trade. Nuggets get Thomas Bryant. Lakers get Devon Reed, which or Devon Reed, which is kind of just. It's more about second round picks and I think freeing up minutes for other big men like Jared Vanderbilt. And it's very it's interesting. And I wonder if the Lakers are plotting something come buyout market time for maybe another backup big man. Yeah, that's kind of my thinking as well. Uh, I'm really mm-hmm. surprised by this, Tom. We haven't heard that Thomas Bryant has been in trade conversations mm-hmm. the last couple of days. I think Denver maybe wanted to go after a center here at the deadline, but Thomas Bryant certainly not the name mm-hmm. that I was expecting. The Lakers just made that move yesterday, getting D'Angelo Russell, getting Jared Vanderbilt, getting Mm -hmm. Malik Beasley. Maybe they feel like they did not need Thomas Bryant anymore, but you're also right. They could make another move here today. Some super chats will hit, then we'll go more in depth on that trade. From Colin McDowell, $10, we'll talk about your team. Can you talk about the Rockets? Will, take it away. Well, you know, there is someone from Houston in the room, so Colin, you're asking the right guy here. Uh, The Rockets... Uh, if you missed it, uh, Colin, the Rockets are apparently going after Mikel Bridges, which is really interesting. Now, uh, the Rockets obviously expected to be sellers here at the deadline, mm-hmm. so if they trade for a guy like Bridges, that's a little bit surprising. But here's what that signals to me. 
Houston still feels like, even if they trade for Bridges, they're going to be very much in the Wimbenyama sweepstakes, obviously. Mm -hmm. a, a trade like that doesn't change that. The, the Rockets are probably still going to be it, bottom three, bottom four in the NBA. But that signals to me that they're trying to win next year. And they feel like next year is a year where they can be a playoff team, at least contend for a play-in spot. Mm -hmm. James Harden, a lot of people believe he's going to be back in Houston next year. So if you trade for Mikel Bridges today, giving Brooklyn back some of those first-round picks that you got mm -hmm. in the James Harden deal, and your lineup looks like this, James Harden, Jalen Green, Mikel Bridges, uh, Victor Wimbanyama, and Alfred Shingoon, that's a top five team in the West next year. Yeah, 100% it is. Coop, who's our Mavs guy, is disagreeing very <laughs> loudly but, but uh, to, <laughs> in the background here. But, uh, but to uh, go back to what you said, Kyle, in terms of talking about what the Rockets might do today, I don't expect a Bridges deal to get done today. Apparently the Nets want to hold on to him, but it's good to see the Rockets are at least inquiring about uh, Mikel Bridges. Now, I do believe uh, that Eric Gordon might get traded by the end of the day. I think the Rockets would be foolish not to trade mm. EG at this point. All right, from Vision TV, any news on the Hornets? The satisfaction of mediocrity is ridiculous. If they don't make any moves, I'm no longer a fan. I have heard next to nothing uh, on the Charlotte side. I, If I were them, I would be selling players. Like, are you going to move Kelly Oubre? Like, he doesn't help you. Like, that's what I would do if, if I were the Hornets. Because I don't... Yeah. DJ Washington can get moved too if you're not going to pay him long term. Like I, Terry Rozier is another name to watch. Which like that trade rumors. which never made sense to me. The signing is just not that good. Uh, so it's just I. What up? What's up? These numbers. This is his uh, shot percentage is not very good. He's, he's he's a volume guy who I don't yeah. think is is nearly efficient enough and can't be your best player on your team or second best. I guess that's I don't expect him to be the Lamello? guy that gets traded today. Maybe I, PJ I agree. Washington is the name to watch there. And I'm sure okay. he's a guy that might get some interest some interest as well. So, yeah. All right, that Vision, I, I hope for your sake a trade ends up going down here. Quickly on the dollar, $2.01, your productions, Tom. Why don't we have an NBA team you cover? Because I'm the swing guy. I go uh, different teams when needed and tend to focus more on NFL outside of the big events, like today's NBA trade deadline. From Delta... Pisa MF. Dallas is five firsts and two seconds. Anyone not named Luca or Kyrie on the table? Are they real candidates to trade for an elite big with that capital? Why don't you give Coop the mic here, and, and let and, and let Coop as our as our resident Mavs expert chime in here, getting a big man. Which first off, they need a big man. I don't think the five first is right. They don't have five first available, and they don't have a pick of it. They have their 25 and 27 available, so they only have two to trade right now. Yeah, they definitely do need some big man depth, especially on the defensive side of the ball, but I'm not sure if they can get that here today unless they're going for a more minor move like a Nerland's Noel perhaps, but I don't know if a major move out there is, is really out there for the Mavs right now. I'd say maybe they move Wood and get something back. Yeah, at some level there. I, I think Christian Wood might be on the move. Tim Hardaway as well. So we'll we'll mm. see what happens there. But I think their main priority is is defense, whether that's a wing or a big. All right. From Matt Batten, we'll go quick on this one. Two dollars. Go Lakers. Go. Go Dallas Cowboys. Love you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. And a fifty dollars super oh, chat oh. from Mister Stegosaurus. How about the Pistons? They got a good future, right? It talks about the Pistons here. What's what's our? Do we have a fifty dollars menu item, or is it one hundred and twenty? If it, I might, I might do a free beer bong if so, or maybe a half beer bong. I'll do a half beer bong for that then. How about that? I want you to take away Pistons yeah, talk here, Yeah, for sure. Will. The Pistons have That's a right bright here, future. It. They got Jay Nivey. They got Kate Cunningham. I'm, I'm I think that Detroit is moving in the right direction. They're going to continue to try to build their draft capital, so maybe they can uh, make a move for a top 15, top 20 player in the years to come when the Pistons are contending for a playoff spot. If you're looking at what could happen today, uh, with Detroit, Mr. Stegostoris. I do believe that Bojan uh, Bogdanovich is a name that could be traded. Now, Nerlens Noel is apparently getting some interest from Philadelphia and some other teams, and he's the back of the Pistons bench right now, so I think it makes a lot of sense. Plus the uh, Wiseman, him. Sadiq Bay trade yeah. rumors that are That's out crazy. there. So, yeah, if you missed it, uh, Mr. Stegostoris, we have uh, a report here from Jake Fisher, Bleacher Report, saying that Golden State and Detroit are in conversations to four, trade four. Zadik Pay and James Wiseman could be going back.
to Detroit in that deal, which would be an awesome pickup for Detroit. You're talking about a former top three pick not too long ago. So uh, that is something to watch right now. Uh, they also, let's see, I'm going to read this I can also tweet. see him trading away Nerland's Noel, too, in, in, a, in a potentially different move, especially if and when they get Wiseman. And Jake Fisher says, sounds like the Warriors are weighing an option, or I should say weighing an offer from Detroit against other win-now trade opportunities on the wing. Makes sense. I, I think that's one certainly to monitor. We'll see if anything else pops up there. But I, I would be surprised if we left today and there were no moves at all involving Detroit. I, I would th- be very surprised. In fact, I think there might be multiple moves yeah. with maybe a Nerlens Noel, uh, maybe a Burks if they're trying to ship off some contract stuff. I can, and see, we'll I see. can see Burks getting moved as well. Oh, and of course, Bogdanovich. So. All right, get, run through the Super Chat menu while I, I do this beer bong. We got $1 shout-out, $5 it. beer. Cheers. Tom Half and I are bong. both enjoying some beer here. $10, talk about your team. We've talked about the Pistons. We've talked about the Rockets. $10 Super Chat, we'll talk about your team. $20, we'll take some shots. $100, we'll do a beer bong or a beer shotgun. Tom, how was the beer bong, my friend? It was good. It, it, yeah. was, it wasn't as cold as I was worried it was going to be, so it, it worked out perfectly. So, All right, we're going to break down here momentarily more on that Lakers trade that went down. Which is, is a very curious one uh, as far as I'm concerned. So we'll spend time on that. Keep the Supers coming. We'll hit any other Supers that come in and more trades in just a moment as we break down this Lakers trade. The NBA trade deadline is here and the Lakers are wheeling and dealing. Another move made by LA. And we'll spend time on this. And I wonder if this is a precursor to something else going on in terms of a... Another, maybe more minor, maybe even a a, a buyout market move. But Denver is getting Thomas Bryant from the Lakers in exchange for Davon Reed and three second round picks in 2025, 2026, and 2029. I will make some quick notes here on the uh, monetary contract impacts here. Let me make sure I pull it up here. Bryant in the last year of his deal, 1.8 million expiring. Reed's got 1.9 million this year and a non-guaranteed 2.1 million contract next year. Both teams actually create some trade exemptions of fairly similar money there. It's a bit of an interesting move, Will, and my suspicion here is that the Lakers are trying to free up minutes and and opportunities for some of their recently acquired big men. Rui Hachimura, uh, uh, Wenyan Gabriel, potentially is not really recently acquired, and of course you're at Vanderbilt too. What do you make of this deal specifically for, for the Lakers side? I'm surprised, but I think you make a good point when you bring up the players that were acquired in yesterday's Russell Westbrook, D'Angelo Russell trade, because you do get Jared Vanderbilt, so maybe it's the plan to kind of open up Uh, some playing time for him, and that's why they wanted to ship out Thomas Bryant, acquire three second-round picks, which I think is a good deal. Also, you had some guard depth as well with Reed. Now, maybe they'll start Hatchimer at the four, Anthony Davis at the five, have have Jared Vanderbilt kind of serve as the backup big to AD. I'm surprised by this move, but the more I think about it, the more it makes some sense for the Lakers. Now, going back to the trade yesterday that brought in D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, and Jared Vanderbilt. You send Russell Westbrook and Juan Toscano-Anderson to Utah. Mike Conley ends up in Minnesota in a blockbuster trade that we saw go down yesterday. So, you know, uh, Producer Coop, shout out to him. The first thing that he said when this trade went down with the Thomas Bryant trade, we're both looking at each other a little bit surprised. He said Jared Vanderbilt, and I think that's the thinking here to open up the door uh, to have him have a pretty big role in this team. And draft picks, which, again, right. no one... Three, three second-round picks for Thomas Bryant. I mean... They could be any. It's it could not, be a, not bad. Could be a backup big man that you have in the future. I, right. I'm not really that... I feel like there's more coming here, slash maybe the Lakers try to do some other stuff, but I'm not overly uh, in love with this one, but I love the, the D'Angelo Russell trade, so mm-hmm. it... Combine them, I still think Lakers had a great trade deadline. For this trade specifically, we want your guys' thoughts. Grade the trade for us in the comments section. A, B, C, D, or F. If the ad break happens to come here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, let us know your grade for that trade. A, B, C, D, or F. Over now to Thomas Bryant, some conversation on him. He's only taking about a a, a three-point shot per game, so... 
the percentage, a little bit deceptive, but I thought he was having a pretty good year for the Lakers, yeah. still only in his age 25 season. 12.1 points per game, uh, averaging about a half block as well. A little high on the turnover numbers, but the usage has been a little bit higher for his minutes there. 25 starts this year, uh, 21.4 minutes per game. But there are other backup options along or at, at the big man spot for L.A. now, so Bryant became a little bit expendable. Yeah, you know, that's kind of my thinking as well. He was having a good year. I think that he kind of met, maybe even exceeded the expectations uh, that the team had for him, averaging over 12 points per game, had a pretty big role starting sometimes uh, coming off the bench sometimes as well. So I like Thomas Bryant, you know, certainly wish him well in Denver. I think this is a really good deal for the Nuggets, but maybe this is kind of a deal you look at that makes sense for both sides. Today's show is made possible by Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and I wanted a supplement that actually tastes good. Great. I take AG1 in the morning, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. Once I've got my kid, baby Livia, one year and three months old, set up with her breakfast, I take my own AG1. I don't feel the need for caffeine in the morning anymore, and I feel energized throughout the day. Plus, AG1 empowers the gut for whole body health. Covering my nutritional bases of the day literally couldn't be any easier. And that's why I trust Athletic Greens. I mix one small scoop of AG1 with water or with apple juice some mornings and drink it first thing. Done just like that. I like that it costs less than $3 a day. That's pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. That's a win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Links in the comment section and the description of today's video. I'm trying to do a little bit better, take care of your body a bit better. You should definitely be using Athletic Greens. Try it out today. I do not think you will regret it at all. It's worth noting, Tom, Ramona Shelburne mm -hmm. of ESPN just said this. Thomas Bryant grew, ha grew unhappy with his diminished role since Anthony Davis returned and wanted to be in a better situation. Oh. So it looks like he might have kind of nudged Rob Palenka requesting a trade. Okay. So now he's going to go back up Jokic and yeah. still be a back. Okay. <laughs> uh, whatever. All right. Fine. Yeah. That's fine. I did want to spend just a little bit of time here on this D'Angelo Russell because I think this is a big precursor as to why this deal ends up going down. Uh, Davon Reed is averaging 2.3 points per game, 36.4% from deep on like a three and a half per game. He's playing nine minutes a game. Like he's a backup guard. But I love the D'Angelo Russell deal. And I also love the, we'll get to the little bit here, the Rui Hachimura deal. I think the Lakers have had a great deadline expanding to the Hachimura trade. I'm a big fan of what they've done. I think the roster's in much better shape than what it was even two months ago, whatever. I agree. You know, right now the Lakers are 13th in the West, five games under 500. This is a team well, that needs to start winning games and winning games now. They wouldn't have any mm -hmm. shot at getting into the play in or even making the playoffs. And I think the moves they've mm -hmm. made have made them a much better basketball team. Now, did they land the big fish? Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, did they make a huge mm. blockbuster move? Maybe not necessarily, but you get D'Angelo Russell, who's a really good player, and you're familiar with him. Mm. Uh, you get uh, Rui Hachimura, who I think mm. is a really good up-and-coming player. Uh, you mm. trade Thomas Bryant. Uh, you mm. get some draft capital back in return for him. I think this has been a really solid Deadline for Rob Palenka in the Lake Show. I completely agree. If you guys want more Lakers coverage, this is your spot. If more moves come, we'll break it down. We'll do buyout candidates in the, well, tomorrow most likely here. So hit that sub button. Free Lakers videos, news, rumors, analysis, trades, whatever. We have you guys covered. Hit that sub button. YouTube.com slash at Lakers TV. All right, Will, you think there are any more moves coming? for the Lakers here. Of course, they wing defense, I think that's important. Like, Russell's not a great defender there. Maybe they look that route, but I think if they 
don't do anything else, they've still accomplished so much already. Yeah, it's. I wouldn't be surprised if they did make another minor move. I don't think they're going to trade for you know Damian Lillard or anybody huge like that. Now, Damian <laughs> he's Lillard not available. Apparently, is, is not available. He's been getting calls. Um, mm -hmm. But I would not be shocked if they made another move. But at the same time, I feel like they should be pretty good. It, it feel mm -hmm. pretty good about what they've done here in the last couple of days. All right, final thoughts here. You guys can grade the Lakers roster A, B, C, D, or F. Let us know in the comment section. I'm going to go with I for improved. I'm yes. going to cheat yep. all together and make it just a little bit better from that standpoint. All right, get those votes in there in the comment section. We've got trades going on left and right so we have a three team trade going on here blazers are getting matisse steibel from the 76ers jalen mcdaniels from the hornets is going to uh uh philadelphia here and the hornets are getting multiple second round picks the blazers i think this is more for the money standpoint are also sending svi mccallook from the josh hart trade over to charlotte so uh, who was our uh, our uh, Hornets fan? V Vision TV. They did something. I don't know if that's what you wanted them to do, but they did make a move in the end for the Hornets. So a lot going on here. Will thoughts on this trade? That yeah, was the we, supers. We knew, we knew Matisse Thybul was a guy that might get moved. Mm. Uh, Jalen McDaniels. I think that's a really good pickup here. I like it a lot for, for them. the 76ers. I really like that a lot. Uh, Thibel, I know he was a fan favorite in Philadelphia. Uh, like, a really good defensive player, mm -hmm. but his role just uh, hadn't really increased on that team this year. All right, Will, we have a $100 oh! Super Chat. Oh! Mr. Stevens right. Doris. Here's what we're going to do. We did, I, I, did a half, I, I did a half beer ball for the 50. I'll make this one a jungle beer bong. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll pour some <laughs> Jack right. Daniels in there. Thank you, Mr. Stegosaurus. Uh, I'll answer the question here while yeah, I get this Mr. all set Stegosaurus, up. Yeah, Mr. Stegosaurus, we appreciate you, man. Super Chat MVP today. Saying most impressive and disappointing just Bay teams of the deadline so far. Uh, impressive, I think the Lakers have had a pretty good deadline. Obviously, the Phoenix Suns. Sons, Probably the big, big winner here of the deadline. The Mavericks getting Kyrie Irving, I think, has made them a legit contender in the West. Uh, May teams, I mean, you look at a team like uh, Milwaukee. They just trade for Jay. They, they, they just Jay trade Crowder for Jay Crowder, but you yeah. give up five second round picks. Who cares? Or I seconds. mean, yeah. I, I, I think the most disappointing is, I mean, it has to be the Nets, right? I would say the Nets. I also yeah, don't like that Nets. trade from Minnesota either. I, no. I, I think they're going for Mike Conley, veteran influence, help maximize Rudy Gobert, but that didn't work in Utah. Now yeah. it's going to work in Minnesota when they're older. I don't, I don't love also, that. Also, another May team, this point team, uh, until a few minutes ago. Well, I don't know. It depends on if the Sadiq Bay get, shield gets done. The Warriors... Up to this point. We'll see. Have been a little yeah, disappointed, got, but that's a we'll see situation. We've got two hours if to go. If they get Sadiq Bey, yeah. I'd be pretty happy with that move for them. Yeah, there you go. All right, more Super Chats here. We'll hit those off while I yeah, we got do King this Higgins. jungle ball. What's up, man? Do the Bucks make any more moves? Uh, probably not. Um, you know, Jay Crowder's a good pickup. I don't know if I would have given up five picks for him. Now, granted, they were all second-round picks. Uh, but I expect them. Uh, I, I haven't really heard them linked to many other guys, but we'll see. Matthew, what's up? You guys think the Heat make a move? Um, is Pat Riley going to do something? We should have brought them up Ooh. as kind of a disappointing team, Tom. Uh, the Ugh. Heat haven't really done anything here at the deadline. They were linked to Kyrie. They didn't get Kyrie. They were linked to Kevin Durant. They didn't get Kevin Durant. I'll tell you what, when you're doing the, the jungle one, it's just a shot at the very end. Woo! All right, that's how it goes down there. Uh, we're going to spend some more time here in a little bit on the Matisse-Steibel trade. Uh, one on the Heat, they've been trying to find a taker for Kyle Lowry. I don't think they will. Uh, Lowry is, I don't know, Cook feels a little mean, but I'm not wrong, I think, either when I say that, Coop. Uh, Coop, our Mavs guy's like, how about Davis, Bertans, and Christian Wood? Why do you want so many ball handlers on the Mavs? Jaden Hardy. <laughs> Let Hardy be that guy. I will say this, Matthew. If the Heat make a move today, it's probably going to be trading Kyle Lowry. Or Pat, 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 or Pat Riley goes rogue and gets OG and they send Lowry oh. back. All right, let's get to the next Super Chat here. From Jaden Finch, $5. Beer cheers. Uh, we should just take a couple here there. Cheers. 
Uh, D'Lo, the Hornets for Melo and Mason. <laughs> he jokes, but Melo's leaving when his contract is up anyways. So that's LaMelo Ball and then D'Angelo Russell. I wouldn't be surprised if Melo left. Oh, I would not be surprised at all. I don't want to be in Charlotte. That's not that's not how that family's built. Yeah, it's it's a it's a rough I mean they're gonna situation. max him and he's gonna a year later, I, I wanna be traded. That's how you do it in the NBA. Matt Batten, you think the Raptors would make a trade today? I would be surprised if they didn't. Yeah. I, I think something involved now maybe they hold on to Aninobi and Siakam for now, but I'd be surprised if when we well, sit Siakam's here a year a free from agent. now. They, I think they have to try to move him. Uh, you can opt out. I, I think they might try to build around Siakam still. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. Five dollars, Dwayne Porter. Lakers for some reason like my Cowboys. Take one step forward, three steps back. You're now asking for eighty to bang with Western big men. First off, bonk. Uh, second <laughs> off, <laughs> kidding. Um, <laughs> I think that Anthony Davis uh, is better at center. Oh, but for sure. That's just my opinion. Now, I, and I know others disagree on that. I wouldn't mind getting a cheaper backup big as well since Damian Jones is gone. Bryant's now gone to just seven minutes a game, straight defensive center. I think if they do that, I feel great about what they've done. So they're they're overhauling this team. Yeah, I think so as well. I think so as well. I think the Lakers overall have had a good deadline. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said earlier, they haven't made any, you know, game changing move. I don't think they're a contender by any means. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now they're five games under 513th in the West. So they have some ground to make up. All right, if you guys love the NBA, do us a favor, like today's video. Uh, or at 222 likes, I'll bring over our, uh, our Cowboys rules. Every 500 likes will be a shot from one of us. That Everyone on board? Me. Sounds good to me. Approved. So we're halfway there-ish. Every 500 likes is a shot. So like the video for us right now. We've got almost 4,000 people watching live right now. I would say that in a very short period of time, we should be able to get there as long as you guys are paying attention so far. So like the video. There are a couple minor supers we'll hit. Then we'll break down uh, the Sixers, Matisse Thiebel, Jalen McDaniels three-team trade and recap all the trades that have happened so far after that. From Matt Batten, $2. Say what? Yeah, we, yeah, we just we hit Dwayne. You're right. Matt Batten, Suns, Mavs had best trade deadline. Lakers were good. I'm inclined to agree there. And I'm him. Again, we'll break down the Thomas Bryant trade in a little bit. I don't think they're done. I, I think the Lakers are plotting something else. Maybe it's just buyout market. But I, it kind of sounds like Bryant didn't want to be in L.A. Yeah, anymore Bryant either. Yeah, out. It sounds like Ramon Shelburne saying that Bryant was unhappy with his role after A.D. returned from that injury. Mm. Uh, so it sounds like, uh, you know, I think we're all surprised, IMM. I think we're surprised. Uh, but Thomas Bryant apparently wanted out of Los Angeles. And with the Jared Vanderbilt trade, maybe the Lakers didn't feel like they needed him. All right, question for you guys. So far, with over two hours to go, who is the number one NBA trade deadline winner so far? Let's go around the studio right now. Will, number one NBA trade deadline. And, oh, I'll, I'll make it extra challenging. We can't pick the same team twice. So I go first? Y- you go first. Yes, the Phoenix Suns. All right. Jack, I'm going to you next. I'm trying to screw over Coop here. The Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> I knew it. He was going to do it. All right. I'll, I'll go last here. Coop, who is your next NBA trade deadline winner? I'll pick the Lakers. You're going to go Lakers? Okay. That's the right one. I'll go Spurs because I like getting picks. And they're tanking for Victor Dubs, and I hope they get him because he'd be a perfect Spur there. So get your votes in. You say Heat? No, I was saying Oh, he's a Spurs. He, I know that's about it. He's like, loser right now. He, he, we'll see. I, I still think it's the Nets there. But we'll come back to that question later. Get those votes in. Top trade deadline winner so far. It is the NBA trade deadline, and as mostly expected, the Philadelphia 76ers have traded away Matisse Steibel, but like so many NBA trades, it's not a simple one. It's a three-team deal. As we sit here, these are the details that we have. There might be something else that gets come, uh, that gets come in later on, like minor number stuff, whatever. The Trailblazers get Matisse Steibel from the Sixers. Jalen McDaniels coming in from from the Hornets to Philadelphia, and Charlotte gets multiple second-round picks, and Sfia McCallick. I will also make note, by the way, this now gets Philadelphia under the luxury tax, which 
we don't care about, but NBA owners and front office team tend to care a little bit more there. Uh, McDaniel's on a $1.8 million expiring deal. He's an unrestricted free agent. Kind of sounds like Charlotte didn't think they were going to be able to keep him uh, or weren't choosing to keep him in the end. But specifically for Philadelphia, Will, what are some of your overall thoughts on this trade? Thibault got traded. We are expecting Matisse to get traded at some point today. He did. He goes to Portland. He was a fan favorite in Philadelphia. Uh, you certainly wish him the best if you're a Sixers fan. Uh, but in this deal, you get Jalen McDaniels, who's a really solid player at the four. 10.7 points per game, 4.9 rebounds per game uh, this season for McDaniels. So overall, I think that's a good pickup. When the trade first went down, we didn't know it was a three-team deal. Then we learned it was a three-team deal that was, in fact, going to be with the Charlotte Hornets. That sent McDaniels uh, to Philadelphia. So you're basically swapping a Thibel for McDaniels. McDaniels probably a better score, and that's going to be tough to replace a Thibel's defensive prowess. He's one of the best defenders in the NBA, uh, but Philadelphia, I think, wanted to add a better score here at the deadline. They have done that getting McDaniels. I think that's the big issue with, with Matisse Thibel. It was, was it you, Coop, who said if he could just shoot 35% on like actual volume, he'd be, a, he'd be one of the better 3 and D guys in the NBA, but he just can't score. It just he's it's never developed and frankly the he's a career 32 and a half percent three point shooter on like two tries per game. That's not exactly very good. McDaniel's does bring you more scoring. He's averaging a career high 10.6 points per game on increased minutes although he's I will make note his three point efficiency has dropped amid a higher volume, so that's kind of got to be sorted out. But I would also argue, in Philadelphia, alongside guys like Tyrese Maxey and James Harden and, and Tobias Harris and Joel, Joel Embiid, as a bench scorer, kind of taking over Thibault's minutes, etc., he should get a higher quality volume uh, of looks. So it should, yeah. in theory, boost the percentage a little bit there. you got to think McDaniels is thrilled right now. I mean, he leaves mm -hmm. the Hornets, who are one of the worst teams in the NBA, and now he's going to a legit mm -hmm. contender mm -hmm. in the East, in Philadelphia, third in the Eastern Conference right now. You don't really have to worry about the Nets anymore. If you're Philly, I think you're a legit top three contender mm -hmm. in the East, and you add McDaniels, who's probably hungry to finally play uh, for a winning team. Upgrading that bench in the end for Philadelphia. So grade the Jalen McDaniels trade. We'll go Philadelphia to start here since it's a very complicated three-team deal. A, B, C, D, or F. This will be the pinned comments on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, A, B, C, D, or F. Let us know how you feel about this Sixers trade. Spend some quick time here on Matisse Thibel. I think, well, you, you got it right. Great defender, but I think in the modern NBA, I, I just, I, I need scoring. I, I, I need points scoring. Per game. I mean, that's just, that's just not good. <laughs> it's not good. 1.3 rebounds per game. He shot 43% from the floor, 33% from three. So when you're talking about a backup at the four, I certainly think you upgraded getting McDaniels. We wish Thibel all the best, man. You know, great guy to have in the locker room. Again, a fan favorite in Philadelphia with that YouTube channel and whatnot of his. Uh, but I think uh, moving on might be best for both Thibel and the Sixers at this point. What's best for you might be Athletic Greens. They are sponsoring today's show. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every single day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 every morning, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. I came into this year wanting to get healthier, and starting my year in AG1 has helped me do just that. I take it every morning. I feel happier, healthier, and more energized. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be any easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning, done. I also like that it costs less than $3 per day. It's pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily have with the highest quality sourced ingredients, win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash chatsports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chatsports. Check it out. The link is in the comments and the description of today's video. I take HG1 every day. I've been doing that for a couple weeks now, and I feel so much better every morning starting my day with AG1. Athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Go and check them out. As we welcome back Tom down here, still recapping 
uh, this Matisse Thibel trade. Uh, he was clearly the top trade candidate on Philadelphia. Um, he's going to be missed in Philly, uh, but adding, adding Jalen McDaniels, man, is just a good move. And I do want to make one note briefly here because it's easy to get it mixed up. This is Jalen McDaniels. Not Jaden McDaniels. Right. That's right. the Timberwolves who was drafted a year later uh, after Jalen McDaniels. This is the now former Hornets player. Hornets getting Sfia McCallick is just salary filler there in the end. Uh, Sixers are getting Jalen McDaniels. And I do like that move. Now, I'm very curious how this ends up fitting. Kind of a three slash four. Given the way the Sixers like to play basketball, I'd assume he gets some decent reps there at the four as one of their wing power forward rotation hybrid guys and that kind of Tobias Harris mold a little bit there. Big uptick in production this year from McDaniels. 10.6 points per game. The three-point percentage, though, has dipped this year. It's down to 32%. Now, last year he shot 38%, but on almost half the volume. So the volume went up and the efficiency has dropped, and that's a Bit of a red flag, but I think with what the Hornets have on the roster, with what the Sixers have on the roster, I think it would it should be more efficient once he gets in with that offense and chemistry and like all that good stuff there. I think they got a better player in the end than Matisse Thybul, and we'll see if he sticks around long term with Philadelphia. They've got some number crunching to figure out, but it's a uh, it's a good deal I think in the end for the 76ers. Are they done, Will? No. I think no. they go after Eric Gordon. Sounds like you guys should subscribe then. Yeah, you should subscribe because if the 76ers make another move, we're going to get you guys another video. Now, Eric Gordon is another name to watch, Tom. Like mm -hmm. I said, uh, the Houston Chronicle is reporting at this hour that he is expected to get moved by the end of the day. And why do I feel like the Sixers might be interested? Well, there's this guy named Dara Mori who's kind of uh, running, running things over in Philadelphia who's That's already good. bought a few <laughs> rock former Rockets. Of course, he was the Rockets GM before he was in Philly. He brought James Harden. He brought P.J. Tucker. Is Eric Gordon next? That's a name to watch for Philly here at the deadline. Yeah, so they've got that backup wing. Well, they've been linked pretty heavily to backup centers. They were allegedly heavily involved in the Jared Vanderbilt conversations. Did not go down there. Maybe a Nas Reed could start to make some sense Darwin's for them. Noel. Noel. Bring, yeah. Yeah, bring, 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 bring back, back Noel. It's a, fun, home. it's a fun day for reunions across the <laughs> NBA to a certain extent. So, uh, Also, a good point on screen here. This Again, this, this was built, this team card was built before the trade itself so fun to see when things end up going down there uh Furkan Korkmans the fun to na uh, name to say he wants out of Philadelphia so he has demanded a trade which I it's very rarely see a guy in the back of the okay. bench demand a trade it's one of those like oh okay Furkan we'll see what we can do for you <laughs> uh so we'll see what happens there for Philadelphia let us know in the comment section is Philly the favorite to win East or is that Boston it's not Brooklyn anymore. Why for yes and for no? Get those votes in for us in the comment section. All right, as the votes come in, there are more trades and an updated trade, which is getting even more complicated. And I hope we have the graphic because I'm, I was trying to do it in my head while we were doing the Sixers news and I couldn't follow it there. So the, the Jay Crowder is now a three-team deal. Yes, and I believe the George Hill. I think that's part of it, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll update the Jay Crowder trade first. Uh, the Bucks are sending Serge Ibaka to the Pacers, which I think is some of your salary filler stuff, as part of this trade. Now the Bucks and Pacers are also doing a George Hill trade. He's back in Indy. What a time to be alive. Wow. Uh, the Pacers absorbing him into their cap space. So it might be a separate deal. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how that will be formally processed by the league with two hours to go. It's the NBA trade deadline here. George Hill in a second as the Bucks get salary cap relief, which I'm just going to call our good friend Cash Considerations. Now, Thoughts on these complicated deals now? Yeah, George Hill going back to Indy. That's really interesting. We'll see what the Bucks get. Probably, like you said, mm -hmm. cash considerations. But this is also just breaking the last few minutes. The Knicks and Bulls are discussing a Zach Levine trade. Zach Levine could be on the move going to the Knicks. Something to monitor. Put that in, in production so that Marshall can see it. Wow. That'd be interesting. Who, who, who's reporting that here? I'm trying to figure that out. 
whoever Joe Crowley is. Mm. NBA Central is 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 tweeting it. All right. It's, it's the Chicago Sun Times allegedly. So we'll see on that one. We'll see. Uh, call it in the uh, in the trade rumor category at Chicago this point. Chicago Sun Times. Some that. more super chats from Matt Batten. Who do you think the Lakers should trade for today? You got any names you you like, Will, for LA? <sighs> I, I, maybe, I, I have maybe. a reckless one to, to get to in a little bit. It's, that's not actually a trade. Maybe I, Nas I have, Reed? It, It's not I a trade. I haven't seen them linked to Nas Reed at all, but all right. maybe after trading Thomas Bryant, Re they might make Ready for my reckless idea? It's, it's not even a buyout. I just bring back Boogie Cousins. <sighs> yeah, but he's a big man. <sighs> we're we're, oh, no, we're trying to keep Anthony Davis a little bit fresher. Let's bring back Boogie. <laughs> that would be. Let's bring back Melo. Just like, to bring them all back. Like he's he's obviously not even close to prime Kings Boogie, but he averaged nine points a game with the Nuggets last year. It's not. I know it's not good efficiency, but it's not terrible. James uh, Thomas in the I chat. I said it was wild. Mo Bamba. I I said oh Mo Bamba would, would be a nice fit I would for like them. That, I that, like that that one is a much better actual idea than my reckless uh, Boogie Cousins idea. So. There you go. All right, who is the best team in the NBA right now? Let us know in the comment section. We'll also recap uh, all the trades that have come in here in a little bit. Also, it does sound like John Wall is going to be bought out. Do They're the John still hopeful. Wall. Do the John Wall. It's, it's the Do flex. The John the flex. Wall. We'll see if, Great if song. Wall ends up getting bought out. I'm very curious uh, where he ends up going. If anywhere. Miami? I, is Miami? If anywhere. The Mavs? Back you you want a third ball handler? Not John Wall. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it, that's unfortunate. I, that guy just has not been, not been able to stay healthy. Uh, get your votes in. Best team in the NBA right now. Dallas, Bucks, Pistons, Warriors, Celtics, Rockers, Lakers, Celtics, Rockets. Might have, might have misspoke there. Blame it on the uh, Jungle Bong. Uh, Bucks, Boston, Suns in there. Some more Super Chats. We'll hit our Super Chat menu here after these two quickly. From Ryan, will the Warriors make a trade? Yes or no, Will? Yes. Okay. They will trade James Wiseman. They apparently are in talks with Detroit for a little James Wiseman, Sadiq Bay swap, which I would love, and I mean love that move for Golden State. All right. Uh, from Waukee Slush, think Miami will make any moves. If so, who? I feel like... If they make any move today, it'll be trading Kyle Lauer. But he's more of a he might be more of a buyout candidate at this point. Okay. We'll see. This is our super chat menu. One dollar for a shout out. We'll bring up your question on air and or comment. Hit it real quick. Five dollars, we'll do some beer cheers. Also, I am formally out on that particular uh beverage coop. I'm not I'm not a fan. Not a fan of a happy dad. I don't not think that, I've ever had happy not, dad. Not, not a sponsor, so I'm also not gonna be mean to him. Uh $10 will talk about your team. $20 for a shot. $100, beer bong or shotgun. We also did, I guess that's yours now, Coop. Uh, $50, oh, we'll, 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 we'll make it this. $50 for a half beer bong. $100 for a, a, a jungle bong is the route we'll go uh, moving forward. I'll just verbalize that and have fun with it. Also, D Block Celtics, just a dollar super chat. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. I'll have to go to sub only chat here in a little bit. A lot of I, I'll, I'll 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 make a note here. You put in fake news. This this is your warning. Jail, straight to jail, which is being blocked. Uh, so just keep that in mind from that standpoint. There. All right, that's our super chat menu. Dollar for a shout out. Five dollars for beer. Cheers. Ten dollars. Talk about your team. Twenty for a shot. Hundred beer bong or shotgun. Fifty will do. Uh, hybrid. Uh, I'll do a half beer bong for you guys there. All right, let's recap the big trades so far. The Suns. This is the massive one, Will. Uh, it's the pin pull right now, by the way. Were you asleep or, or awake when Kevin Durant got traded? Yes, I was. I, I was not awake. Will was not awake. Jack I, was I, here. Marshall yeah. was here. Coop was awake. I, I fell asleep maybe half hour before. I was, I was asleep. Yeah, he was asleep. No, I was asleep. I, I phrased the question wrong at the, at the start there. 55% say they were awake. Well over 3,000 votes there. What are your thoughts on this trade, Will? Outside of like, I, holy shit. Yeah, I, I think it makes Phoenix the favorites in the West. 
I really do. I feel I like agree. the Phoenix Suns are now the favorites. And I was really impressed with what the Suns did here because you didn't have to give up DeAndre. You didn't have to give up Chris Paul. You mm. kept pretty much all your stars mm. while getting a top five, top ten player in the league. Yeah, you part with four first-round picks. Those are probably going to be late first-round picks if you hold on to Kevin Durant through the remainder of his contract. I think it's a great deal for Phoenix and give a lot of credit to their new majority owner, Matt Ishpia. He literally finalized the purchase maybe, what, two days ago? Second day on the job. Thank you, Jack. And now Kevin Durant's in Phoenix. His first day in the, first, first day in the office, he said, get this deal done, and they got it done. I'm, I'm very intrigued how this will... I think the West is kind of like in panic, but I think that's why there were so many teams calling about Daimler, like, oh, shit. Well, now we got to get really aggressive here and figure stuff out there. Mikael Bridges is the big piece. And I'll, I'll chime in here, Coop. I'd say of, like, your non, like, lottery early round picks, Philadelphia trading away Mikael Bridges for Zaire Smith, like, just top, top-tier garbage decision, right? Yeah, Bridges was really raw coming out of college, though, so they didn't believe in his ability to help them right away. But th the same thing could be said for Smith, so it was a weird deal. And I think he's going to be really good for the Nets. I don't think the Nets move him, and I think he'll be one of their cornerstones going forward. I'm like tracking to remember because I got a 2021 first, which I think they eventually traded as well as like it became like Trey Mann. So like that it, was a brutal deal. Yeah, it, it, it was not a very good deal. And it's not one you think about mm -hmm. as like, oh, this is one of the worst draft deals in recent memory. But it really is. I mean, Bridges is is one of the best two-way players in the game right now. I'll also make note here that the Nets have, uh, it, with all these trades they've made, have saved about – a hundred million in luxury tax penalties. Yeah, that's, wow. that's a lot of money. Can I hold a dollar, Brooklyn? <laughs> All right. Well, we come back to our this question, Will. Favorite in the West. Is it the Suns? Yes. Or somebody else? Let us know in the comments section here. It's not Denver, who's I'll, first in the West right I'll, now. I'm going to pull up the odds here for just Western, Western Conference odds. Just to give you guys what the, the bookies are saying about that here. Let's get pulled up. Hopefully it's updated. I'll be mad if it's not there. Give some shout-outs here for me, Will. Yeah, for sure. We got Ricardo saying the Mavericks are the favorites. A lot of people saying Mavs. Everyday Truth saying Oklahoma City. Hey, they might make the playoffs. I mean, they got a shot. Carson saying Suns. Big Smokey saying Pelicans. They got to get Zion back healthy. They lost 10 straight games without him. Jordan saying Pelicans. Corbin saying Thunder. Jameer, we'll get to your super chat here in a second. Big MGM saying Nuggets. Andrew saying Rockets. Maybe in a few years, Andrew. At least I hope so. Marcus saying Bucks. Arians saying the Kings out at third in the West right now. They got the win over Houston last night. Everyone pulled off the – oh, wait, sorry, conference features. I got it. Uh, right, Western favorites are Suns at plus 200, Denver at plus 375, Clippers plus 500, uh, Warriors at plus 700, then it's Memphis at plus 750, and Coop's Mavs at plus 900. That is unbelievable value for Dallas. 100 on the Mavs. Plus you put 900? They should not be behind the Clippers. They should not be behind Golden State. Steph Curry's going to be out for several weeks. They might not even make the playoffs. I, they're going to make the playoffs. I, I don't know. It, it might be play in, but, they'll, but they will well, make we'll it. See. They will make it. All right, if you're having a good time, show us by liking the video. I owe a shot. We're at 500 likes here, so I'll do that one. With I, got the, I got the next one. I mean, I would hope so. I got the next one. <laughs> Every five. Oh, sorry, subject. Every 500 likes is a shot. Cheers. Betty gotta gotta love some Betty Jack Daniels. Self. Jack Daniels at noon, always a good thing. Always a good thing. Shout out Mike Muscala. Doing it on live. There you go. <laughs> All right. Every 500 likes is a shot. So get the likes flowing here. We got almost 5,000 people watching live right now. So you guys can do math and figure it out there. Let's recap some more of the trades that have gone down. This one kind of buried by the Kevin Durant uh, Woj nuke last night. Jakob Pertl going back to Toronto, Will. Yeah, very interesting. Pertl was linked to several teams throughout this process. San Antonio had interest in keeping him in their long-term plans, but he's an unrestricted free agent at the end of this year. So their thinking was they wanted to get something in return. 
they really wanted a first-round pick. That was really important mm-hmm. to San Antonio. They received an offer from Boston, actually. Peyton was, Pritchard, a couple second-round picks. Danilo Gallinari as well. They declined that offer. They yeah. wanted a first-round pick. They get a first-round pick in 2024. And now the Raptors are in an interesting position here. Are they are they not in sell mode? I, I I'm just surprised. I, I want I th- yeah. Th- this is a trade you make if you're trying to be a contender, which especially for this year, I would say the Raptors are not a contender. Right? They're four games under 500. They could maybe make the play-in game. Like we'll see what the Pacers and Wizards and Magic and whatnot end up doing there. But like they're not going to make a run. They, even if they win the playing game, they're going to be they're going to be knocked out first round. They're, they're, they're going to get smoked by Boston or Milwaukee or whoever they end up playing. Yeah. But Pirtle could also still be a long term piece, and it's a guy they've liked before. They drafted him originally. That first round pick has light protection, so maybe they're looking more for a quick reset, more than like a full on tear down of Siakam, OG right. Yanobi. We'll see about OG on Yanobi. He could get dealt. That'd be, I think, the next big bomb if there is one today at the trade deadline. There was this bomb as well. D'Angelo Russell going from Minnesota to LA. I've got a lot of thoughts on this trade here because I'm a big D'Lo fan myself, but I want to hear your thoughts, Will. Just for all three teams, whatever you have. Yeah, I think it's a really good move uh, for the Lakers. Uh, mm. Russell Westbrook, that experiment just didn't work out. I think it was time to move on from him. Mm. I just think mentally uh, he was kind of struggling in L.A. with that fit, so I think it's a good I think it's a good thing for both sides. They've moved on there, and Westbrook's <laughs> likely going to get bought out in Utah, and he'll probably go to a team like the Heat or the Clippers. Mm. Uh, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, solid pieces off the bench. Fun fact, I actually uh, played against Jared Vanderbilt in middle school. And I made three three pointers in that game. So what I, else I, happened I, in that game? Uh, he we lost badly. Okay, I'm about to say we yeah. lost by we, he dropped like 28. It was a problem. Yeah, there you uh, go. For the for that makes the, more for sense. the T Wolves, I feel like the underrated part of this move is Mike Conley. Yeah, I, I love this for LA. Uh, I think Russell's a great fit offensively alongside LeBron and, and and Anthony Davis. I know there's defensive issues. I get all that. Beasley and Vanderbilt fit what they should be doing around LeBron, so I like that. The Jazz are acquiring assets. That's fine. Uh, you know, no complaints there. They gave up. You know, Beasley, Vanderbilt, whatever. They maybe could have gotten more, but that 2027 20, first could actually be kind of valuable. So I don't mind that. I feel like Minnesota is. Trying to recreate Utah with Mike Conley, Rudy Gobert, hoping Conley can have that kind of Chris Paul That's veteran point, influence yeah. on you know their version of Booker and Ayton and, and Carl Anthony Towns, who are better than Ayton and you know, Edwards. I, but Conley's not good anymore, I don't think. Like I, I, He's not bad, but he's not what he was in his prime. And I'm worried that they're sinking so many assets. They weren't going to pay Russell long-term, so I, I guess that's fine. They got something back, but I just... I worry about that. I worry Minnesota's going all in to be a five seed team, and I don't. That's five seed is generous. I know that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> so I, I don't. I don't uh, love it for Minnesota. I love it for LA, and I get it for the Jazz. I guess in the end. Today's live NBA trade deadline coverage is sponsored by Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health, and I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. Uh, once I got my kids up with her breakfast, I make my own AG1. I don't feel the need for caffeine in the morning anymore, and I feel energized throughout the day. Plus, AG1 empowers the gut for whole body health. Covering my nutritional bases for the day literally couldn't be any easier. That's why I trust Athletic Greens. I mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing in the morning. Costs three bucks a day. It's perfect. Pretty good, if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. It's a win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then they're giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Links in the comments section and the description of today's show. Big ups to Athletic Greens helping make things possible for today's live NBA trade deadline coverage. Some super chats from Matt Batten, a dollar. 
Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. $10, talk about your team. Official Kevy G, after trading TB, what do you think the Lakers have left to do, Will? Just keep adding to that bench. The bench is not very good. Uh, now, they got Jared Vanderbilt yesterday. They got Malik Beasley yesterday. Maybe you go after a Nas Reed. Maybe you go after an Eric Gordon, try to get a little bit more shooting depth. I think we all know that the Lakers could certainly use that. Uh, Houston apparently is shopping Eric Gordon right now. Uh, maybe, maybe an underrated guy to watch for the Lakers, John Collins. Uh, I don't know if they have the I assets. I don't know if they have the assets Again, to get I it like done. J- John Collins fits my D'Angelo Russell mode. Like he can score, but hey, not the best defender, whatever. Like I, I, I like him. But Woes just said the Hawks are still actively shopping John Collins. They really want to trade him by the end of the day. Maybe they'll settle for oh, a little okay, bit less. Okay, we'll see. It's John Collins rumors every oh, offseason, so, every deadline, same every thing with draft. I mean, they, they say they're going to trade him, and then it just it's like, doesn't happen. It's like the Sean Payton rumors every year, <laughs> or the John Gruden rumors back when those were a thing there. So, uh, big would be nice, but I, I'll give LA a lot of credit for upgrading this team, oh, I sure. think, and making them at least a better contender. I think they're a playoff team right now. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. I think they can. I don't think they're better than the Suns, but they, I think they can make a run with, if AD's healthy for once, hey, yeah, that'd be fun. Jameer CP, Knicks give up Robinson, topping D Rose and some firsts for Levine and Drummond. I have thoughts, Will, but I, I want to hear your thoughts first and foremost on this Zach Levine blockbuster idea. Yeah, so um, what well you said, Chicago Sun-Times reporting uh, that mm. they are discussing a possible deal. I'm assuming that Chicago is going to want a lot, and I mean a lot of first-round picks, but the Knicks have those first-round picks to They're give up. mostly protected first, though. That's which true. Which is kind of like not as valuable. Right. I, I think you have to move one of your other young guards slash wings if you're if you're the Knicks. Like R.J. Barrett's deal is Marshall Green, who's live right now on our Knicks channel, was was we were working on how do you trade R.J. Barrett? That contract with the poison pill is a pain in the ass, uh, impossible to make work. Basically, it's doable, but it's very complicated. I think you have to move someone like a Quentin Grimes too. I think you have to move yeah. one of those good young guards now, slash do you wings. Do you think they'd have to trade R.J. Barrett to get a guy like Levine? I think if you're I think because of just the complication of it, they might just keep Barrett and try to move all of their first or something, but it's it's a complicated deal. I, Chicago's in a weird spot where they're in the play-in right now. They're 26 and 28, and I think they'd make the play-in, but how far are they going to go? Right. Not that far. So good, good question, Jameer. All right, Matt Batten, Suns, Mavs, Memphis are favorites in the West to me. I don't mind that that list. Yeah, I think that's a solid top three. I think Denver deserves to be in the top three conversation. Uh, Memphis is really struggling right now. They've lost eight of their last ten games. Um, you know, they're dealing with some stuff off mm-hmm. the court as well with the John Morant drama. So I, I just don't know. I Shouldn't feel laugh at that, I, but I did. I really don't know how I feel about Memphis at this point. I think mm-hmm. it, it, what's going to be really interesting is we could get into the playoffs and let's say the Mavs are the four seed, uh, the Suns are the three seed, or whatever, and. You could have a lower seed make the NBA Finals out of the West. You really could uh, because, you know, right now the Suns are, what, fifth in the West? The Mavs fifth. are fourth in the West. The Kings are three. The Kings are three. What a time to be alive. Unbelievable. <laughs> and no one believes in them. I don't think that's going to hold up, quite frankly. In, in NBA terms, they're the Vikings. Or in NFL terms, they're the, the Vikings. Good that, record. No one, no one that, believes in yeah, them. I, sorry, I don't sorry see, Kings I don't, fans. I don't, I don't, credit to Sacramento. I mean, Mike Brown, the job he's doing this year, but I just don't see them making any kind of run. All right, more Super Chats coming, but we're trying to be the number one live NBA trade deadline stream. So, Help us be number one. Things you can do. Like the video. Every 500 likes, we'll do a shot. We are 270 away from our next shot. You can share the video. Facebook, Twitter, text it to a friend, Instagram, whatever. It really helps us out there. Sub to Chat Sports so we have more viewers when we do this again next year. 400 away from our next milestone. I'll do a beer bong once we get there. So we'll update the number and we'll keep that in mind there. And then make sure you guys are commenting all day long as well. Just whatever you're thinking. Throw it in the comments. Great trades. You, we got you covered here. Thank you guys so much. $5, Matt Batten. Beer cheers for Will cheers. now. Because that beer's not... It's open a little bit there. Who's a good fit for Russell Westbrook next season? Teams like maybe the Heat, Raptors, uh, and cheer to Will. Next year, I, I think I saw the stat, but since Russ signed that extension, 
He's been dealt every year of it, basically, yeah. which is trade to Houston, <sighs> then trade to Washington, insane. then trade to L.A., and now trade to Utah, where he's expected insane. to be bought out. Um, I feel like the Clippers might be the best fit, quite frankly. Because he's kind of an upgrade button over John Wall right now, which pains yeah. me to say because I will always love John Wall. And I'll read what I saw earlier today, but mm -hmm. there's apparently people on the Clippers that think that the Lakers were not utilizing Russell Westbrook correctly, and they're open to bringing him in. Now, yeah, several players on the Clippers would be okay. open to the okay. idea of adding he, Russell Westbrook. Sure, he wasn't being used correctly. This Russell Westbrook, as Pete is going to give his thoughts here in a minute, is the new, this year it'll be different player. It was Dwight Howard for years. A lot of talk on Bulls Twitter about Russell Westbrook and Billy Donovan reuniting in Chicago. Oh, interesting, uh, yes. Billy coached... Uh, buyout, of course, yeah. yeah After the buyout, coached. so just, yeah. just do uh, something to keep out the little tickler file. File it away. Okay. <laughs> Now, there is this report from The Athletic. He, he, he is who he is, man. That says Russell Westbrook has interest in joining the Clippers of the Heat. Those appear to oh. be the two teams right now. I was just, Russ on the vet men? Much more valuable than Russ at whatever, $40 million it was. Oh, for sure. Like, that's the very different conversation there. 47. But I'll say this. I Not mean, better. You know, we all watched that game the other night when LeBron mm. broke the scoring record. Russ is a problem. I mean, just the way that he plays, the, the turnovers are an issue. It's sad because not too long ago, he was a really, really good player. He should have stayed in Washington, I mean, quite frankly. I mean, but why? Because he was playing really good ball there. He goes to L.A. and just not a good fit. It was a decent fit in Washington under Bradley Beal. They were playing really well toward the end of the season. They didn't do anything in the playoffs. But still, I feel like Washington with Westbrook right now is probably would the, probably be a playoff. The Wizards team. are also this year. It'll be different. Number one yeah, NBA team. You're not it'll wrong. be different. Nah, you're going to be around 500 again. <laughs> All right, from Gary. Sorry, Wizards fans, but you know I'm right. Should the Bills blow it up or the Bulls blow it up? Yeah, I'm thinking NFL. I don't know why. Uh, I uh, maybe I think so because because no because some of their stars are aging. I mean, Demar Derozan is what 33, 34. Zach Levine. Uh, he's not old. He's still a decent player, but he's a little bit older now. He's not the you know same player I think we saw last year, the year before. Yeah, I, I think they should blow it up, 100%. You guys can vote. Why are in here? We are going to go momentarily to sub-only chat because there are some bots sneaking in, and sub-only chat helps stop those there. So if you are subscribed... Type in me. We're going to give so many shout-outs here momentarily. An hour and a half plus to go until the NBA trade deadline. Good timing when we went live. There were a bunch of trades in a row. Now things have slowly begun to uh, quiet down here. The, la the last trade was checking my notes. Uh, it was the Serge Ibaka almost a half hour ago. So it's been a while. Type in me if you guys are subbed. I'll give some shout-outs here, Will. Then I'll have you do the same. <sighs> Rap fire. Uh, Sham Al, Keel, Bory, Livingston, Caleb, Andrew, Kenneth, Caleb, Tibor, Real, Uncle, Andrew, Bogut is watching. Uh, Joe, oh, 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 back's okay, Andrew. Uh, Jolie, Ruben, Prince, Nebula, Terrence, Jojo, Livingston, Dan Holm, Ruben, AJ, Raymart, Ruben, uh, Sarah, Sarah, so you pronounce it? Jordan, Donovan, King Ray, Anthony Davis is watching. Uh, Painful Punching Cat, Carlo, Livingston, Robert, all things, I think that was all things basketball. Chris, Raymart, D Block, Ben T, Dilly, Cody, Chris, and so many more. Will give some shout outs here while I sip some yeah, water. Yeah, we got JJ Hackett, Ben T, Hunt, JoJo Smokes, Andrew Bogut. What's up, man? Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is tuning in this show. Maybe wondering if he's going to get dealt today. Joey, he's Joey Pick. He's, he's not. probably not. William Rosardo, Mac Mac. Joshua Livingston, Ruben Livingston again, D Block, hashtag Celtics. Go seize, man. Livingston again, Josh Livingston, too smooth. Frederick, Raymar, J Wolf, Joseph, Peter, Muerte, Ruben, Oscar, 2.0, Paintsful Punching Cat, Tom, Jordan, Will, Andrew, Ruben. We appreciate everyone watching the show there you go all right 300 subs away from me doing another beer bong so hit that sub button and, so you guys and can comment 50 likes away from a, from a will scott shot that we are from matt batten two dollars you think the lakers go after mo bamba from the magic they are light on assets at this point but that, that'd be a fun idea for them i think a second round pick or two could get that done 
We'll see. I do. We'll see if uh, Mo Bamba. Bamba has been in some trade rumors. He has been. Um, I think I think it'd be a great fit. I really do, especially after the Thomas Bryant trade. All right, from Ray Long, Nuggets are the best team uh, in the West. Chemistry, 150 percent. So everyone's trying to get wild with the Suns trade for Kevin Durant. How about the Nuggets go get OG on Nobi? I know the, the Mavs aren't getting him, Coop. I'm sorry. Uh, Nuggets with OG? I don't, I don't hate it. I mean, look, I, I think... I'm not sure how you pull it off, but it's a fun idea. We were hearing yesterday mm. that teams were kind of on hold, waiting to make a move, because they wanted to see if Kevin Durant mm -hmm. got dealt and where he got dealt. So now that a team like the Nuggets, who are first in the West, know that he's on the Suns, know that Kyrie's on the Mavs, know that there's some other legit contenders now. Because before the deadline, Tom, the Mavericks and the Suns were not legit contenders in the West, right? Mm -hmm. But now they are. Maybe Denver feels more obligated to make a move like going after a guy like OG. Very possible. All right, next up, $5 from Quentin Gilliam. I'll do this beer. Cheers. Don't sleep on the Knicks. Shout out to my ninja, Mitch G, and Knicks Nation. Bing bong! Bing bong! I love the bing bong. I love it. It's my favorite thing in the NBA. All right, read this don't, next one. Don't you regret not coming to the Knicks? Kevin Durant's now in Phoenix. We're having some fun here on I Chat Sports. I absolutely love the, 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 the bing bong. The, Speaking that, of the Knicks, by the way. Yes, yes. Josh Hart trade. Thoughts Josh on Hart, it? Josh Hart, I think he's a great move. You saw Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart's Villanova teammate. So this is really cool, but... Uh, Jalen Brunson was at Nova last night getting his jersey retired, and he mm. was on video. Uh, a video uh, caught him reacting mm. to the trade, and he was freaking out, saying, no let's shit. go. He was, so, he was, he was so, so happy. Oh, he was so fired up. So yeah. Josh Hart and Jalen Brunson reunited. It's funny. So yesterday I mentioned that Brunson had his jersey retired, so Villanova put out a little tribute video. Hours before the trade, Josh Hart quote tweeted that video and said, congrats, JB. It was an honor and a privilege to share the floor with you. Now they're going to be sharing the floor again at MSG. From Painful Punching Cat, $5. Like the Jazz look for Russ. Going to have more opportunities to score without LeBron James. Aiden, he'll be back. Trust me. Thoughts on that one? Yeah. Um, we'll see. Um, I, I, don't think ja I don't think Russ is going to stay with, with Utah. Um, that, that's the thing. That, that, that the, my, my reaction to this. I think he's going to get bought out. He's not expected to stay in Utah. Um, but... I think that when you look at some other options, maybe the Clippers or the Heat, two teams that might be contenders, he goes there and, and he proves a lot of people wrong. I think Russ is going to be really motivated wherever he ends up. Here's, here's my mindset with Russ. He's like the old veteran running back in, 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 yeah. in, in NFL terms. Like, if there's volume, he can still do things. But if you're giving him volume and he's one of your leading scorers, you're not going to be good enough. Right. to win games, and for that veteran player, you want some bench stuff, or in NFL terms, you want some special team stuff. He doesn't bring that to you anymore. Right. So unfortunately, even though he is a top, you know, the math, 300 NBA player, whatever it is, that particular role isn't as valuable anymore. So I think that's what teams are running into with Russ now. Do you think his style is also problematic in today's NBA? I think the NBA is moving more and more towards shooting. Right, kind of all that matters. It's either, it's like the again, I'll go NFL terms. It's extreme version of the West Coast offense: touchdown or checkdown, three pointer yeah. or layup. And the mid range game is kind of falling away. Some of the, some of the driving in recklessness is kind of fading away too. I think the real issue for Russ is he's just not efficient enough, and you need the efficiency today. So yeah. it's just like you need your your backs to have good efficiency and not you know hit. Three yards, three yards, three yards, 30 yards, three yards. That's just not going to be enough for you. So he can still have an NBA team. I think on the vet minimum, much more valuable and fitting than, well, we're paying him $47 million to be Russ. Yeah. So that's the issue there. I would agree. And yeah, I still love the, I love the trade in the end for the Lakers the most because D'Angelo Russell, not good defensively, but he's a good fit for right, LA. Right. Ball good handler. Fit. He's been there shooter. before, familiarity with him. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure D. Low is pretty happy about that move as well. Getting out of Minnesota. Yeah, Isaac Garcia, five dollars out of this beer. Cheers. How did you feel the Bulls trading for John Wall? Would he help them or hurt them? I don't think they trade for John Wall, but if they want to get him in the buyout market, sure. I think the same conversation you just had about Russell Westbrook unfortunately applies to John Wall as well. 
He's yeah. just not the same guy, yeah, which and, sucks. And I really, loved him at his prime. I know. He's, he struggled to stay healthy as well. Just didn't work out in Houston. Houston was going through a rebuild. He sat a year in Houston, then goes to L.A., excited for an opportunity to play. And mm. it just hasn't really gone the way I think he's hoped it would uh, with the Clippers. Clippers might get Russell Westbrook. You might have a team like Chicago or Miami. John Wall has been linked to Miami as well. If I was the Bulls fan, though, I would just want John Wall so I can bop that song every single day. It's just a banger of a song. The, the efficiency has been the real problem for, for John Wall. It has plummeted. His field goal percentage is career low the past two years. That, that's right. a real concern. And though He averaged 20 last time we saw him in Houston, but you know, volume, again, same kind we just had with Russ there. Of the trade deadline losers so far, who do you have so far? The, the, the number one loser. We can do it. Let's play the game again. And in a minute, in a minute. We'll go around the studio. We'll go different order to also screw Coop somehow. Uh, top trade deadline losers so far. There's a couple, I think, very obvious ones. So this time we'll go Jack, me, Will, okay. Coop. Because I, I, like, I like making things challenging on, on Coop from that standpoint. So producer Jack, top NBA trade deadline loser so far. Ah, it's Sorry, stuck. I'm here. This one might be a tiny bit of a hot take because they got some good stuff back, but I'm still going to say the Nets because no, the take. big three, the big three dynasty is over now. Yeah, yep. They got rid of Kevin Durant. I mean, it's got to be the Nets. And they what? They 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 flipped James Harden for the washed up corpse of Ben Simmons a year ago, of course. They flipped Kyrie Irving for Dorian Finney-Smith and a guy they had originally and Spencer Dinwiddie to get those other players in there. And they did get some good stuff for Kevin Durant back, but yeah, I think they're definitely a top loser there. I'm going to go with the Minnesota Timberwolves myself because okay. I just don't like that trade. Okay, I get what they're – I think they're going for the veteran influence of Mike Conley, but he's not what he was in his prime. So you're just kind of running it back with a team that didn't work well enough in Utah to an extent. Now they're older, better supporting pieces. I just think it's you're maxing out as a five seed. For like me, that. it's no doubt the Miami Heat. Mm -hmm. um, I thought they were going to be pretty aggressive here at the deadline. They were in the Kyrie Irving sweepstakes, in the Kevin Durant sweepstakes. They don't get either of those guys. They really haven't made any moves. Uh, Kyle Lowry, they haven't been able to get rid of him yet. They can't mm -hmm. buy him out. Uh, so, yeah, for me, it's, it's clearly Miami Heat, and the clock is ticking. We're less than an hour and a half to go. All right, we're going to get over to producer Coop here, his top NBA trade deadline loser, Timberwolves. Uh, Nets and Heat off the board. Who are you going with? I'm going to take the Golden State Warriors. I think they have to make a move okay. if they want to be competitive in the Western Conference. You had a rumor on them, right? Uh, on the Warriors? Uh, they are shopping Moses Moody, so they're looking okay. for, for a team to take Moses Moody. That's not going to get them anything back. That will help them content, however. Yeah. You so. kind of you're, They're in a weird balancing of, do you be aggressive with your core of Steph, etc., or do you try to let the young guys grow? It's a it's a almost impossible balance. I, I think at the end of the day, you have to do right by Steph and try to put a competitive team around. But yeah, it, it does mortgage the future. Yeah, but I also think screw the future, go in right now. Yeah, and exactly. Then just rebuild after yeah. that. So uh, other losers I see in the comments: uh, the Seattle SuperSonics, Bulls, Wolves. It's your boy is apparently producer Rolly's burner says Pat Riley is washed. Miami Nets, a lot of bowls in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess they're getting well, better. Well, because they haven't done it. They, you think? The the Gar Packs duo is gone. So yeah. and those guys sucked. They were horrible. Yeah. Uh, Clippers, 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 Rockets, Rockets. Ben Simmons, the biggest loser. He has to <laughs> shoot true. now. What's That's he gonna true. do? That's true. I, I'm here for any and all Ben Simmons slander. I mean, it's just come on, man. How are you that big and that gifted and you just you can't put the ball in the hoop? I it watched just... that entire Nets Suns game the other night, literally every single second of the game, and pretty much every time Ben Simmons touched the ball, it was a disaster. He's just he's scared. It was a disaster. It, it, it blows. I, I feel on some level I feel a little bit bad for him, but I also don't like it's I I don't I don't feel bad Come for on. him. He's 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 making millions, he's fine, but like he could have been so much better. He could be such a better player there. All right, let's hit our sub-battle updates for our NBA channels. Now, Knicks now has gained a lot of ground of late. They are now fourth in that race. Marshall Green live right now on the Knicks channel. As I'm sure he's having some uh, 
Some fun conversations with the Zach Levine trade rumors out there. We have a Lakers channel as well, just ahead of our Warriors channel. We put out the uh, news of the Thomas Bryant, Devon, or Davon Reed trade, plus, of course, the, the uh, chaos blockbuster of D'Angelo Russell for Russell Westbrook and more in there. That's our number one NBA channel based on subscribers. Warriors! Well, we're waiting on something for them today. We'll see if the James Wiseman, Sadiq Bay trade rumor goes down. I, I do think something will happen in the next hour and 20-ish minutes right, here for Golden State. Uh, there's second in subs there. The Mavs are number three. I'm not sure there will be anything here uh, for them. Maybe C Producer Coop, what is your Christian Wood trade percentage chance right now? 89 entering today. I'm going to say right now we're at like 61. Ooh, down to 61%. That's a big swing from Coop. That's a big swing. He was convinced the deal was locked and loaded last night. Uh, Celtics, they made the Mike Muscalo trade. Do you think they're done, Will? You're, you're, you're our lead host I, over there. I, I, do, I do think they're done. I do. Because you added a shooter and you added a big man at the same time. Those were your two needs. So mm. I, I do believe they're done. You also get rid of Justin Jackson, the guy that's been in some talks. I think, I think they're done. All right. Uh, let's see. 76ers now also made the trade for Jalen McDaniels earlier today. You see all of our channel's uh, handles were there at the bottom of the screen for YouTube. Sub to our channels. We're continuing to grow on that front. Keep the subscribers coming. And if you haven't subbed to Chat Sports, make sure you do so as well. Where are we at, Jack? Uh, in our next milestone challenge. I promised a, a beer bong for that once we get there. I'm sure we're not that far away. Uh, he'll check the numbers here. We're aiming for 327,000. We are at, I can see it on, on his screen, we're about 250 away. Hit that sub button. We'll be live through the entire NBA trade deadline. We'll do some trade deadline winners and losers, recap all the moves, hit some some of your questions in a mailbag, and we'll do buyout candidates for tomorrow morning as well since it could be a fun buyout market. It's going to be Russ, interesting. John One of the Wall. better buyout markets that, that we've seen. Last yeah. year I thought it was kind of iffy. Yeah. This year I think it's a little bit better there. All right, hit that sub button. We'll recap some more trades. The Knicks, Josh Hart last night for Cam Reddish. A lottery-protected first-round pick becomes, I believe, four seconds in the event it does not convey, but... I think it's a very good outcome that it does end up conveying there. So, who won this trade, Will? The Knicks. Okay. I do think the Knicks won it. You, uh, it you is think a, a bounce back year from Josh Hart. Um, yeah, I think so. He when after that trade uh, to Portland last year, he averaged 19 points per game last year with the Blazers. This year, down to nine points per game, but he's still pretty much a full time starter for them. And mm. he's going to reunite with Jalen Brunson. I mean, they won a title together at Nova. So they have a lot of chemistry. Uh, they have a lot of experience playing together. Very good friends. Jalen Brunson, very fired up about that trade. So, yeah, I think it's a good fit. I think it's a good fit for Hart in New York. Quick rumor update. Golden State has also been in trade conversations beyond Detroit for, for Sadiq Bay involving James Wiseman trade convos with Portland and San Antonio. We'll see what those deals could potentially look like. The Pistons, Hawks also talked a John Collins deal, but... In classic John Collins trade rumors, things have slowed down a little bit. Hit this a few more trades, rapid fire, then we'll get to some super chats, so we'll go quick here, Will. Same questions for each of them. Who won the trade? Celtics get Mike Muscala, Thunder get Justin Jackson, and two second-round picks. It's a win-win deal. If I okay. pick one team, I'd say Boston. Thunder, who are rebuilding, add some draft capital, get a young player in Justin Jackson at the back of the Celtics bench. If you're the Celtics, you desperately needed a backup big. You got a good one in Muscala. All right, the three-team trade. Matisse Steibel to Portland. 76ers get Jalen McDaniels. Hornets get second-round picks and salary cap filler. Who won this trade? Honestly, the Sixers. I agree. The Sixers, because mm -hmm. you give up. Apparently, I'm reading that the draft pick they gave up was like, already owned by the Hornets. It was just protected. So basically, really? yeah. Just took the, the protections off. That, that's, that's, that's what I read from Keith Smith. Um, okay. You know, I don't know the full details around the picks. But the, the, the second round pick stuff is so complicated. Yeah, yes. just, it's second rounder. Who cares? Right. 
we, uh, and then we you upgrade. On. You upgrade. Your backup four has gotten a lot better. And Jay, and Jay Lynn McDaniels, mm. uh, he's just a better scorer, obviously, than, than uh, Matisse Thibel. Okay. All right, Super Chat time. Matt Batten, $5. Beer cheers for Will, per Matt's request. Cheers, Matt. I like the Lakers because my two favorite players ever are Kobe Magic Johnson and beer cheers for Will. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. Two good selections, I suppose, there. <laughs> All right, we're going to do one thing here. Okay. Will has to pee. So... Every $10 Super Chat that comes in while he's peeing is a shot. All right. I'll Those are the it. rules. All right. That's, all right I'll do so it. I'll do starting it. right now, every $10 Super Chat until he's back on screen is a shot. Get it going right now. <laughs> in the meantime, more Super Chats from B. Slaughter. I say let Westbrook get bought out and sign with the Suns. Ignore the fit. The story of him and KD would be great and could redeem them both. It'd be fun. I don't think it's a realistic outcome, but I do think Russ and Katie together again would be... I'm. It's an entertainment league, right? That's certainly entertaining. So, B. Slaughter, cheers to you. I'm on board with that one. Bottoms up. Will has left the, the, uh, the, the studio. Every $10 super that comes in is a shot for him while he's taking his tiny bladder bathroom break. $2 from Matt Batten. Nets Wolves are my two losers in the trade deadline. I'd be inclined to agree with that one so far. I'd, I don't love what they've done. Unfor it's unfortunate for Brooklyn, but it's how things goes there. All right, Michael Ronquillo. Hope I pronounced that one right in your last name. Sorry if I did not there. Between the Suns and the Nuggets, who wins the NBA championship first? I'm a big Jamal Murray fan. I want to say Denver. I'm going to go Suns. Uh, that, that team should win. They are so loaded across the board there. And $10 from Matt Batten. There's one shot for Will. Every $10 Super Chat's a shot for Will there, Chugs. Every $10 Super Every Chat? Every $10 Super Chat, yeah. Another one from the Great Duke Bothers. Right, I'll, I'll do you all this. For every shot that Will does, I'll do one too. So $10 is two shots. If you send it in before he gets back. You're going to do it for, for these two as well? I'll do it for every time right. comes in until Will gets back. Double value. Two shots every $10. That's, that's actually like, that's uh, normally they're 20 now they're 10 You're getting two for one at 50% off. Do the math for me. The Great Duke Fathers. This one is for the team that spoiled Le Le LeBron's big day. Thunder up. Cheers. The Thunder did win the game. No one will remember that. Absolutely no one, uh, which is fine. The Thunder got the win. I'm sure that's what they care about there. And it's a team sport in the end. From Freddy, $10. The Magic move Bamba or Ross. That's a third shot. He's back in the studio. You're almost out of time. Once he's back on screen, the deal ends. The Magic move Bamba or Ross. Another one from Matt Batten. From Brian Cowart. Two more. Five from Painful Punching Cat. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute here. Woo! That's five shots for Will and five shots for Jeremy. What a time to be alive. Another one from Joseph. Another 10. There we go. That's six shots for Will. You got the fireball? a boy. a boy. Maybe Coop will grab his uh, whatever he got, he's got here in the office. Uh, will they move Bamba or Ross? Another one. Gwendolyn Hill. <laughs> That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shots for Will. That's why he can't break the seal. Eight. So oh, no, sorry. So eight from Brian Coward. I was right. Nine. Chulix. That's nine. You have not been you mic'd have not up. Put me on screen. That's nine shots. One more. One more. Make it ten. Oh, hey. Uh, Y'all are killing. We're me. also sixty likes away, and Will said he'd do the next one for a thousand too. Let's go. There we go. I'll, I'll just slide in here. You can start doing shots. You can share it. You can share it. I'll, 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 I'll take a couple if needed there. But only for you. Not for Will. I appreciate that. It's I funnier that way. Two live shows coming. Oh, yeah? What do you have? You got the... Uh, Will's pounding shots here. Let's go. Uh, Brian just came in. I will do that one for, Bri for Brian. So we got to 10. Oh, you, you, you have your little boot shot glass. I've, uh, I'll do I'll do math as well, but that is it for the ten dollar deal. 
No, keep him coming. We we we, we, coming. we might go later. Keep him coming. Downey wants him. We we Downey we wants we might him. go later. I I did a beer bong and a jungle beer bong earlier too. <laughs> Fun times. About this. What about a beer bong right here in front of the computer? I I did two of them and I didn't spill it. <laughs> I, I think I need to redeem myself. You need to redeem yourself? Yeah. 50 for the beer bong for, for, for right Tyler. Tom's computer. 50 for the beer bong for Tyler. We'll, we'll go half off there since there's been no trades in like an hour. I you spilled. He spilt it. Uh, the NBA shadow banned themselves. What, what are the biggest trades that have gone down today? I, I, I got a haircut. I didn't even see what happened. Today. You did get faded up. You did get faded up. It's pretty good. I like it there. Uh, that was the biggest trade today. I guess it's the, the McDaniels trade? It's been a, 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 been a lot of quiet stuff. That's it, all the super chats that have come in here. I'm here. Uh, Brian Cowart, drink away. Painful punching cat. You said Warriors are going to trade to the Spurs. Or what come to mind? Was it P Pirtle, Yurkic? It's a good question. I don't have a great feel, and, and maybe Cooper will have thoughts on this one. What even is James Wiseman's trade value? Spurs already moved Jakob Pirtle. It doesn't exist. I, I, the limit does not exist. Uh, you're, you're kind of taking a flyer, basically, on the former number two overall pick who hasn't done much in his NBA career. So, I, I, I the Spurs aren't going to move a first. So, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, don't, I don't know. There, Thanks, buddy. I'm just, I'll pull up their roster. Like, it would have to be as part of a bigger deal, right? Like, of getting an asset to help them win right now. So, Portland, like... You're not getting Dame. Let's let's bury that now. So I wait for this to refresh and pull up their full rosters, like back end rotation players. I have two players. more shots left, by the way. That's that's seven. <sighs> I am so effed. M maybe it is Yurkic from Portland that that could make some sense to me, because like I doubt they're gonna get Simons. That's probably way too much. Outside of like also moving like Kaminga or something. Uh, Collins. From the Spurs, like Jay Rich, I'm not. I'm just not sure on that one. There, all right. You got you. You, you have two more shots, Will. Yeah, two more. All right, I have two. I'll, I'll do Bryant, Coward, and Matt's shots for us. We're also 14 likes away from making it three shots for Will. Do you, do you need me to take a shot, Will? Maybe Coop should take yeah, the should thousand take, like shot. Thousand like I'll shot. Take it. Or 14 away. Uh, more shots coming here after we tell you guys about today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and we drink a lot on air sometimes. And I wanted something that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning, first thing, and I feel prepared to take on my day. I don't feel the need for caffeine in the morning anymore, and I feel energized throughout the day as well. Plus, AG1 empowers the gut for whole body health. Covering my nutritional base for the day literally couldn't be any easier. That's why I trust Athletic Greens. I mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. I'm done just like that. I like that it costs less than three bucks a day, by the way. It's a pretty good deal. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. Makes it a win-win. If a comprehensive and convenient solution is what you need, then Athletic Greens is perfect for your supplement routine. They're giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Links in the comments section and the, the, the live chat, I should say, and the description of today's video. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Some more super chats here. We'll go rapid and fire. This is my last shot, by the way. Last Nine. shot for Will. How you Nine. feeling, one to ten? Oh, they asked me in five minutes. I, I will make note. Will is has a little bit of a lightweight, uh, so we'll see how that. That's that an understatement. Turns out there. Uh, Joe Sitch is here for the shots. LOL. I owe one more. Thank you, Gwendolyn D Hill. I, I, damn, I was going to a Nets game this year. At least it's cheap now. It will be much cheaper. Kupo's his shot for a thousand likes. Brian Cowart's got the laughing emoji in there. I appreciate the, 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 the supers there. Swoops got to take the shot too. 
chairs. Coop and Will were just at about 20 shots combined there, which is pretty funny. Uh, thank you, Brian Cowart, for your super chat. Matt Batten says shots. Cheers to you, Matt. Thomas Beatty. Beer cheers. Do you want a beer to wash it down, or do you want, want me to take I, I got, it? I got some beer. Okay, like it, 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 it's if you want to, Will. I, I appreciate it. Lightweight Will. Uh, Kings won the Tyrese Sabonis straight along with the Pigeons. It was a win-win. And we'll that make the playoffs. One of the rare you know what it, it was? And that's not what the initial reaction was. It was, what are the Spurs or Kings, ooh, Kings doing? Yeah. yeah, it worked out for them. Maybe yeah, it's maybe it's maximized it, both, it freed up both the guys. Fox, it's know, maximized both. The point there. Both guys, both teams. Yeah. So I agree, Thomas. Um, I agree. All right, uh, let's hit some of the other trades that have come in so far today. Coop, we do owe your shot for a thousand likes. But by, by the way, do that here in a minute. You got fireball over here if, if if you want that. The big one last night when about caught sixty, maybe fifty percent of America was asleep. Thanks, NBA. Suns get Kevin Durant. Massive, league-shattering Woj nuke from that standpoint. Also, T.J. Ward is a good player. Yeah. Went and healthy. I think so. Um, Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson is a nice piece, Jay Crowder, four unprotected Let's firsts. Wait, get a second. And a 2028 first-round pick. off. come on on screen. Here's producer Coop. I hate Fireball. It could have done the Jack Downs if you want. There you go. You got the boots. Do you just not like cinnamon? Is that, no. is that the issue? No, that's fair. If, if you don't like cinnamon, Fireball's not, not your thing at all. Obviously a huge win for the Suns. Pride favorites in the Western Conference here. It's not the worst. This is not the worst Nets era, though. They, they've been it's worse. It's still better than KG. It's, it, it's better than, than the KG, Paul Pierce, uh, Williams <laughs> yeah, era. Yeah, you're not kidding. Which, that was a which disaster. Which, the Celtics took, they did took the, a, but Jason Tatum with those They did the exact picks. same thing. And I'm and I'm sorry. It was the exact same yeah. thing. Yeah. I thought it would be different. But back then, but they wasn't. weren't expected to like win uh, several titles when when they put that group. No, together. but they thought they were going to win one, they, and they were they, just a disaster. They, they were expected to. This was going to be a dynasty in Brooklyn, yeah. and and they did not win anything. They didn't make a conference finals. Also, uh, reports and rumors of hey. You know, what I um, saw yesterday, Tom. Sorry to catch you off. Very no, good. Remember. It was Game Seven, Brooklyn in the Bucks, twenty twenty one. Kevin Durant's foot yeah. was on the line. Yeah, just think one centimeter. One, yeah, one centimeter changed just the course change. of NBA history. It's true. How wild is that? Yeah. All right, let's play a game here. Shout out your favorite teams. We've been over an hour with no trades. Let's go. Let's go, Woj. Come, come Wake on, up. Pat Riley. Wake up. Get something done. Yeah. Pat, Pat Riley's sleeping again. Shams is hanging out with Kay Adams. Yeah. So that's probably why he's been offline. <laughs> it's your boy wants a Woj for Shams poll. Uh, I, I, don't know. I don't know if they are. I, I kind of I wonder if, if Shams is at any actual game. Oh, in, no. In he's the life. risk god. He's the risk yeah, god. Yeah, we say that. Do you know, do you know I, what, don't, I don't think Shams do, has do, game. Do you know I'll be what, honest. Do you know what Riz he works is? too much. Do you know what Riz is? Yeah, he works too much. He's, he's got no actual game. Yeah. He talks a big game. No, Sham, Sham, he, Shams. He, he, ta he talks a big game. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think he's any actual game. I think he works too much. Source. Someone who works well, too much. No, no, no actual game. There we, we have a trade. At long last, the Denver Bones Nuggets. Island. Are shipping Bones Highland to the L.A. Clippers. We'll come back to this weigh-in in a little bit. But there's our is that is that a Woj bomb? Why for yes and for no? That's a bomb. That's another a bomb. trade. Here we go. The Thunder are shipping Darius Baisley wow. to the Suns for Dario Saric and a second round pick. So two trades. We'll break them both down. We will stay live. Well through after the NBA trade deadline, make sure you guys are subbed. Free videos every single day. When we get to 327,000 subscribers, I'm doing a beer bong. Did we get there? We are inside of 200 subs away. Hit that sub button, and I'll do a beer bong here live. Darius Baisley, Syracuse legend. Uh, the Clippers are sending D Denver a pair of second-round picks for Bones. Huh? That, that is it. Uh, I think the defensive That's issues That's a really causing problems there. But when you got guys like Kawhi uh, to defensive linchpins, you probably don't need. Uh, you probably don't need an elite 
uh, on-ball defender guard like Bones Highland, who I, I've made this one before to the office. Nobody finds guards normally drafted late round one and makes them just good somehow, like the Denver <laughs> Nuggets do. Denver yeah, does that kidding. every year, you're and I'm kidding. and I'm or, every other year. And I'm very impressed. By and, it. and and I forgot who the super chatter was earlier, but they made a good point how the chemistry on that Denver team is really good. Mm. Like you look at that roster, and you're like, yeah, that's the fourth or fifth best roster in the West. Mm. But yet they're first in the West because of how they gel together, because they play team basketball, give that coaching staff a lot of credit. And maybe Denver mm. is going to be motivated after this deadline, right? They didn't really do a whole lot here at the deadline. They trade away Bones Highland. We'll see if they make another move here in the next hour. But when you're talking about Western Conference contenders, everyone is saying Dallas. Everyone's saying Phoenix. You're not hearing Denver brought up, even though they're first in the West. you got to think that's going to be bulletin board material for a team that could very well win the West. Yeah, Bones Highland, 12 points per game this year. I think he'll play a big role as one of those lead on-ball guards in L.A. Curious if a Reggie Jackson trade could also materialize. And now. this take adult. L.A. out of the Russell Westbrook sweepstakes? It might. It might, actually. Uh, we'll see about that one. So, grade the trade. Or who won the trade. Either one there. It's fine. Uh, Highland for two seconds. There was also this trade. The Thunder get Dario Sarge and a pick. And Darius Baisley. And then, here's your ball. Oh! James wow. Wiseman to the Pistons for Sadiq Bay. Wow. James Wiseman going to Detroit in exchange for Sadiq Bay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what else happens there. There's the deal as we have it right now. We'll give it some time to see what else other potential assets happen there. The Pistons add the former number two overall pick, and the Warriors get a win now guard in Sadiq Bay. Wow. They end the James Wiseman experiment. Thoughts on this trade I here for, for both sides. Sides. I love this deal for both teams. I really do. Uh, I thought Sadiq Bay was going to be part of the future in Detroit, uh, but they add James Wiseman, like you said, former number two overall pick. I think Wiseman really needed a fresh start. Now he goes to a Detroit team where he's probably going to be able to play a bigger role, where he can be part of the future there in Detroit with Cade Cunningham, Jay Nivey, some of those young pieces they have. And then the Warriors get a player that can help them win Right now, Sadiq Bey is really, really good, averaging nearly 15 points per game this year. I've been Wait a minute. Sadiq Bey is on his way to Atlanta in a multi-team trade. Wait, John Collins? John Collins? John Collins? We don't know yet. We'll see. This well, is a three-team trade now. Just forget what I said about the Warriors getting Sadiq Bey. Uh, I guess we all, we'll have to update Chaos here in a second. So the Hawks are getting Sadiq Bay in a mall. It's it's got to be John Collins, right? It's it, has be, it has to be. It has to be John Collins. It we'll has to see. Be John Collins. So Your Warriors tweet deck is ahead of me by like five seconds. There by you the go. Way. So we'll see what happens. This is now a three-team trade. Pistons are getting James Wiseman. The Hawks are getting Sadiq Bay, and the Warriors are getting. We'll see. It's got to be John Predict. Collins. Predict. Who are they it's getting? It's got to be John so Collins. So the Hawks are sending five second round picks to the Warriors for Sadiq Bay. Something about five second round picks today. First Jake Crowder, now Sadiq Bay. That can't be it. They, 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 they have to be getting a player back, right? They have to be. Because Sadiq Bay for five seconds, the freaking Warriors should have just kept him. Like five, that, that they I have really to get a player like back, the right? I really the fit there with Sadiq Bay on Golden State. I yeah. like the fit a lot. The fit a lot. I know it was the, shooting his dip each no, year at three-point range. The Warriors but can't be done. The Warriors can't be done. This this can't be it. What we have so far, it, we'll, we'll just hang out on this because there's no way it's over. Pistons are getting James Wiseman. The Hawks are getting Sadiq Bay. The Warriors are getting five second-round picks. It's got to be something else, right? Yeah, it has like, to be. Like, there's no way they're only... Like, that's a bad deal for Golden State if it's just picks. It, 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 that, there's no way. It's got to be. It's got to be something. Maybe As it sits now, I love I mean, this trade for Atlanta. If the Warriors... They have an hour. I mean, maybe they'll turn those five second-round picks into another player. But I thought for sure... It's the value of Jay Crowder, apparently. And Chris Haynes is confirming that. I haven't seen anything about a player going to Golden State. Have there's not got, there's got to be more here. There's something that's missing. And Brian I, Windhorst, I, what is going on? I, I kind of, I, I, I'll be honest. I hate that trade 
if it's just five I, I seconds. Hate, I hate that trade for Golden State. Like, I love the trade for Detroit. No one cares I about love the second round for picks. Atlanta. You're getting five, you know, Moses Moody's with that pick, basically. Like, actual Moses Moody's, not like the potential of Moses Moody. I don't I don't get this. I'm also a bit curious from, from the Pistons' standpoint here. What's their plan at, at the big man spot? Like, how, how are you going to juggle everyone that you have on this roster? With You also spent a premium pick on Jalen uh, Duran this past draft, and you have Isaiah Stewart. Do all three rotate? Like, I, I kind of didn't hate the fit with Sadiq Bey. Like, I'm just, ugh. This, this, this can't be it. There's, this can't some, be it. There's something else here. There's this, something else here. Yeah, I'd say maybe, maybe who won the trade is a good one here. Because um, I, I like a Ivy. I like Bogdanovich if they keep him. But, like, Sadiq Bey was a nice piece to them. As like Sadiq Bey was a great piece. I thought for sure if they were going to trade six four, man. it would have been Bogdanovich. I didn't think yeah. so. When I woke up this morning, I did not think Sadiq Bey was going to get traded. I really didn't. Yeah. I was not expecting him to be the piston that got traded. And I was not expecting James Wiseman to end up in Detroit. I'm very, very surprised. You mentioned it. They have Jalen Duran. They, Duran. they have Isaiah Stewart. Now they have James Wiseman. How are they going to balance out those young centers? Oh, and, and Bagley, too, who hasn't done a whole lot this year yeah, at all, really. But, hurt. like, I... Nerlens is gone. I said some point, maybe maybe even buyout for Nerlens Noel. But like, I don't, I don't get this trade. I don't. There, there has to be more. Now, or the, or I want to know. There's only five seconds. Who cares? Are all five of those second round picks coming from no. Atlanta? <sighs> hold some, on, hold on. I, I, you know I, what I'm I, saying? I, yeah, I, I have their assets. Hold on here. Let me let me scroll up. Uh, I have them saved. Uh, Atlanta has. I'm protected first. They have okay. So it, <laughs> oh shit, Atlanta has twelve second round picks to trade. So probably yeah. Okay. They have twelve second rounders. Send me, send me that link. I'll send it to you. Yeah. It's just like it's the generic layout of their assets. I, I'll, I could probably get the actual nitty gritty ones too here. I guess. I, I mean. I guess they're all from Atlanta. I, I would like, give not up, individually, I would give but up five trades. second round picks for Sadiq Bay. Hundred percent. And then that's who cares. Uh, that, that, that's a, I love this deal for Atlanta. I'm curious about it for the Pistons, how it all fits together. And I'm, I am confused by it for the Warriors. Like, now, very, I, very confused. And I think it's very possible that Detroit is not done either. What if they try to trade one of their young centers now? Mm. And Duran and Stewart. I don't know. Uh, other... Bojan Bogdanovich, another guy's been trade rumors. Uh, so I'll read off all of the seconds Atlanta has here. They have the Cavs second, uh, the Blazers second, the Pistons second, the Clippers second, the Hawks second, the Celtics. They have some pick swaps that probably aren't going to convey. Hornets, Hawks, and Sixers, and Nets, and Pelican. All this year, they have all the fucking second round picks this year. So some of them early, some mid, some late. Justin Holiday, Frank Kaminsky to Houston for Garrison Matthews and Bruno Fernando. So the Rockets have made a move. It's not Eric Gordon. And the Hawks continue to make moves. So they get Sadiq Bey. Now they get Garrison Matthews, who's a pretty good player in Houston, and Bruno Fernando. Explain to the audience in NFL terms. <laughs> um, okay. Rose says this is a, this is a cost-cutting move for Atlanta here. You're talking about the Frank Kaminsky, the, Justin Holiday, the, the Kaminsky Holiday trade, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember, I remember when Bruno Fernando was going to be great. Even though he was, uh, it's great. it's so tough to put this in NFL terms. <laughs> weird <laughs> NBA trade. <laughs> it's a weird NBA that exists, trade. and we go. I like okay. Garrison Matthews. I almost bought a Garrison Matthews jersey. You're, I really like Garrison. You're Matthews. a weird guy, Will. I know. I, I, I'm, Back I'm at just you, not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. So, yeah, Kaminsky. And Holiday to Houston for Garrison Matthews and Bruno Fernando to Atlanta. So, salary move, I suppose, in the end there, as there was no trades for an hour-ish, and then three trades, including the James Wiseman blockbuster-ish with Sadiq Bey, that it's been like seven minutes, and I haven't seen anything else for Golden State. And I kind of think this is it.
which is weird. I, I'm, I, I have seen nothing on John Collins. Five seconds. Maybe they could flip him later, but I, oh, that's, hmm. That doesn't move the needle for me, even though it's been done twice today. Every, uh, when you guys subscribe, we have free videos for you, news, rumors, trades, free agency, and a whole lot more. What's our update here, uh, Producer Jack? When we get to 327,000 subs, I'm doing a beer bong. We are at, ooh, we're 100 away. Hit that sub button. We are inside of an hour until the NBA trade deadline. Hit that sub button. Free videos every single day. We have what? The trade details. Here it is. Rockets get Justin Holiday, Frank Kaminsky. Hawks get Garrison Matthews and Bruno Fernando. So, interesting. It, it, it's, it's, it's a done. The Wiseman deal's done, we're saying. That's a joke of a trade. Uh, it sounds like, we can go back to it here too. It sounds like the James Wiseman trade is just this. Five second round picks. Just take Sadiq Bay. I, the Sadiq second Bay round picks really don't do anything for you. No, seriously. I, they're, they're probably the big losers here at the deadline. If, if, if the results stand, if they don't do anything else, this has been an absolute joke of a trade deadline by the Golden State Warriors. You have two teams right in front of you in the West, the Dallas Mavericks and the Phoenix Suns, that were ultra-aggressive, adding two superstars to the deadline. Instead, you get five second-round picks. What a joke. Uh, I'm stunned. I am stunned. Save it for I the don't, cut. Are, 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 are the Warriors throwing the, save it for the, throwing cut. the white flag? I... When we're good for the cut, we'll do it. I great trade, ABC D F for the for the I Warriors. I do not F. I what does draft capital do for you? Not all, not even first round picks. You get five second round picks. I think a couple are going to be early, but like, what are we doing out here? I just I let me see if I can find out where the where the earliest. That's stunning. The I earliest thought, I thought second. Golden State might have go after KD. I thought they might go after. A big name player. Like the earliest second Atlanta would get appears to be like the fortieth pick. So don't love that. Maybe the maybe the Pistons are in their own second as well, which would be pretty early. I, uh. We're gonna break this down more in depth. Wills and shambles. Warriors fans concerned. We'll break down the James Wiseman blockbuster kind of trade in a minute here in depth on our NBA Live trade deadline coverage. The Warriors have traded James Wiseman, but it might not be for the player or the picks you thought it was going to be. A three-team trade involving the Pistons and the Hawks. As we sit here filming, this appears to be the finalized trade package. If it changes... We'll do a new video. The Pistons get James Wiseman from the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors initially got Sadiq Bey in the reported trade, but they are sending Sadiq Bey to the Atlanta Hawks, and the Warriors are getting not one, not two, not three, not four, but five second-round picks in a... A deal that I don't like that much for Golden State. Will Scott, as we sit here live on our NBA trade coverage, you hate this deal. This is an absolute joke of a deal for Golden State. You are supposed to move James Wiseman for either maybe a first-round pick or to get maybe a package together, put him as the centerpiece in a package to get a really good player that can help you win right now. And when this trade first went down, the report was initially that it was a James Wiseman for Sadiq Bay swap. And I'm like, this is a great deal for Golden State. Instead, you get Atlanta involved here in a three-team deal. You get five second-round picks from Atlanta. What are we doing here? I do not understand, Bob Myers. What are we doing? This is still a team in Golden State that wants to compete for a championship. You are the defending NBA champs. You came into this week. Seventh in the West, right behind Dallas and right behind Phoenix. You know what they did at the deadline? 
They went and got some star players in Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. You get five second-round picks. What does that do for you? Yeah, draft capital, not even a first-round pick that you get in this deal. You could have had Sadiq Bey. That would have been a great deal for your team. I'm not saying you shouldn't have traded James Wiseman, but to not get a player in return is an absolute joke, and you better get something done in the next hour. Wills and Shambles, how are you guys feeling? Grade the trade. You're giving an F, right? It's an F. Okay, that's what F I figured. I, I, I had to check. I had to check. Grade the trade. A, B, C, D, or F. It's the pinned comment on today's video. Maybe you're madder than Will, which seems unlikely. Maybe you're a little bit less mad. Head down there at the pinned comment. If the ad break comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Grade the James Wiseman three-team trade. A, B, C, D, or F in the comment section. F minus. <laughs> the Warriors made Wiseman the number two overall pick. Uh, there is a report out there saying, uh, gisting it for you, Will. Wiseman was expendable. They wanted roster spots to sign potentially guys like Ty Jerome, Anthony Lamb to full-time deals, which I'm not saying it's a good thing, Coop. I, he's, Will Coop uh, goes, Ty oh, Jerome. my God, wow. in, my back, in, in the back of the mind there, or the back of the studio. Uh, and they don't. Maybe they don't want to pay Sadiq Bay with the luxury tax stuff, but I. This is a joke. I, I'm, I'm fine trading Wiseman. Yeah, I'm fine we, with that too. We loved when it first was broken as Wiseman for Sadiq Bay were like awesome for yeah. Golden State. Now it's Wiseman for five seconds. This feels like to me, Tom, that after the Steph Curry injury, and he's expected to miss several weeks, that the Warriors are ways, raising the white flag on this year that they're not expecting to compete for a title this year. They're like, well, if Steph Curry's not going to get back in the next few weeks, we might not even make the playoffs. Right now they're, what, the seven or eight seed? So I fe this feels like a just giving up move from Golden State. When I look at it, I believe that Golden State does not feel like they are going to compete for a title this year. They're acknowledging that. I thought a move to the deadline would maybe change that. Mm -hmm. But to me, th that's just what it looks like to me, Tom. They're, they're game over 500 right now, but teams like the Blazers and the Lakers and not many others are lurking there as well. But that's a surprising trade in the end, Will. Very surprising. We'll talk some more about it here after yeah. a word from our sponsor. I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every single day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 every morning and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. I came into this year wanting to get healthier and starting my year on AG1 has helped me do just that. I take it every morning. I feel happier, healthier, and more energized. Covering my nutritional basis for the day. Literally couldn't be any easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning, done. I also really like that it costs less than $3 a day. That's really good if you ask me. It's a pretty effective, really effective daily habit with the highest quality source ingredients, win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Again, athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That link is in the comments and the description of today's video. I've been on AG1 for a few weeks. I've already seen the benefits of what it's doing for me. I feel so much healthier each and every single day. I used to drink, just ask host Tom Downey, I was drinking two or three sodas a day. I'm like, no, I got to get healthier. So instead, I'm taking AG1 every single day. You do the same at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Tom, the soda was a problem for me for a long time, as yes, you know. Yes, it, it was. It was a problem. You were drinking way too much Dr. Pepper, which, hey, it's good stuff, but, you know, not, not great <laughs> for you. Uh, Entering today's trade deadline, we had labeled the Warriors as small buyers. I will make note that uh, Sham Sharania says the Warriors have interest in OG on Now, that would change my thoughts on this. Yes, if it they, would. If they wanted those picks Flip those five to get as OG, part of it. then this, that completely changes my thinking. Yes. It completely. And we even said when this went down, there has to be something more to this. This does not make sense. If it's just five seconds, which, I don't know, can we call that a first? Is, is that how we're going to go moving forward? Five seconds is, is one first moving forward, like trade value-wise? There's no real trade value chart for the NBA. Yeah. Like, that makes a little bit more sense, I suppose, but 
Golden State, I, I'm fine trading Wiseman. I am too. But I am of the mindset you should be all in right now. I think and, so, and they're yeah. not – go win with Steph Curry. He'll be back at some point. You can make the worst case But do you think the playing. injury is affecting their trade deadline Maybe strategy. a little bit, but I, I would have been a lot more aggressive if, if I were Golden State, and that's not enough for me. So if things change, if there's another trade for Golden State, we will have you guys covered. Hit that subscribe button right here on our Warriors YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Warriors TV. The news, the rumors, we'll do buyout candidates as well. Hit that sub button for free Warriors videos. Maybe they're not done, but as it stands right now, the trade, James Wiseman to the Detroit Pistons, Sadiq Bey to the Hawks, and not one, not two, not three, not four, but five, again, five second round picks to the Golden State Warriors. One more thought for you guys. Are you sad that James Wiseman is gone? S for sad. G for your glad, ignoring the trade value, Will. Sad or glad over, the, over this one? It certainly mixed feelings. You know, mm. I think it was the right move for both parties to move on. I think a fresh start will be really good for Wiseman. But you're sad mm. it didn't work out because when you drafted him second overall in 2020, you had really high hopes for this guy. And you were in an interesting situation where you had a lot of injuries there before you in a position mm -hmm. to have the second overall pick. I mean, a dynasty like Golden State's not going to be in that position, you think, but they were in a position to take James Wiseman second overall in 2020. And he was going to be kind of the young guy that the franchise mm -hmm. would turn to for years to come. It just didn't work out. We certainly wish him the best. I'll say this about Wiseman. He still has all the potential in the world. I really hope he does well in Detroit. All right, get those votes in. S for sad, G for glad. Reunion time John again! Wall, John Wall! John do Wall! Do the John Wall. Do the John Wall. Do the John Wall. Back in H-Town. The Will place that he hated. He's back. Will can't dance for the record. Oh uh, all gosh. right. John Wall. Danny Green in Houston. Uh, so more pieces here. This is a chaos trade. Eric Gordon is the big piece. He's going to the L.A. Clippers. Memphis is sending Danny Green and John Wall to the Houston Rockets as Wall is back in Houston for now. I would bet all of my money a buyout is coming here that as well. Is, a buyout's going to happen. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Yeah. So we'll, also, we'll update this graphic here in a second. Three second-round picks are going to the Grizzlies as well. So a lot of moving pieces on this one, and they the Rockets will rave John yes. Wall. Well, it's just it's just it's just funny. Mm. It's just funny. Uh, Eric Gordon, good for him. He was very loyal to that Houston franchise for a mm. long time. He was the last member of that Rockets team that made the Western Conference Finals a few times with James Harden. Uh, it didn't work out. Uh, they didn't. They didn't win. They didn't win at all, mainly because of the Chris Paul injury a few years back. Um, but Eric Gordon stayed with the franchise when Chris Paul left, when James Harden left, when Clint Capella left, and uh, he was a good mentor for some of these young guys. But you want to open up more opportunities for some of those young mm -hmm. guys. That's why the Rockets have finally opted to move on. It feels like the last three seasons. Eric Gordon has been in rumors of the deadline, and they finally move him this year. The post-trade deadline buyout market's going to be fun. Going to be a lot of fun. John Wall will be a factor in that. I could kind of see Danny Green getting bought out maybe a little bit too. Uh, now he wasn't yeah. his prime, but I'll throw, it, I'll throw it out there pure hypothetically. Is John Wall, for a very brief moment, will be back as a member of the Houston Rockets. Then bought out, he'll go somewhere else in the end. All right, from uh, some super chats. We're way behind on these. Let's get caught up. Dark, f uh, dark R. Oh, I owe a beer bong, too. All right, got to 327,000. Let's go. Will, supers, me, beer bong. Let, let's ride. Let's do it. Dark R, 4I, what's up? Uh. Do you think the Bucks make any other moves? Potentially Grayson and some other things for Bojan and D. Rose. Yeah, I think Bogdanovich is a name to watch. Uh, I, I said Eric Gordon. Uh, uh, to Milwaukee earlier, uh, or to Philadelphia as well. Those are the two teams I was looking at. I also think uh, I, that the Clippers I, I, are a good deal. I think deal. Shams is wrong on that one, but I think we have a, a, a trade coming in. Keep reading the, keep okay. reading the supers. Uh, but yeah, Bojan is a name to watch there for the Bucks. absolutely. Wyatt, what's up? 
Plumley tweeted a prayer emoji. Who's getting them, Kings? Yes. Maybe the Lakers. Maybe the Lakers. Trade alert. Oh, hold on. Patrick Beverly on his way out of L.A. Oh! For Mo Bamba. There's wow. the other move wow. we thought might come for L.A. We were talking about Mo Bamba. We were talking about Mo Bamba to the Lakers. Now we know. So uh, no more be, D'Angelo be, Russell, Patrick Beverly duo. They're going to be playing the song Crypto.com Arena. We're go. not, we're not going to sing it right now, but they're going to be playing it. We'll get that up. I, there, I think there might be another piece involved money-wise. We'll see. We'll get but the trade details on screen they're, they're, here in a second. It'll, it'll be good. But just Patrick straight up. Beverly has been traded to the Orlando Magic for Mo Bamba. I doubt that's a straight-up swap, but we'll let you know the details here in a second. I think it probably is. Yeah. Okay. Mo Bamba to the Lakers. Oh, that, that, that explains your uh, earlier trade for L.A. Wow. I, I love that for L.A. It's like a fun, like, NBA 2K, like, just making trades to make trades team. I love it. All right, I'm going to do this beer bong, Will. Let's Thoughts go, on the Beverly uh, Mo Bamba trade I, here. I think it's a great, I mean, <laughs> I feel bad for this Pat This deadline's Bev. lit, and I love it. We'll see if Pat Bev stays in Orlando. Um, beer I, bong. I think it's a great deal for the Lakers. After the Thomas Bryant trade, I think he needed to add a backup center behind Anthony Davis to help out AD. He's had some injury issues throughout his career. I think Mo Bomb is a great fit. I think he I think he's uh I think he's built for LA man. I think it's gonna be Woo! great. That was great. Excuse me. Also the in the uh, Rockets trade also updated, by the way. Uh Lakers are gonna send second round draft compensation. So kind of vague, but they got three seconds part of the uh the Thomas Bryant trade. I could see one of them shifting over there as part of this deal. So, excuse me. A another Lakers trade. Scale of one to ten. How fun has this NBA trade deadline been? Ten and a half. Ten and a half. It's been unbelievable. You um, guys can vote too. This this is this the greatest trade deadline of all time? I think it's got to be. If if Durant had been dealt when people were awake, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's fair. But people were not awake. Uh, from that standpoint there. Let's hit these supers real quick. Then we'll go more in depth on the Lakers, Mo Bomb, Beverly Trade. We'll rehit the Eric Gordon stuff and recap here too. From Michael, big Lakers fan. Lakers got to draft younger players for the future after the Brown retires from the NBA. My mindset set for LA, go all in right now. And then, and then rebuild. I think if you try to do that, the half measure of still draft young guys that are late first round picks you're you're not going to help yourself out enough uh in the end but i appreciate the super chat there five dollars thank you michael joseph says kings beam team baby see if they do think they do anything else today or they're just going to kind of be where they're at might be where they're at but uh, hashtag beam team i really like that tradition in sacramento have you seen that they light the beam yeah. above the arena. It's fun. It's, it's a really fun. Credit to Sacramento. It's really good to see them finally winning. Yep. All right, from Painful Punching Cat, I literally walked to my next class in five trades. There was like an hour break and then like three in a row and then three more in a row. Kind of funny how that all works out there. And last one from Matt Batten. I love this trade for Lakers. It's great. I'm excited for it. This trade has been awesome. A trade deadline has been awesome so far, too. Love the show. And you're the best, guys. Thank you, Matt. I, we each owe a beer. Cheers, Will. Cheers. For our Super Chat menu. Cheers. Dollar for a shout-out. It's IE any Super Chat. Five for beer. Cheers. Ten bucks. We'll talk about your team. Twenty for a shot. Hundred for a beer bong. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll make it fifty for a regular beer bong, like kind of a halfy one, and then hundred we'll do jungle beer bong. What's also, up, it is worth noting the Rockets got a pick swap in that deal in the Eric Gordon deal. The Rockets get the rights to swap the Bucks pick with the Clippers. So right now, that's the difference between the twenty-eighth overall pick and the eighteenth overall pick. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's, that's, decent, pretty, that's, a, that's yeah. actually very valuable yeah. then for you. Okay, valuable, that, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. All right, we'll revisit that. But we're going to focus in here on the Lakers trade as they acquire Mo Bamba for Patrick Beverly and a second-round pick. We'll break that down right now. 
It's another deal for the Los Angeles Lakers here on the NBA trade deadline 2023 edition. It's been awesome so far. So many moves with the Lakers heavily involved. They shipped out Thomas Bryant earlier today and get maybe an upgrade at the position or well, spin it that way at least. Mo Bamba headed to LA in exchange for Patrick Beverly, the backup guard, kind of a decent rotation player, and second round picks. I think it's going to be one second round pick, but that's kind of been conflicting reports on that front, but second round pick compensation for Mo Bamba to LA. There's their new backup center to help help keep Anthony Davis in theory healthy. Another move for LA. I think they are one of the biggest NBA trade deadline winners, Will. What do you guys think? I absolutely agree. They kind of got sneakily a lot better here at mm -hmm. the deadline. You know, they didn't trade for Kyrie, but they traded for a couple of really good pieces that I, I think are going to help them win right away and maybe contend for a playoff spot this season. Uh, Chris Haynes is now reporting that it is one second round pick, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, in this deal. So the Magic will get Pat Bev and a second round pick. Pat Bev uh, could be a buyout candidate in Orlando. We'll see what the Magic decide to do with him. Uh, but the Lakers address a really big need, I think, after trading Thomas Bryant. Uh, Thomas Bryant apparently wanted out of L.A., wasn't happy about his role after the return of Anthony Davis from his injury. So they traded him to, um, to was it, uh, where, did, where did he go again? Denver. Thomas Denver, Bryant? Excuse me, Denver. Denver, yep. He went to Denver. Hard to keep up with all these trades. <laughs> he went to Denver for three second-round picks. Uh, so you trade probably one of those second-round picks you've acquired here uh, to the Magic for Mo Bamba, who is one of the better backup center options uh, that was a trade candidate this year. I, I like this move for L.A. It does sound like Thomas Bryant wanted out. We kind of mentioned that in the middle of our last video. Patrick Beverly is a decent loss from a, a backup guard perspective, but L.A. also acquired Malik Beasley, D'Angelo Russell when they shipped out um, – Russell Westbrook, part of that earlier yesterday blockbuster. They have Dennis Schroeder. Lonnie Walker can still play minutes for you, so I think they're okay at guard. They wanted a big, massive roster change for L.A. at this year's trade deadline. So grade the trade. A, B, C, D, or F? Let me know in the comment section. A, B, C, D, or F? This will be the pinned comments on today's video so if an ad break comes here on our lakers channel take advantage of it a b c d or f let me know how you feel about this deal for the la lakers let's talk more now about the mo bamba acquisition who's the, the numbers are not eye-popping i thought he was better last year in a, a bigger role he was, which he yeah. would the, the magic have lots of different big men on that roster that they've been trying to play key roles for you know Mo Wagner, Wendell Carter, uh, Paolo Bancaro, even Bull Bull. So they got a lot of guys in that four or five role. Limited minutes truly available for Mo Bamba. He can probably get more now in LA and might be able to be a 10 and 8 guy for you again like he was last year. I, I agree. I think he's going to be kind of the number two center here behind Anthony Davis. We'll see what they have to do. You have Hatchamura now. You have Jared Vanderbilt. Maybe Vanderbilt will be more of the backup four behind Hatchamura, and then maybe uh, Mo Bob will be the backup five here behind AD. But with AD's injury history, I think it was really important to acquire a backup center here at the deadline after trading Thomas Bryant. I think a lot of us were confused about the Thomas Bryant deal when it first went down, but then we learned he wanted out of L.A., and now we learn this, that the Lakers have, an, have acquired Mo Bamba, and when the Thomas Bryant trade went down, I think a lot of us were thinking, you and me included, Tom, about Mo Bamba to the Lakers, the fit there. I think it's a great fit. I think it's a really good opportunity for him uh, to, to kind of grow as a player in Los Angeles. Still a really young player is Mo Bamba. Yeah, I, I like this move for L.A. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of what they've done to the deadline this year. I'm not sure if this is let Rob cook or let GM LeBron cook, but either way, I think it's done really good things for this team. They have to earn their way back into the playoff race with where they sit in the Western Conference standings, but they're in aggressive mode, as they should be. You've got LeBron James, AD, keep them healthy. I think acquisitions like D'Angelo Russell, Mo Bamba, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, all helps the Lakers do that. I'm a big fan of what they've done so far. More on this trade coming, but first, if you want to bet on the Lakers or anything involving the NBA 
Use our sportsbook partner, BetUS, chatsports.com slash Lakers. When you use promo code Lakers125, takes you right in to the BetUS site, and you'll get a 125% deposit bonus when you put down at least 100 bucks. Of course, it's also Super Bowl week. You can bet on the big game as well. Eagles minus one. They're a favorite in that game against the Chiefs. The over-under set at 51. Tons of uh, prop bets you can do. Some fun ones that are entertaining. The National Anthem by Chris Stapleton. The over-under set at 125 seconds. Will, over or under? Over. Every over. single time. Over? Okay, over from, yep. from, Chris uh, from Will on Chris Stapleton. And a... Uh, this is funny. It's even up there. Kind of mean it's up there, too, but whatever. Rihanna wardrobe malfunction is plus 650. The no minus 1,200. It's going to be the no there. Uh, go bet on the Super Bowl. NBA, you can get Western Conference odds as well. Chatsports.com slash Lakers. Promo code is Lakers125. Check them out. Bet on the NBA, college basketball, and more. Hit that. Go check them out there for us. Appreciate BetUS sponsoring today's show. The Lakers overall, let's see, you've got, you've swapped out some pieces. Uh, just roster overview, right? So it's no particular order here. It's D'Angelo Russell, Dennis Schroeder, Lonnie Walker, Malik Beasley is kind of your guards. Your wings, of course, LeBron James, uh, kind of Troy Brown mixed in there a little bit. Maybe some Austin Reeves occasionally. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt, Rui Hachimura, Anthony Davis, Wenyan Gabriel, and now... Of course, the acquisition of Mo Bamba as your more traditional five following the apparent trade request of Thomas Bryant. I'd be really happy. Who gets to go be a backup now. If, if I was the Lakers about this front office, or about how this front office is, mm. is done, uh, is uh, we just now learned from Chris Haynes that mm. Thomas Bryant did request a yeah. trade. Uh, we're also learning that the Lakers remain in discussions with the Detroit Pistons on Bojan Bogdanovic. <laughs> what are they going to move for him? I don't know. I don't know. And you know what? We'll see. The, you know what? The Lakers have been great so far. I don't know how they could pull it off, but I love all their trades as a unit. You had a, a good forward in Rui Hachimura. I think it's upside as a as a piece for you long term. You make the trade I love for D'Angelo Russell. You get rid of Russell Westbrook still. You add Mo Bamba. It, you, you've overhauled this roster in a very quick period of time in a way that I like it in the end. And maybe you see Beverly get bought out by the Magic and – if I ended up back in the, with the Clippers, but I feel like that's unlikely with all the moves they've made. I'm a big fan of what LA has done so far. If you had to gray the deadline for the Lake Show, what a. would you get? I would give it an A as well. Other quick Maybe note, a minus, by the I'd way, give it an a. Uh, one of the second rounders they got from uh, that Thomas Bryant trade, they then moved to to Orlando. So they basically got two second round picks in Mo Bamba for Thomas Bryant and Patrick and Patrick Beverly. Beverly. That's a pretty good deal. I don't mind that's that pretty one good at all. Deal. Don't mind that at all. Now you, I. I'm a little bit worried about that defensive and defensive unit at guard. Lonnie Walker can help there a lot, I think, but it's not it's not great. Right. But also, give me shooters. <laughs> build the way you should build around LeBron. That's shooting, not defense there. We will have, if there's more Lakers news, we'll have you guys covered. Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash at Lakers TV. Free videos on our Lakers channel. Maybe they're done. Maybe they're not, but we'll see what happens on that front following the massive Mo Bamba trade with the L.A. Lakers, Patrick Beverly, and a second-round pick going to Orlando. I assume you think the Lakers won this trade? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. The goal here for L.A., simply put, make the playoffs. So will they, whether it's play-in game, which I guess will count, or just outright as one of the seeds before having to play the play-in games, will they make the playoffs? Why for yes and for no? Sound off for us in the comment section right now. We got some more trades we'll get to here in a little bit. Uh, get your votes in. Why? A lot, a lot of ends coming in. I, I think they make it. West is loaded, I know, but I think they'll, I think they'll make I that think happen. I think they'll sneak in. I think they make that Probably happen. Probably get a plan spot and then, and then win the plan. Yeah. All right. Uh, some more trades. Uh, there was a ten dollars super chat from Black Order saying, "Let's talk about the Pelicans." Well, they've, they've made a trade. They get Josh Richardson for Devontae Graham and four second-round picks. So Pelicans adding a, a decent score still in, in terms yeah. of Richardson. It was not maybe what he was thought supposed to be long-term, but 
plus the Spurs get assets. That's all I care about. Thoughts on this deal here? Yeah, you mentioned the Spurs getting assets. The assets. They've, uh, they've acquired a lot of picks this deadline, which I think was the goal. And then Richardson's a pretty solid player, putting up 11.5 points mm. per game, shooting nearly 36% from three. Mm. Uh, Devontae Graham, you know, I think that's a decent pickup for San Antonio. We'll see how he develops there. But I think overall, a good move for New Orleans. We were waiting for them to make a move. They finally done so right before the deadline. All right, we have an update that I think might not be over. <laughs> On this trade. I knew this trade wasn't over. Kevin Knox is also going to the Golden State Warriors, although the report is he might not stay there for very long. So Kevin Knox has been dealt before. He's averaging <clears throat> five and a half points per game for uh, the Pistons. He has been on the Knicks, the Hawks, and now Detroit. He could be moved again. So I, I wouldn't read... <sighs> We're going to leave our Warriors news as is. If there's another trade involving Kevin Knox, we'll update. But I, I don't think the Kevin Knox edition really changes how I feel about this deal for Golden State. No, it doesn't, well, doesn't change the way I feel at all. I will say. I thought, I thought John Collins might have been in this deal. Which I will say. How I felt. Especially after his first year, I thought Kevin Knox was going to be so good. I thought he was going to be awesome. I liked him going out of Kentucky, and he has not been good since. He's been hor no. he's been horrible. Can we ask Marshall about Kevin Knox? <laughs> yeah, you can ask Marshall what he thinks about Kevin Knox there. That's uh, whew, not great. All right, well, let's update the sub battle right now across our different NBA teams. We we've had cuts today on two on our Lakers. Check my yep. math here. Uh, one on our Warriors. Mavs have been quiet for now, at least. And Coop's mad. Okay, so maybe a, a Christian Wood, Ta uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. trade. Odds coop on the uh, Christian Wood trade. It was at 89 last night. It was down to what, 60 this morning? 61. 61. What is it at now? 54. 54 with under a half hour to go into the trade deadline. Uh, Knicks made the big move last night. Our guy Marshall Green live on that channel right now. And the Celtics. Had a cut for them. Mike yeah, Scott. Absolutely. Are they done with I the half think, hour to go? Done. You think they're done I think now? I think they're done now. Sixers made a trade as well. We'll see if uh, Frickin' Corkmans, Frickin' Corkmans as I call him because he's not good, gets dealt. Uh, you can check out all of our channels. The link's in the description, by the way, for those channels. Just go click and subscribe. If you're a, a fan of the Lakers, Warriors, Mavs, Knicks, Celtics, and or the 76ers, go subscribe. Now we'll do cuts from our live show. If those teams make those trades with 23 ish minutes to go more super chats from cool guy magic buyout better than he signs with the clippers i could see that happening i think the clippers will definitely He's add a, a point guard in the buyout market could be pat bev could be russell westbrook they, they've been aggressive though today with, with eric gordon coming on they've they shipped out john wall i think i'm forgetting and they got they, they got bones highland Bones, Highland, and Gordon. You think they still need one? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Coop thinks Bev is going to, I going forgot about Bones to the Mavs. Yeah. You're convinced he's going there. Thank you, cool guy. Jared Sum, what the hell are the Miami Heat doing? Pat's asleep. That's is a good way Pat to Riley it. cooked? Why for yes and for no? It's a good way to put it. Maybe. Might be asleep. Might be asleep. Maybe he's asleep. Not sure there. Black Order. Let's talk New Orleans Pelicans. Wanted OG Anunoby. It has been very quiet on the Raptors front all day long. They made the Yaka Pirtle trade last night. I've seen nothing of note beyond like, I call it the made-up rumor category, on Siakam or OG Anunoby. Are they I, I, do, I still think the Raps are going to make a move here at the buzzer. At the buzzer. Probably, we're probably going to hear about three minutes after. 21 minutes. And there, it, it's less extreme of like the MLB version when like an hour later, oh, there was a trade that no one knew about, which has happened before. But 15-ish minutes, I think there'll be something there. All right. Thank you, Black Order. Pelicans, uh, thoughts on the, that trade with Josh Richardson? Good deal? Yeah, I think it's a decent deal. I would have liked to see them do a little bit more at the deadline, though. I don't know what, what else they would move, though. Because they're, they're in that. They're the seven seed right now. They're what? A game back of the four seed. They were, what, the two seed before Zion got hurt? They've been playing well this year. Yeah. So I, I I, think it's kind of a patient growth standpoint, but 
We'll see. We'll, we'll see about Miami there. All right, Matt Batten, $2. That's a great trade for the Pelicans. I love it. I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Yeah, it, it, it's a great it, trade for the Pels. Four seconds is like, whatever. It's, it doesn't really, doesn't really right. matter uh, in the end, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe you guys disagree. From Dark, D. Rose to Milwaukee. That has been a conversation about Derrick Rose to the Bucks. The money is really challenging because it, it, the, the Bucks made a big deal for Jay Crowder, sent all this stuff out there, and it, it's very tough. Now, if D. Rose gets bought out, maybe that could make sense for the Bucks there. $10, Marco Ramos. Talk about the Chicago Bulls, please. We've got a trade we'll get to in a moment here after this. It's a, it's a minor one. Uh, the Bulls have done nothing. Hot take. Shouldn't they have made the move for James Wiseman? I would have. I would have liked. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I know. I know they have Vucevic, but like, wouldn't have hated it. You're playing Andre Drummond, and you're bad, or you're mediocre. I guess is maybe a better way of saying it. Just throwing it out there. Two games under 500. I wouldn't have hated it. I, I there there had been rumors earlier in the day of a Zach Levine trade uh, to the Knicks, but that's been kind of silent so far with under 20 minutes to go. You think they'd do anything today, even involving Levine or not? I, I don't think so. You're just saying no to everything I think, here. I, I, don't, I don't think they're going to make a move at this point, which is wild because I think they should have. Yeah, that's fair. All right, thank you, Marco Ramos. I'm, sure, I'm sorry your bowls have been so quiet uh, today. Coops and shambles, by the way over the trade. Let's hit that real quick. I'll verbalize it when the graphic's ready here. The Clippers and Hornets making a deal. Still some asses, I think, to be done here. The Hornets are sending Mason Plumley to L.A. for Reggie Jackson to the Hornets. Explain to me like I'm <laughs> five why the Hornets did this. Uh, they make a lot of interesting decisions as a franchise. Coop says, well, the, the, the ball's not healthy. Jackson might get bought out, which I agree. But they're 15 and 41. Yeah. I, I would assume there's a pick coming. But that's the only thing that makes sense to me from the Hornets. I, I like this deal for, for the Clippers. Yeah. Get a, a, another backup big man in there. For those of you who asked about the, uh, the, the, the prayer emoji, like, I. Interesting there. I, I, Will, do you have thoughts on this? Because I, I, I don't get it for Hornets as it sits right now. I like it for LA, but like Jackson to Charlotte, who, who, who cares? He's going to get bought out. That, that, that would be my reaction to this, is that I do believe Reggie Jackson will get bought out, which is another point guard in the buyout market. We'll mm -hmm. see. Coop, update. Patrick Beverly is not a Dallas Maverick. Reggie Jackson is a Okay. Uh, Coop now thinks Jackson's to the, to the Mavs once he gets bought out. It's going to be a lit buyout market. A lot of guys, I don't think all of them will, but we'll do that video in a little bit here. The Clippers have had a good deadline, too. I like Lumley, Highland, and Gordon. It's been a good deadline for them, I agree. All right, help us be number one on our NBA trade deadline coverage. Like the video. We are uh, 230 likes away from a shot from your boy. Share the video, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, if that's not down again. Uh, text it, whatever. Share it so we can keep growing the channel, get more audience, and be number one on our NBA Live trade, trade deadline coverage. And also make sure you guys are subscribed. YouTube.com slash at chat sports. We do NBA vids. We will have trade deadline buy, uh, buyout candidates, winners and losers from the trade deadline, all of it right here. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Make sure you're commenting all day long and speaking of what's the better nba trade deadline there's there is a right answer here by the way nfl or nba what's better nfl nba the, the, there, there's a right the, answer the, the best trade deadline in sports there's a right answer is MLB. No, but it's between, NBA. But between these two, though, it's NBA. It's for NBA. Sure. This has been the greatest deadline of all time. It's the NBA because the MLB trades a bunch of guys won't impact for three years. Right. NBA wins. And especially with NFL. Like, the NFL deadline's too early. They have to move back for, like, two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks, get more contenders, you'll be fine there. I am pleasantly surprised with 
the amount of movement today across the NBA. It has been shockingly good so far. So get your votes in NFL, NBA. The big deal of the, I guess it still counts as day, because it was after midnight, was right. Kevin Durant, which I, I'm mad it broke it like 1 a.m. Uh, that, that, yeah, that is annoying. I, I was very upset Everyone's well. asleep. N- no one's awake there. It annoys me. But, I mean, huge deal for the Suns. New owner comes in, immediately gets Kevin Isn't that Durant. crazy? Matt Ishpia, man. Second day on the job. Gets Kevin Durant, tells tells front office, like, get this done. It's impressive. And they got it done without trading. I mean, look, Mikel Bridges is a great player, but I thought they'd have to include maybe Chris Paul or DeAndre Ayton in a deal like this. Four first-round picks, okay, that's mm. the same that Rudy Gobert got. I mean, this is a really, really good deal uh, for the Suns. And they get T.J. Warren, who's a solid mm. player as well. I love it for Phoenix. They are the now Western Conference favorites for a reason. We'll go quick on these here. Just give us your brief brief thoughts. We've got uh, 15 minutes to go for the trade deadline ends or wraps up. There's always some deals afterwards in most cases. The other big uh, trade from yesterday was Jakob Pertl back to the Raptors with things quiet outside of that deal for Toronto. Yeah, I, uh, I I thought Pirtle was going to get traded. We just didn't know where. We were hearing several teams mm. linked to him. But he ends up in Toronto, which is an interesting move. I thought a contender might trade for him. But the Raptors, he's played there before. There's some familiarity between him and the organization. Maybe the Raptors are, you know, bet- is it at the time we're talking right now, they haven't traded Siakam. They haven't traded mm. Anobi. They haven't traded some of their guys. So maybe they'll want to try to get back in the playoff contention this year. We'll see. The, one of the several Lakers trades, I should say, involving D'Angelo Russell to L.A., Russell Westbrook, a prime buyout candidate for Utah. Timberwolves get Mike Conley. Brief thoughts on this one here. Yeah, I think the Lakers uh, are the clear winners here, getting D'Angelo Russell and two pretty solid bench players in Beasley and Vanderbilt. Like you said, mm-hmm. I don't expect Russell Westbrook to play one minute for the Jazz. He's likely going to get bought out. You're not crazy about Mike Conley in, in Minnesota, but I, uh, I, I I like it, I think, more than most people. All right. How about the Knicks trade? Josh Hart to New York and Cam Reddish yep. to the Blazers, plus a future protected first. Josh Hart reunited with his college teammate, Jalen Brunson. JB really fired up about that move as it went down. I think it's a good fit for New York. Now, their fans might be a little bit upset they didn't make a huge splash to the deadline, but Josh Hart's a pretty pretty good addition for them. All right, the, this is some of the more minor trades. We'll go quick here. Uh, also, quick note on the Hawks. Who would have seen it coming? Uh, they're not going to trade John Collins. We'll try yeah. it again come draft time. <laughs> uh, the Heat dumped Dwayne Dedman and a second in exchange for our good friend Cash Considerations. The Kings got Kessler Edwards and Cash Considerations to the, uh, in exchange for a player no one's ever heard of who will never come over overseas uh, from the net. So again, salary dump there. Then there was the Kyrie Irving trade to the Dallas Mavericks. Kyrie's already played with Dallas this year. He had a good first game, helped beat the Mavs, a game they never would have won. Without Kyrie, because they can't win without Luka, but they did it that night there. Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, the first two seconds. Big, aggressive move uh, for the Mavericks. Thoughts on this one? Yeah, I mean, this makes the Mavs a legit contender in the West. Luka really needed some help. And I think it's a good trade for Dallas. You're only giving up one future first-round pick, and that pick is six years away. I mean, that guy's 13 years old right now. So this is a really good deal for Dallas. You get Markeith Morris as well. Yeah, it's tough parting with Dinwiddie and Finney Smith, two solid players, but Kyrie Irving is a superstar, and you needed another superstar to pair with Luka Doncic. Some more trades from today. Mike Buscala, the backup big, goes to Boston. Thunder get Justin Jackson. No one cares about that one. And two second-round picks as well. Mike Muscala uh, addresses some needs for Boston. They needed a backup center, and they needed some shooting. I don't expect Boston to make another move today. I like this one. All right, the three-team trade involving five second-round picks. That's happened multiple times today. What a time to be alive here. Uh, the Nets get five second-rounders. The Bucks get Jay Crowder. The Pacers get Jordan Norwa, two second-round picks, and Serge Ibaka. The Crowder aspect, the big deal here, Will. Yeah, uh, Jay Crowder was expected to get moved. Um, he hasn't played all year. He requested trade before the season. There was a little bit of drama between him and Phoenix, so they finally move him 
on deadline day. Uh, the Bucks getting, uh, well, I should say Phoenix trade him to Brooklyn, and then Brooklyn trade him to Milwaukee. Five second-round picks mm-hmm. for a guy like Jay Crowder. <laughs> Pretty crazy, but uh, but the Bucks needed needed some help, and they got it done. Let's go to the George Hill trade here, Jack. I'm not sure if this is part of it or not, but the Bucks and Pacers also agreed to a George Hill trade. Pacers get a second with George Hill. Bucks get salary relief slash cash considerations. I've yet to see that's part of the same deal. It was announced separately, so we'll see. But George Hill back to Indiana. Buyout, maybe? Yeah, we'll Not see. The, I don't Indiana's, know. Indiana's okay, so maybe he'll stay put. All right, the first of two trades involving big men for L.A. The Lakers get Davon Reed and three seconds. And Thomas Bryant, who apparently will requested a trade out of L.A. Yeah, so he was pretty unhappy, apparently, with his playing time after A.D. returned. He put up decent numbers when A.D. was out. So he went to management. He uh, he asked for a trade. They trade him. I think at the time, Tom, we were a little bit confused about why this went down, but then we later heard he requested a trade. But then you replace him with Mo Bamba. Pretty solid move. All right, next up, uh, make sure you guys are subscribed. Free videos every single day right here on Chat Sports, NBA, NFL. We have you guys covered. Hit that sub button right now as the Warriors have made a trade. They've taken the five second round picks and are shipping it to Portland for another reunion. Gary Payton Jr. is back. The second, thank you, Coop. The second is back as a member of the Golden State Warriors. This was the trade that led to it. Uh, Golden State, by the way, saved $74 million in tax on this one here. James Wiseman to to Detroit. Sadiq Bey to the Hawks. Five second rounders plus Kevin Knox. And those five second rounders and Kevin Knox are going to Portland for Gary Payton Jr. Wait. So it's Wiseman for Gary Payton Jr. That's up, what's happened. You just gave up five second round picks for Gary Payton the second. The five second round picks you got. You you essentially you have flipped James Wiseman for Gary Payton Jr. Gary Payton Jr. is I mean, he's but at, he works in Golden State. I get it, but five second round picks for Gary Payton Jr. This this is now a four team trade. He's folks. averaging it's the 4. Pistons, Hawks, and the Warriors, game. and and the Blazers. Basically, this is weird. But Gary Payton Jr. was better in Golden State. They know how he fits in there. He's been he has not played that much this year. We know he works in Golden State when he was averaging seven points a game as a bench player last year. So. It's Wiseman for Gary Payton Jr. in the end. Weird. I mean, okay. It's something. It's better than five second-round picks, right? Does this make you feel any better? No. No? No. I See, I, I disagree. I mean, I guess, I guess it makes a little bit more sense now. but I, I, think, it's, I think it's way better. Yeah. We'll spend some more time on this momentarily, folks, but... This I don't think four team exists. I think it's just two two teams. So we'll do Pistons, Hawks, and Warriors, and and Portland together there. What a bonkers trade deadline! I'm gonna make a new <laughs> pin poll, by the way. Craziest trade deadline of all time. New pin poll for all ten thousand of you watching here. Grade this year's NBA trade deadline. A, B, C, D, or F. The the comments you can do either. For the uh, actual pin poll, there's D slash F, but I don't think anyone's going to do it from there in the end. We've got seven minutes to go here. I think what we can do is we can hold off on this one until after the the deadline ends. Then Coop can build our trade recap, winners and losers, plan that out, and then we'll do the Warriors cut here. So Warriors get Gary Payton. Trailblazers get Kevin Knox in five second rounders i feel better about this deal this deal will you don't have to though yeah i don't know five second round picks for gary payton i mean look they, they it's five seconds who they, cares they flip those seconds oh. it's wiseman for gary payton jr all right i'm fine with it you, you, you feel fine. better now a little bit 
a little bit. A little bit. Uh, so, well, yeah, but Sadiq Bay was. It's it's really like Warriors and Blazers are the two main pieces, and then uh, Pistons and and Hawks are, the, are the, those two main pieces. It, it is a, it is a four team trade technically, uh, but for the Warriors standpoint, Peyton for Wiseman is how it all bounces out there. Pistons do Sadiq Bay for James Wiseman. Hawks do five seconds for uh, Sadiq Bay. And oh, I guess Kevin Knox is a Pistons piece they gave up, but nobody cares about Sadiq Bay uh, from that standpoint. So, bonkers trade deadline. Well, great. This A, B, C, D, or F. How are you feeling about this trade deadline so hey, far? Hey, this is one of the craziest trade deadlines ever. I think this has been a great deadline. Mm. All right, hit that. Uh, sub button, folks. We're going to remind you, folks, of our NBA trade deadline sponsor. That is Athletic Greens. Today's show made possible by Athletic Greens. I take AG1 literally every single day. Yet comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and something that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning and I feel no longer the need for caffeine. I feel energized throughout the day. Plus, AG1 in empowers the gut for whole body health, covering my uh, nutritional base today literally couldn't be any easier thanks to AG1. It's why I trust Athletic Greens. I mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. Done just like that. I also appreciate that it helps me, my whole body health. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. It's a win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then AG1 is perfect for you. They're giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs when you go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Links in the comments and the description. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Big ups to AG1 sponsoring today's show. All right, under four minutes to go on today's NBA trade deadline special. The Warriors of Scott Gary Payton Jr. for Kevin Knox in five seconds, part of the bigger James Wiseman trade. Uh, we are a bit behind on the Super Chats. We can hit those just real quick here. Um, we will, but in a little bit. Yeah. Once the once the once the, yeah. the deadline ends. Okay. All right. Uh, first up from Skull T Y A Catch eighty four just joined. Updates on the Hawks. They traded for Sadiq Bay, and that's it. And they're keeping John Collins. They're going to keep John Collins. John Collins so not getting traded. In the end, Hawks winners. Not I, not bad. I, I think so. Not bad. They improved. Sadiq no. Bay is a great player. Yeah, no one cares great about player. Again, I don't think anyone cares about five second. Rounders there. 20 is a shot, by the way. Mr. Stegosaurus, $10. I hate the Wiseman for Sadiq trade to give you 20 plus a game. We should have someone who can stay healthy on the court for a worse than they need size. Does getting Gary Payton Jr. make you feel better? This was, again, before the trade that came right. in, so we were a bit behind because trades happen. That's what you guys care about. So cheers to Mr. Orris. We're going to have some of these next one here, real quick for me. Yeah, for sure. Will. Jaden Fitch saying AD for Levine. <sighs> And Vooch, I don't think AD built for LA anymore. The, the money doesn't really work, unfortunately. Right. Well, it was interesting, though. The other day when LeBron broke the record, AD was just checked out. Wasn't standing up, sitting down, wasn't watching, wasn't mm. excited. Just, I don't know. Maybe, just hopefully everything's all right with AD, but something was up there, it felt like. All right, Skull Ketcha uh, missed my 20 hour super. We got caught up. Sorry we were behind, my friend, but appreciate you in the super chat. Cheers to you. Matt Batten. Gary Payton Jr. is average. Wiseman was better. It's over. I like. I don't love. I just would have taken Sadiq Bay. That's what. That's why I'm still in yeah. about this. You could have look. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna trade those five second round picks, anyway, just just keep Sadiq Bay. But but GP two is a big fan. Is a fan favorite in in L. A. or in Golden I will say State. This, in the so playoffs last season, he was second in steals per game, fourth in blocks per game, seventh in minutes per game. Good, shot sixty six percent. Good good defender. Good defender. Mr. Stegosaurus, thank you speak for all five of us Piston fans. <laughs> At this trade deadline, wasn't too good for us. 
feel like, I don't know. If Wiseman's good, it's huge. But yeah. Well, where does Wiseman uh, fit with some of those young centers? I don't know. I, I think it's ideally one of them. You have Durant, you have Stewart, I don't know. Ends up being good. It's kind of like what I suspect yeah. ends up happening there. We are under a minute to go until the NBA trade deadline ends. We will have probably five, ten minutes of maybe more stuff happens. One thing that apparently will not happen, a Christian Wood trade. He's staying in Dallas. Coop said it was 80, 81, 89. 89% chance he gets dealt. He sticks around for now in Dallas. If you've enjoyed our coverage, please make sure you guys are subscribed. We will stay live for a while after today's NBA trade deadline coverage wraps up. We'll do some more cuts. We'll do uh We'll do trade buyout or buyout candidates. We'll do deadline winners, losers, full trade recap as well. Make sure you guys are subbed as the deadline ends now. And now we wait for the no more trades uh, bomb there, there will itself. Be, there will be maybe one or two. At will the there be a trade? Why for yes and for no? Yes. Yes, there will, will there be. be a trade at the deadline? We also passed 1,500 likes. It's a shot for me again. How are you feeling, Will, after, after your 10 earlier yeah, today? I feel a little bit buzzed. Yeah, a, little, a, little, <laughs> a little buzzy? I feel a little Hey, I'm glad, I'm glad we had breakfast today. That was essential. Cheers. We will see what happens here. Every five, who likes it a shot? We, we will do another video on this, uh, another segment, I should say, on the convoluted as hell James Wiseman, Gary Payton Jr. trade, which they flipped Wiseman. And then what, 10 minutes or so before the buzzer, they actually got Gary Payton Jr. back? It's a four-team trade. I love the NBA. The Blazers get Kevin Knox in five seconds, which the Warriors got from the James Wiseman trade with the Pistons, who sent Sadiq Bey to the Hawks. And then the Warriors eventually get Gary Payton Jr. back. So he's back in Golden State, which I think will please at least some of the Golden State fans in the end. And it is better than Kevin Knox in five seconds for this team. But we will go five-ish minutes, then we'll, then we'll break that down more in depth here. Will there be a, tra a trade after the buzzer, quote-unquote, of the NBA trade deadline? Y for yes, N for no. Will there be a trade here? Yes or no? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think teams can agree to a trade sent to the league office before mm. the deadline. And it, it does not have to be processed, obviously, by the league office until after the deadline. But you can have trades agreed to. Yeah, and it, it's normally more of a they weren't reported because they're trying to do it at the buzzer so the, the, the leaks just aren't happening because they're too busy. Yeah. They don't have time to send it out there. Um, we'll see if anything else ends up happening uh, in the coming moments, days, uh, whenever things are firm, uh, formally finalized, whatever. The, the trade call can take place later in the day. Um, so we'll see. Every many years, there's a trade that goes down. I don't think, though, the Raptors and the big OG on Yanobi have been rumored for days and weeks now. I don't think that one's going to happen. Pascal Siakam, Gary Trent, crazy those guys didn't get moved. The, the addition of Jakob Pertl makes me think they're going to try to run it back one more year. Yeah. Which, we'll see. I, it's interesting, uh, I suppose, there. I'm not surprised Siakam didn't get traded. And me neither, but I, I thought Anunoby could be. I think there was I, I, interest yeah. there, but maybe the Raptors go, you know what, the East is weaker next year. We can try again. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's their mindset. From Digested Raptor Six, a super chat. Like I've been seeing with these trades, just just a two K strategy. <laughs> Give them another second until they accept. He's not wrong though. One second. Okay, two, three, four. Okay, you took the five. Bet. There we go. Right. He's not wrong. That's I, I, true. I like that one. It's true. It's true. It's true. Give him another second. All right. Who has been the number one trade deadline winner so far? We, we'll include the deals made kind of last night. 
biggest trade deadline winner. You can't say Suns. That's that's too easy. The Lakers then. You know Lakers, the Lakers. Lakers got a lot better. I like it. I'm a big fan of what they did. Uh, they, they made that team better. Mavericks. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't trade Wood. I'm surprised they didn't trade Tim Hardaway Jr. But I would still. kind of just I would kind of just ride with Christian Wood yeah. and like pay him. That's what I would do. But uh, maybe he doesn't love ball. I don't know. I, it's a concern, I guess. I also don't want to trade Christian Wood for like Reggie Jackson. I know Coop wanted to. I'm like, okay, he's worse. Yeah. That doesn't really appeal to me uh, in the end. Uh, super chat from Israel Adam. Clippers got their backup big and got younger with Bones Highland. Great deadline for them. I'm inclined to agree. I like what the Clippers did at the deadline this year. Eric Gordon, Bones Highland, they made uh, Plumley came in too. Aggressive from L.A., Maybe not done the trade deadline or at the buyout market, I should say, but I think a good deadline overall for for LA there. Yeah, I think this is a really good uh, deadline for the Clips. I think they might be the underrated winner of yeah. the deadline. Uh, they got a lot better today as a basketball team. Bones Highlands a really strong addition. Maybe that maybe that's why they won't go after Pat Bev. Uh, by the way, Pat Bev looks like he might be going back to Minnesota. That's something to follow. The buyout market is yeah. going to be lit, so make sure you guys are tuned into us here at Chat Sports. Ten dollars. We'll talk about the Miami Heat. Aldo Mayorga. Are the Miami Heat gonna? Oh, trade? Aldo! Good to see you, Aldo. He's on our Dolphins channel. Will the Miami Heat trade any of their players, and who is uh, most likely going to be playing somewhere else? I, I, it looks I like, Aldo, that the Heat did not make a move. I thought they were going to try to trade Lowry, the, maybe Duncan Robinson. The, uh, I think the issue they ran into is those guys are not positive assets. Yeah, that's a good point. Like I think that's not a good value for those guys. I think that's kind of the well, problem Well, Duncan Robinson, apparently teams wanted multiple first-round picks to take on his contract. It's a, it's a bad contract. Yeah, it's really and bad. the, the Lowry one's though. not that much better either. Some more super chats from King Higgins. Not a Bulls fan, but shocked they didn't make a move. I know some Bulls fans that are very upset. The second straight year, the Bulls are stood pat. They are one of two NBA teams who did not make a deal in some capacity at the deadline. Joining the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, the Heat made a small one. Kings made a small one. You know, other teams made small moves. But the Cavs and Bulls said, nah, we good. Very surprising. Would you say the Bulls are a loser of the deadline? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. It, Bulls they, in the Heat. They, they didn't do anything. Bulls in the Heat. They didn't, they didn't do anything there. Warriors in the middle. Like, war losers slash winners, kind of just talk about them in the middle there. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Matt Batten, Mavs, Lakers, Suns, winners, losers are Warriors and the Nets. Updates from Mark Stein. Minnesota will not pursue wow. a Patrick Beverly reunion. Thoughts on that one, Will? So, conflicting yeah. reports. We're back. Yeah, well, there was a report earlier that said they would maybe pursue him, but um, I don't know. I, I don't think Pat Bev's going to stay in Orlando. So we'll see. But he was just traded from the Lakers to the Magic for uh, Mo Bamba. I don't think he's going to stay in Orlando. All right. Top trade deadline loser so far. Uh, Raptors, by the way, will not officially be trading anyone. So I kind of, seven minutes. I think we're good. I, 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 I think we're done here. I think we're done on the wow. trades. Maybe? I'm not sure. They kept that group together that still has potential, so we'll see. Top trade deadline loser so far. A lot of Nets, a lot, lot of, of Warriors, heat. some Blazers in there too, which, I mean, Gary Payton Jr., you ship him out for Kevin Knox in five seconds. I, sure, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a weird one. Good, good, good questions. Get him or good uh, comments. Blazers, Spurs, Nets. I don't think the, the Spurs are not losers for me because they're tanking. They're they're, yeah. they're not trying to win games right now. So, Cardzilla forty two two dollars. Can you update me on all the moves the Lakers made? 
We will do that here in a little bit. We will recap every trade made and the trade deadline winners and losers as well here momentarily. So stick around there, my friend, I promise you. Aldi Mayorga again. Was the Thunder trade for Dario Saric any good? Thoughts on that one? Well, it just seemed kind of like a eh. under the radar, yeah. smaller get get an asset move. In it's the all end. right. I don't know. You know, it's it's a decent move. The Thunder going to be interesting to see what they do this off season. Have some cap space. You know, are moving in the right direction there in in Oklahoma City. Yeah. All right, Alex Amerling, Lakers fan here. Props to Rob. Let Rob cook. Let Rob Palenka cook. Uh, or was it let GM? Look LeBron Cook, Lee GM Cook. I'm not really sure which one we're doing there. I don't know if there. LeBron, anything to do with his deadline. It's, who knows? It, it's it's either LeBron's fault or his, or his credit, depending on which side of LeBron debate I guess you are there uh, in the end. All right, Mike the Prodigy, $2. Could the Bulls make uh, a, a, I don't know if you mean make a trade or bounce back and do good in the playoffs? The Bulls are in like where you don't want to be, the nine seed. We're like, ah, you're in the playoff mix. You're what, a, a half game back? Yeah. But you're going to be in the play-in game. You're, you're not that good. It's a bad I, spot I, to be in the I, NBA. I don't expect them to get up to the sixth seed and avoid the play-in. I, I think they'll I, be I not, agree. nine or ten. They're in the play-in. They're, they're, they're a game back of the eighth seed. They are to the sixth seed. They're three and a half back. To the 12th seed, they're two games up. Kind of a dicey spot to be in. All right, super chat menu for you guys. $1, shout out. $5, beer cheers. $10, we will discuss your team. 20 for a shot, 100 for a beer bong or a beer shotgun. I don't know if you would prefer the shotguns or beer bongs. Yeah, probably the bong. I like the bongs. It's just a little bit easier for me there in the end. So keep the supers coming. We're going to do some news here in terms of the trades, the Warriors stuff, recap everything here. So get your Supers in with those in a little bit. Help us continue to be number one for our live trade deadline coverage. Jack, you're muted. Like the video. Share the video. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, text it, whatever. Share it for us. Subscribe as well because we'll be live again for NFL offseason NBA stuff, maybe some finals games, some tr uh, buyout stuff. We'll have you guys covered. Hit that sub button right now and keep commenting, including what you thought was the best trade of deadline day. One deal. We'll, we'll go to the, uh, the our Warriors cut next here. What was the best deal of the day for you? I will go Does after, Kevin Durant after the Durant <laughs> Come trade. On. So Come on, when people woke up, best trade of the day. Only one. Man. Um, that's a good question. I think the trade where, man, I don't even know. This you, wasn't the best trade of the day, but Mo, you, Mo, Bamba, you can vote too. Mo Bamba to the Lakers was, was really good. I like that one. Uh, Sadiq Bay to the Hawks, that was a good trade. I kind of like Bones Highland to the, to the Bones, Clippers. Bones Highland. Not the uh, Eric Gordon trade up Eric here to you as well. I, I liked I liked all three moves. Jalen McDaniel's that the Clippers, that the Clippers made today. Yeah, with, Clippers, uh, the Clippers had a, had a yeah, good deadline. Clippers had a really good deadline. Get those votes in. What was the best trade of this year's NBA trade deadline? We'll recap them all in a little bit. But first, more on the four team James Wiseman deal with the Golden State Warriors. We're back for the latest on the Mega James Wiseman deal. A four-team trade for Golden State. It is complicated, so bear with us as we break down what is kind of two separate trades, but also isn't. In the end, the Golden State Warriors are getting back Gary Payton Jr. GP2 has returned to Golden State. This was kind of a separate deal, but will be a full four-team trade when it's done. The Warriors got Kevin Knox and five second-round picks in a previous deal. They've shipped those assets to Portland to bring back defensive star Gary Payton Jr. This was initially the James Wiseman trade. So it ended up not just being James Wiseman and five seconds and Kevin Knox uh, as part of the deal. 
A convoluted four-team trade here. The Pistons get James Wiseman. They send Sadiq Bey to Atlanta. Kevin Knox to uh, Golden State, then to Portland. The Hawks get Sadiq Bey. They send those five second rounders to Golden State, who then reroute it to Portland. So to sum it up here, Will, mm -hmm. Warriors traded James Wiseman for Gary Payton Jr., See, you you were livid <laughs> about the initial James Wiseman trade. Do you feel better now? Yes, yeah, I, I, definitely better about it. Uh, you bring back Gary Payton Jr., like you said, a great defensive player, played a really big role on that Warriors team that won a title last year in the playoffs. He was actually second on the team in steals per game. My thinking, though, here is you let him go. You let him walk last offseason. You could have kept him instead of having to trade five second-round picks for him and include James Wiseman in a deal. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, you, you feel better about this if you're Golden State, the fact that you had a you got a player back in this four-team deal, a player you're familiar with, and it fits really well with your franchise and has played very well for your franchise. Yeah, it's a fit that you know works in Golden State with Steph Curry banged up. Another guard does help in there. Plus, he's an awesome defensive piece. So who here, and I think most of you are, who is excited for you Golden State fans about bringing Gary Payton II back? If you are hyped, type in me in the comment section. If an ad break happens to come here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, spam your me's if you are glad to bring back GP2 to the Bay Area. The numbers this year for Gary Payton don't look great uh, in Portland. They only played 15 games, by the way. Four points per game, averaging still a steal per game, which is awesome. I think the numbers from last year for Golden State, not including the playoffs, which I know you can get to later, Will, 7.1 points per game, uh, shot 36% from deep, uh, 3.5 boards, uh, 1.4 steals, 0.3 blocks. He is one of the better defensive players, I would argue, in the NBA. Got the bag from... Uh, from Portland, now Golden State brings him back to the Bay Area. It's a, it's a, I feel a lot better about the James Wiseman deal getting Gary Payton than Kevin Knox and five yeah. centers. That does not appeal to me, frankly. Yeah, I feel better about it. I don't know if it's still a great deal for Golden State. I would have rather them just kept Sadiq Bay, but still, you bring back GP2, who, like I said, second in steals per game in the playoffs fourth in blocks per game, seventh in minutes per game, shot 66% from the playoffs, over 50% from three in the playoffs. So I think they really wanted to bring him back. And you, yeah. you, made, you made a good point, Tom. Steph Curry's going to be out in a little while. He's going to miss the next couple of weeks. It was really important to acquire a guard. Thought that might be a guy like Peyton Pritchard, but instead they go get Gary Payton. Do here. you redact your waving the white flag yes, comment now? Uh, yes, okay. yes. Which is fair. Things change. Things change. And it's and when, when, we, when that trade went down, we both reacted like something is up here. We were both a little bit confused. Yeah. We felt like the deal might not be done. Of course, got the big game this weekend, Super Bowl Sunday, against the Chiefs and the Eagles. Chatsports.com slash bet. Uh, to get a 125% deposit on BetUS. BetUS is the best place to bet on the game. Again, promo code CHAT125. The Eagles are a one-point favorite. The total is at 51. I'm going to bet on Philly personally, Tom. I'm not sure what you're doing, uh, but I really like that value with Philly as the one-point favorite. And of course, you can't bet on the Super Bowl without betting on the props. I really like the over with the Chris Stapleton National Anthem. Uh, I don't know if that Rihanna wardrobe malfunction is going to hit, but if you think it's, you think something's going to happen there, it's plus 650. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code chat125 to pick up a 125% deposit bonus as we shift back to this trade. And Tom, you know, talk more about Gary Payton and kind of the impact that he could have with Steph Curry being out. There was a report that the Warriors wanted to give minutes to Ty Jerome. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> Gary Payton takes no. those minutes in a major way, especially once Steph Curry comes back. Um, you move on from James Wiseman. It's a lot to admit you made a mistake with that number two overall pick. If they could do it over, they would trade that pick or draft somebody else. Yeah. Wiseman in the end, I guess he just wasn't a fit. It's really disappointing. Injuries have been a big problem there, but that number two overall pick was so valuable for Golden State. And in the end, it becomes bringing back Gary Payton 
that you should have let it. walk to begin with. And they save, I think, like seven million luxury tax this year, thirty million next year, which is valuable. But again, you've got Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, uh, Draymond Green, Wiggins. Kaminga has actually been a d decent player for them, all things considered. I think you have regrets a lot about yeah. that. But I will give them credit for not falling for that uh, sunken cost fallacy and going, you know what? Let's get what we can for James Wiseman. And in the end, that's Gary Payne Jr. is going to be, you know, guard three, maybe guard four. Sorry, Dante DiVincenzo, but I'll give the credit to, to, to Peyton there. It helps It helps the backcourt. I think that's a yeah, big deal for Golden so State. Well. I think so as well, and... You know, you bring up James Wiseman. Steve Kerr even said the other day that Wiseman was in a tough situation. Mm -hmm. He was a young player on a veteran team. Normally, when you're not the when you're the number two overall pick, you don't go a team that is a title contender yeah. each and every single year. It was a really unique, odd situation. And in, 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 in the end, he just was not the best fit. Yeah. We will have you covered on more Warriors stuff, including some buyout candidates in the very near future, probably tomorrow, I would say. Hit that sub button for all the latest on the Golden State Warriors. YouTube.com slash at Warriors TV. Don't miss out on anything else going on. State. We told you, if something else happened, we would update you guys. And that's exactly what happened. So don't miss out. Free videos right here on Warriors Today. Any final thoughts from you, Will, on the, in the end, Gary Payton Jr. for James Wiseman trade? That's really the only guy you got at the deadline, too, is GP2. I would have yeah. liked to have seen them be a little bit more aggressive, especially when you consider what some teams in front of you did. Dallas got Kyrie. Phoenix got Kevin Durant. And the Warriors right now are in a position where they need to kind of stay afloat mm -hmm. with Steph Curry out. I think you have to stay in kind of the seven or eight seed range when Steph comes back to realistically have a shot to make a playoff run. All right, so will the Warriors, who I will make note, about the same record they had this time last year. It's true. Now, Curry's going to miss more time, so that's a big red flag for you. But will they repeat as champs? Why for yes and for no? Get those votes in for us right now in the comment section. All right, why for, I, I think it's a no, by the way. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I Warriors think, fans. I think there's a better chance they miss the playoffs then. Than I mean, they're, they're the nine seeds, so if we include it as only the top eight seeds, yeah. Yeah. That, that would be more likely by a pretty big margin there. Uh, they are a game over 500, game lead over the Blazers, the 10 seed, a game and a half over the Jazz, and the, the Lakers, three games back, but lurking heavily. Yeah. Especially with all Especially their moves, with they, moves made. they made. Right. Yeah. Now, why for yes and for no? Here's what will happen on um, the rest of today's show. We'll hit all the super chats. We will then do our trade deadline winners and losers slash trade recap once that is all good and done there, Coop. Uh, we'll do a mailbag after that. And we can just film buyout candidates outside of live, and that's the, the most sensible play there. So that's the plan. Hit the supers. Uh, NBA trade deadline winners and the full recap, the tracker, if you will. We'll do a mailbag. Get your questions in using hashtag NBA. And then after live wraps up, we will do a trade deadline uh, buyout candidates video. It's going to be a lit, de a lit buyout. Oh, my God. John I can't Wall, wait. Russell Westbrook, Danny Green, maybe, Patrick Beverly. going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. By the way, uh, Furkan Korkmaz, however you pronounce his name, did not get dealt by yeah. the 76ers. Frickin' Korkmazoo. There we go. <laughs> kidding i look I, I will be mean to him because if you're averaging what's he averaging like three three you don't get to demand a trade so i'm gonna mispronounce your name it's fine uh super chat time uh liquid sun gaming you to the crew did a great job today thank you my friend if you like what we did appreciate you Thanks make sure you watching. guys are subscribed from mike the prodigy who's the powerhouse in each conference now Suns, Boston? I would say that. I, I, if I had to predict the finals right now, it'd be Celtics and Suns. I, I, I'm sorry, Denver. Uh, you, Milwaukee's still good. The, God, the West is going to be so awesome playoff time. <laughs> like You might get a, in some order, Nuggets, Grizzlies, Mavs, Suns. Yeah. Uh, I think that's wow. I think that's pretty awesome. Like, I think that's pretty fun there. All right, Matt Batten. Later. Good job today, guys. Thank you. Going to take Appreciate it, for a second for me? Yeah, for sure. Next, uh, any other thoughts on today's deadline for you, Will? I think the Clippers uh, Clippers were the kind of sleeper winner. I don't think people are going to talk about them like they're going to talk about the Suns, 
the Mavs, some other teams, but the Clippers had a really good day. They got a lot better today. Lakers, give them a lot of credit, too. I think Palenka was under a lot of heat to do something. I'm a big fan of what Elliot did there. I really am. All right, we're going to break down some trade deadline winners and losers momentarily, plus recap all the trades from an absolutely lit deadline. Name your biggest winner and loser from deadline day. We will include the last, uh, we'll go up to the Kyrie Irving trade. How about that? We'll go up to the Kyrie, because that kind of that kind of sorted everything. That yeah. that was like the moment of like, okay, shit's going to go crazy here. Biggest winner and loser, Will. And give some sh sh shout outs too. Biggest loser, uh, I'm going to say Miami because they just didn't do anything. Biggest winner, I would say the nah, Suns. Too late. I'd say the Suns because the Suns right now are the favorites to win Maybe the for, the, for the Lakers part. Sorry. Other I'm winner, for the Lakers, Clippers. I mean, obviously the Nets are probably a loser from, from this deadline. Uh, I mean, they went from having a super team a year ago to, you know, having nobody now. Yeah. Pretty all due, all due respect. All right, so get those votes in. Name your biggest winner and loser from the deadline. We will recap that. We'll recap every trade that happened here momentarily. Uh, Travaris, any Miami Heat moves? I don't no. think so. And that's why you may or may not see them on the loser's side there. Um, well, and maybe, uh, sorry, let me do one thing. I can't type right now. <laughs> Get those in. Biggest deadline winner and losers. Once, once I get the all clear, Jack, Jeff. Let's do winners, losers, and then then all the trades. Anything like we, like winners, losers, hit the trades that are relevant. Whatever stuff we don't hit, back end. So it's going to be a deadline winners and losers, then trade deadline tracker for all the deals we don't discuss here on NBA Now. The trade deadline is over, and wasn't it something? A bonkers one with, I thought it was going to be light. It wasn't. It was absolute chaos here. So we're going to recap deadline winners and losers and all the trades that went down all in one video. We will keep it a little bit shorter so that it's not a 45-minute video. With some of our winners early on, the obvious winner, will, we'll go back to the Kyrie Irving trade basically here. The Phoenix Suns get Kevin Durant, a Woj nuke, if you will, where half the uh, the world was asleep for it. Yeah, it happened, what, at 1 o'clock Eastern time, something half like the, half that. Half America was asleep for it. We woke up this morning, and, and we were just stunned by this news. Um, mm -hmm. Did not think Kevin Durant was going to get traded. But did not. Phoenix makes the move. Matt Ishbia takes over as the majority owner just two days ago. He tells the front office, get this done, and they get it done without having to trade DeAndre Aiden or Chris Paul. They keep that young, not young, but they keep that core together while giving up Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, mm -hmm. four first-round picks. I mean, four first-round picks. I mean, Rudy Gobert, that, that's what they gave up for yeah. Rudy Gobert. So I think this is a really good deal for Phoenix, and it makes them the West favorite right away. I think we're all in agreement the Suns owned this deadline thanks to the KD trade, which was really kick-started by the Kyrie Irving trade request. He goes to Dallas, who made only this move of the deadline. Markeith Morris in exchange for Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, a future, 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 future? I think my Matt's right there. First round pick and a pair of second rounders. Big, big win for Dallas. Yeah, huge win for Dallas. They really needed another star to pair with Luka. Luka needed some help. This is a Mavs team that made the Western Conference Finals last year, but have kind of been going uh, back and forth this year on wins and losses. They're just a little bit over 500 right now. So when Kyrie Irving became available, I believe Mark Cuban in the front office was very mm -hmm. determined to get this done, and they do it just giving up one future first-round pick that's six years from now. I understand that he's a free agent. There's a risk of losing him this summer, but still, you had to go win-now mode for Dallas, and they did that. All right, the next deadline winner, I love what the Los Angeles Lakers did. I am a huge fan of all the moves they made, a fairly massive roster overhaul, which technically began with the Rui Hachimura trade. That was a while ago, so we won't count it that much. But the three-team D'Angelo Russell deal, which they get D'Lo back in L.A. It was a deadline of reunions, at least yeah. for the time being. Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt. It cost them in the end. Russell Westbrook, Juan Toscano, Anderson, Damian Jones, and a first. Timberwolves involved. We'll talk about them later on, by the way. 
I love what LA did at the deadline. They also flipped out Thomas Bryan and Beverly for Mo Bamba and Picks. I, I love what they did. Give Rob Link a lot of credit. He was under a lot of heat after not mm-hmm. really doing enough this offseason, this past offseason. He goes out at the deadline, and he just cooked, man. I mean, uh, what I, he did was really impressive. Like you said, uh, some of the other moves they made, the smaller moves, bring in Hachimura, uh, trading Thomas Bryant but replacing him with Mo Bamba. That Mo Bamba deal was huge. You needed some depth behind Anthony Davis. They got that deal done as well. But this is a much better basketball team than they were a week ago. Yeah, so three down, two more to go on our deadline winners. So let's hit the San Antonio Spurs. A, a bit of a tanking move, trading away Jakob Pertl, but a lightly protected future first-round pick from the Raptors. I like that move for San Antonio. Will. Yeah, they turned down an offer from Boston earlier that included Peyton Pritchard, Danilo Gallinari, a couple mm-hmm. second-round picks. But this is a Spurs team that, like you said, they're in tank mode, they're in rebuilding mode. They want first-round picks, and they got one here. For Jakob Pertl, also two second-round picks, and they got a lot of second-round picks in the Josh Richardson trade as well. Now, yeah, another move. They we, look. The Spurs are tanking. We know that about San Antonio. That's fine. It's not a big deal from that standpoint in terms of blowing things up. All right, we will get to losers here in a moment. The pinned comment on today's video. Name your biggest winner and loser from today's NBA trade deadline. Do it both at the pinned comment. So we'll buy you some time if the ad break comes. Just ignore it. You're, you're commenting, right? Head down there. Let us know your biggest winner and loser from today's NBA trade deadline. One more winner. How about the L.A. Clippers? I loved the Lakers, L.A. You love the Clippers, L.A. Yeah. moves here, Will. I thought they were kind of the sleeper winner from this deadline. People aren't going to talk about them the way mm. they're going to talk about the Suns, the Mavs, and the Lakers. But this Clippers team became a lot better today. Mm. Some of the moves they made, they got Bones Highland for really a steal, Two in seconds, my opinion. Yeah, Mason Plumley they get from Charlotte. Didn't have to give up a whole lot. Uh, to get him. So I really like what the Clippers uh, have done here at the deadline. You know, they didn't make a huge splash like some other Western Conference contenders made, but they'd still got a lot better as a basketball team. Give a lot of credit to the Clips. Let's hit some of the losers now, and we'll go quicker on some of these, like the Nets. We know why they're losers. The Kyrie Durant dynasty that never was. And it just never happened. Blew up in their face. So they got some decent pieces back for the KD trade, but... Durant and your big deal is Kale Bridges. That's that's not enough. That's that's it's you're never gonna get value for KD. It stinks that he's gone for Brooklyn. Minnesota. So we're trying Mike Conley, Rudy Gobert, but instead of Donovan Mitchell, it's Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns. Right. That's better, but Mike Conley and Gobert are not what they once were. I think they're going for the Mike Conley, CP3-esque veteran influence on the young guys, but I I think they max is like a four seed in the West. So to invest all that, I just, I, I'm just not a Man, fan. After, after, I'm, I'm after worried about some of these deadline moves, I don't know if they're going to be higher than seven in the West. I mean, I, I like the Conley move a little bit more than you do. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Uh, But still, I mean, the moves that the T-Wolves have made in the last year with the Gobert trade and... There's been some questionable decisions. For a All team right. that was really up and coming, it looked yeah. like. The Bulls and the Heat. We can group these two together because um, they didn't do anything of note. I, I'm not really sure what they're aiming for there. Well, the Bulls were in a do tough something. spot. They, were, they didn't know whether to buy the deadline or sell the deadline. And they did neither. They did absolutely nothing. The Heat, they want to contend for the East. They were in the Eastern Conference Finals just last year. I think that Heat fans expected them to go after a Kyrie Irving or a Kevin Durant. They were in talks maybe for both those guys. They didn't get either of those guys. They don't trade away Kyle Lowry. Hmm. This was a disaster of a deadline for the Miami Heat. It couldn't have gone worse. They didn't do anything. They don't get Duncan Robinson off the books. They don't trade Kyle Lowry. They don't trade for anybody that can help them win right now. We're going to cheat a little bit here on the Hawks. I actually like the Sadiq Bay acquisition. I don't really get the Raptors adding Jakob Pertl, but the every single year, John Collins trade. Right. And that frankly, it's multiple times per year, and it never happens. So I'm putting the Hawks on the loser side because I don't think it's a good thing for your roster to have one of your better players being, well, do I get dealt this month? No? Check in again in three months. That's a bad thing. The Raptors. I'm not sure what their long term is. Is it to build around Siakam and Anunoby? I'm not so sure. It's just 
No OG trade, no pass, which is fine, but you're also moving assets for uh, for Jakob Pertl. It, I'm not sure what those long-term plans are, despite some decent front office members there. Now, if you want to bet on the NBA come playoff time, in games, or the Super Bowl coming up this weekend, use our sportsbook partner, Bet. US. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125. It's 125% deposit bonus. That's chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125. 100 bucks down, minimum, gets you 125% deposit bonus. The Eagles, all you Sixers fans out there, they're a one point favorite against the Chiefs, and there are so, so many prop bets, including, but not limited to, by the way, the over-under on the national anthem by Chris Stapleton. You're going with the over, right, Will? Uh, over. Hundred, I, every I, single year, you got to go over. And I, that. of course, am going with the no on the potential Rihanna wheel, uh, uh, wardrobe malfunction, but that's just me in the end. You can do it on BetUS, chatsports.com, slash bet, promo code Cowboy or chat 125. Let's hit all the trade details here, Will, for the deals that have gone down that maybe we've discussed. Have we'll go rapid fire, okay. hit like five in a row for me. Fire, yeah. Kyrie Irving, awesome move for the Mavs, makes them a contender right now in the West. Right. The Suns Durant trade, this was a no brainer, yeah. Kevin Durant makes the Suns probably the favorites in the West. I mentioned the Mavs are probably contenders, but the Suns are the favorites here. I thought a Kevin Durant deal would give the Nets a lot more, maybe a young star. Mm. I think this is a really good deal for Phoenix. In the end, 16 trades between today and yesterday. We mentioned the, the Jakob Pertl trade. I think the Spurs win this one for the first, basically. I, I think this is this could go either way. Mm -hmm. uh, Toronto brings back Pertl, a guy they're familiar with. I'm sure they'll want to work out a long-term deal with him. He's a free agent this summer. The three-team trade from yesterday, D'Angelo Russell. We kind of spent some time on this here. Didn't mention the Jazz side of it, though, in our winners-losers standpoint. What do you think of what the Jazz got back here? Um, They're going to buy mean, out they, Russ, they, they'll by buy the way. Out, they'll buy out Westbrook. They get a first-round pick. Danny Ainge is all about adding drop capital. How about the Knicks and the Blazers trade from last night? Really like this for the Knicks. I think the Knicks are the winners here. And Cam Reddish needed a fresh start again. So hopefully he goes to the Blazers and finds success. But Josh Hart reunites with his college teammate, Jalen Brunson. This was some of the more minor trades. Dwayne Dedman and a pick for cash considerations. Miami did something, yeah. technically speaking. They did, they did something. Uh, the Kings also did something, technically speaking. Uh, David, too many vowels to pronounce that name, goes to the Nets for Kessler Edwards. It's a salary dump move there. The Celtics are the host of that channel. Yep. They made a deal for Mike Muscala. Justin Jackson, two seconds going that way. I think it's a great deal for the Seas. They needed shooting. They needed a backup big. They got both in this deal. I think it's a decent deal there for the Celtics. We were live, by the way, when that trade went down. We were what, live after yeah. three minutes. It three was minutes. great timing. We were live for the entirety of the NBA trade deadline. So if you want that next year, buy out candidates coming later tonight on Thursday. Hit that sub button for the best NBA, NFL, and yes, college football coverage right here on Chat Sports. All right, we'll do the, the two Bucks and Pacers trades together here. Uh, Jay Crowder to Milwaukee. He did not play this year. The Nets get five second rounders. There were multiple trades involving five seconds. What a time to be alive. The Pacers get Jordan Norwa, two second round picks, Serge Ibaka to make the salary work. And in a separate but also not separate trade, Indiana brought back George Hill for salary cap relief. I think yeah. those two in the end will kind of be tied together, but just a note on that. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. Something's up where I think those two trades kind of go together, just the way it looks, just the way I'm looking at it. Let's hit these two Lakers trades there. So Thomas Bryant requests a trade allegedly out of L.A. Lakers get Davon Reed in three seconds. They send one of those seconds along with Patrick Beverly. For Mo Bamba, you're a big fan of this deal. Really, really like yeah. the Mo Bamba deal. Well, Thomas Bryant. Because of the song, right? Exactly. Yeah, and, and the fact he's he's a good Thomas Bryant replacement. Thomas mm. Bryant requested a trade, wasn't happy with his playing time. So you trade him, get a couple second-round mm. picks, then give one of those second-round picks to Orlando and Patrick, and Patrick Revel included uh, to get Mo Bamba. Now, Denver got Thomas Bryant. They also shipped out Bones Highland. 
to the Clippers for two second round picks. We'll spend some more time on LA with other deals, but I like this one a lot for LA. Highland's got defensive issues, but he can be a nice guard and for just you. Just two second round picks. I mean, the yeah. Warriors traded five second round picks for Gary Payton. It's so free. Two second round picks. It's free. It's free. Exactly. It's free. All right. Another three team trade. Matisse Steibel on the move. Uh, in exchange, to, he goes to Portland. Jalen McDaniels to the Sixers. Hornets get a couple seconds, and Svi McCalluk, which is, I think Sixers won this deal. I think the Sixers are the winners of this deal because you get Jalen McDaniels, you give up Thibault. I think that's somewhat a pretty big upgrade. Yeah. The four. All right, Thunder and Suns, kind of under the radar here. Dario Saric and a second. For Darius Baisley, kind of an under-the-radar Suns move overshadowed by the whole, you know, Kevin Durant trade yeah. thing. Thoughts ba on this Baisley's one? Baisley's been a decent player. He's had an interesting uh, career. Uh, was committed to Syracuse, opted out at the last minute, decided to sit out a year, and still becomes a first-round pick by the Thunder. Develops decently well there. Now he's on his way to Phoenix. All right, the Houston Rockets and Hawks made a trade. I believe there is second-round picks involved here. I'll double-check this, but... Uh, Thoughts on this trade here, Will? It's, it's a, just a lot all, going it's, it's on, I know. It's all about salary for Atlanta, I think, clearing up salary. Mm. Uh, Garrison Matthews had a really good year last season in Houston, kind of a breakout year. He has not been as involved this year. Hopefully Atlanta kind of gets him going again. Uh, Houston also gets two second-round picks as part of this deal. Okay. Then there was the Eric Gordon-John Wall trade. So a lot going on here. Houston gets John Wall. They're, they're, they're going to waive him. Danny Green, we'll see if he sticks around. Clippers get Eric Gordon, three seconds, and pick swap rights. I think uh, Houston gets that, right? Houston sent that yes. to L.A.? Yes. So that's kind of a complicated part there. Memphis gets Luke Kennard to, I, I don't know, be involved, I guess. What, he can shoot. It's kind of sort of still. So, so. Houston gets uh, pick swap. So they originally had the Bucks pick. Now they have the Clippers pick. So uh, now that would be the 18th overall selection as opposed to the 28th. So pretty good deal for Houston. Big, big jump up there, and yeah. they move on from Eric Gordon. As they eventually they finally Finally, do it. I know. They, they did for, it, right? for years. All right, Pelicans get Josh Richardson, Jay Rich to New Orleans for Devonta Graham and four seconds. The Spurs very clearly in asset acquisition mode. It should have been five so we can keep the meme going. Exactly. It should have five been five. Five seconds is just a meme right now, and I love it. I like Josh Richardson on the Pels. I think he's going to contribute there. All right, the other Clippers trade, Mason Plumley for Reggie Jackson, which maybe there's more going on here, but I have not seen anything else yet, which is I, I, don't, I don't get it for, for Houston. I, I, or for, sorry, or for, 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 for Charlotte. For the Hornets, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't we'll get see. It. He, might, he might get bought out. Very possible. Which then, then he could have either. gotten more for Plumlee. Either, either way, it's whatever. Sense. Then there was that four-team chaos trade. Gary Payton Jr. goes to the Warriors. Uh, Gary Payton II, thank you. Uh, Kevin Knox in five seconds go from Portland, originally from the Hawks slash Pistons. Detroit gets James Wiseman. Hawks get Sadiq Bay. Of the four teams involved, who wins this one, Will? The, uh, I'm going to say the Hawks. Mm. Sadiq Bay's a really good player. I like okay. this move a lot. And then James Wiseman. Honestly, James Wiseman might be the, the, the big winner. He gets okay. a fresh start in the Yeah, That's a good point. Yeah. Of all the trades, the 16 last like 24-ish hours, what was your favorite trade that went down today? Let us know right now in the comment section. It's an awesome deadline, man. Awesome. Uh, Maybe I, the best of all time. I thought it was going to be kind of quiet. It wasn't. Oh, I forgot to mention. Thank you, Coop. Uh, Woj beats Shams 11 to 10. Of all the different moves that have gone down. Wow. Woj wins. Wow. So, <laughs> Woj, Woj back on top, at least for now. Uh, ESPN's made him do too much on-air stuff, so we can't quite get the tweets out that fast. All right. Favorite trade. The Spurs trade. Lakers. Raptors trade. Kyrie trade. Durant is an obvious one there. And Daniel Gutierrez Heat trading for cash, sad face. Yeah. Yeah. That's not fun for Miami. Very sad. Roly, our, our Heat fan here, I is like going to be the in Bones, I like the Bones Highland trade a lot. I do too. Uh, it's lot. just not, not enough there. All right. Mailbag is coming up here momentarily. So use hashtag NBA or Super Chat to get on the show. Uh, I think we will include uh, the $10 from Aldo as part of that. And you know what? Aldo. 
We're at the, how many, what do you add in supers? We're at 565. To get some time here, how about this? Any $10 super that comes in, I'll take a not that needed. And let's, do you have to go to the bathroom? You have to pee, Will? You have to pee? I, I, no, I, Cause I, I'm I, good. I'll go this one. I don't need to, but it's more fun this way because it's entertaining. <laughs> Every $10 super that comes in, if there's a question with it, a question has to have a question. Has to have a question. I'll do a shot for All right. before the mailbag. So go Will Solo here. Get your questions in using hashtag NBA. Every $10 super that comes in, if there's a question for the mailbag, I'll do a shot for. All right. So get those in. Get, I, I did nine. I don't, I don't need one. I want one. you to do more than nine. Ah, we'll see on that one. Get those supers in. Clock starts right now. All right. Super chat. Every $10 super chat we get between now and the time we start the mailbag, Tom Downey's got to do a shot. All I'm saying is that earlier I had to do nine shots. So 10 shots, uh, 10, $10 super chats. Let's make it happen. I see Josh Prince in the chat saying Pistons will win it all next year. And maybe not next year, but uh, I, think they'll, I think they'll make the playoffs next year. I think they'll be a playoff team. Mr. Awesome Guy, yeah, Woj, uh, I don't disagree with that. FTJ. John Wall and Russell Westbrook about to be sitting on the couch. I think I think Russ will generate enough interest. I don't feel the same about John Wall. His digested Raptor has sent in a ten dollars super chat. Oh yeah, and by the way, all these are going to go in the mailbag as well. Ten dollars super chat with a question. We'll go in the mailbag. Bandit saying Lakers should get John Wall. I doubt it after the D'Angelo Russell move. Uh, I don't. Yeah, use hashtag NBA to ask the question. Hashtag NBA to ask the question. Um, I don't know if John Wall's getting enough anywhere, to be quite frank. I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I hope he's not done. I'm, I'm a John Wall fan. I like John Wall. But he, he, might, be, he might be done. Uh, Russ, I think, will end up... Um, I want to say with the Clippers, but they just got Bones Island and Eric Gordon. So, I don't know. Aldo saying the Heat sleepers. You're talking about in terms of winning the title, Aldo? Oh, man, I I don't think the Heat had a good enough deadline. They'll, they'll, they'll make the playoffs, obviously. Maybe the four, the five, maybe the six seed. Uh, but it's going to be tough for them to make a run. Um, I would agree, Aldo. I, I do believe the Celtics will win the NBA title. Uh, they didn't make that many moves today, but they didn't have to. They, are, they already have a really good roster in place. Now, Jalen Brown is expected to miss some time. Uh, so I don't know, uh, you know how much he's going to miss. Again, got a mailbag coming up. Hashtag NBA or Super Chat to get on the show. Hashtag NBA or Super Chat to get on the show. we got a little sub battle going on right now with all of our channels. Lakers Report, Knicks Now, Warriors Today, Celtics Today, Mavericks Today. 76ers now so be sure to go and subscribe to our team channels i know the uh lakers report picked up a lot of subs recently Knicks now as well if you're a celtics fan go subscribe to celtics today have a little sub battle who, who can get the most new subs this week during the trade deadline season excellent and producer jack's putting a link for each of the channels in the chat we got we got it we got two. Alright, I'll watch it one more time. Not far. Still have time to get those ten dollar super chats in. Tom Downey's not quite mic'd up yet. Still time to get those ten dollar super chats in. Gotta be with the question though. Gotta be with the question. Last call, mailbag coming up in sixty or sixty or so seconds. So go down. And get your questions in with those $10 Super Chats. Last call. He is still he's not on screen yet. Last call. Get those $10. I, I did nine shots, Tom. I'm daring you guys. You're, you're going to get lucky you. and only have to do two or three. I'm ready. I'm built different. I don't even need to pee, but I gave you guys a chance How's that for pizza it? taste? Cold. <laughs> Oh, uh, Junior. We'll still, we'll still, we'll still put Junior. We'll still put, we'll still put Junior Super Chat on the on the mailbag. Still put it on the mailbag. All right, Tom. Welcome back. I'm back, baby. 
Welcome back. Two shots, you say? Yes, sir. I'll give a half for for Junior's five dollar one. That's fair. <sighs> Hit that one wheel for me. Air four Woo! five six. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for tuning in. We had a really good time. Appreciate y'all watching and subscribing to the channel. Again, mailback coming up. Hashtag NBA or Super Chat to get on the show. Hashtag NBA or Super Chat. Tom Downey's doing some shots right now for our last couple Super Chatters. A lot of interesting questions that we're getting I see in the chat right now. We're going to have to discuss that coming up. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. All right. You ready, Will? Let's do it. You ready, Jack? Yeah, make sure there's just like a couple generic Waynes to go to. Awesome. Let's ride. All right. Last call, Super Chat, hashtag NBA. I want to get on today's mailbag. The NBA trade deadline is over. Myself, Tom Downey, and my boy Will Scott were live for the entirety of the trade deadline. Something like five hours live, or in the words of Mitchell Renz, we were live for 25 hours in a day, which doesn't make any sense there. A mailbag now coming up, answering all your questions from the live show, the, the wrap-up version. From Aldo, honestly, just because Miami didn't make any moves does not mean they will be bad. They have Bam, Jimmy, Oladipo, he's, if he's healthy, Hero, some emerging awesome young players, some sleepers, maybe. Are you on board with that one, Will, with Miami not being bad this year? No, they're not bad. Um, there's no question about that. And they're actually starting to play really good basketball as of late. I think they've won seven or eight of their last ten games. So they're starting to play better, Aldo. But I think they need to be more aggressive the deadline to Six be a legit seed right now. contender in the East. That would be my thought. There's they're, a big gap from the uh, games behind between the five and the seven. Yeah. With the Heat there at nine. But the, the Nets are part of that. They could still be a top five seed. They could be. Can they get to four? I'm not so sure. Be tough. From Digested Raptor 6, Bucks Dark Horse winner, as in trade deadline winner and loser, for, for getting Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder's a really sure. solid pickup. Now, it, how soon is he going to be ready to contribute in a big way? He hasn't played mm. all year. Yeah. Maybe sooner rather than later. We'll see. I think he fits what the Bucks like to do on offense and on defense, frankly. Yeah. Um, it's an upgrade, but are they better than Boston? Maybe. No. It depends on, it depends, uh, honestly. How far will Giannis carry them? Now the Bucks have won carry? eight straight games, so nine. They're on the last ten. They're on. They're on fire right now. They're a game and a half back of that coveted one seed in the Eastern Conference. From Travis Doily, having has Detroit made any moves today? Slash reaction to their moves. Well, they got James Wiseman. Got James Wiseman you got James Wiseman giving up Sadiq Bay. We'll see. I mean, we we're talking about this as it went down. How does James Wiseman kind of fit? With some of those other guys, Jalen Duran, Jalen Duran, Isaiah Stewart, we'll mm -hmm. see. Uh, but James Wiseman could be a really pleasant surprise in Detroit. You know, I they, hope we, he is. We could look back a year from now and went, "Wow, they got James Wiseman," or they went, "Why'd they trade for James Wiseman?" Like, I, feel like I feel like there's, feel like there's not that much in between uh, in the end for where they currently sit. So, Detroit. Look, we will keep an eye on that uh, with where they currently sit, but they're in a fun shape. Of course, the Wiseman trade, the Warriors eventually got basically Gary Payton Jr. for him. So did the Warriors do enough to compete in the West? They're the same, almost same record that they were this time last year, which how that ended up. Did, did they do enough? Why for yes and for no? Get those votes in for us in the comment section. It's the pinned comment on today's show. Why for yes and for no. From Junior, which is maybe Producer Coop's burner account. I am disappointed the Mavs didn't make another move. We should have went after Mo Bamba or Crowder or a Harrison Barnes unit to defend the Suns. I don't know how much you're going to get done in the end. They, they, the yeah. assets just they, they got Kyrie. Really there. They got Kyrie. And you know what? I, I didn't. I didn't think it'd be a good move for them to give up Christian Wood without getting a, another player in return. I agree. I'll put it to you this way. If I had told you two weeks ago, you get Kyrie Irving at the line, and that is it. Yeah. I think everyone's feeling pretty good. Yeah. Now, the fact that it was the day before, and you had the whole buildup with no finish, I understand the disappointment there, but I think it was overall good deadline Absolutely. for the, for the, the Mavs. The Mavs are a winner at the deadline. Yeah. From Aldo, is the NBA coming to the end of an era where LeBron and all his 30-something players are close to retirement? Is the NBA going to be more exciting or boring? Hmm. Loaded question there, Will. What do you have? 
I, I, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, you're going to miss LeBron as yeah. an NBA fan. Uh, I still think he has a couple years left in him. But there's a lot of young talent in the league. I mean, Tatum, Luka, a lot of those guys, John Morant, they're all under 24, 25 right now. So mm -hmm. I, think that's, uh, I think that's really promising for the league going forward. And there's a lot of – LeBron is one of the greatest ever. There will be a new greatest ever at some point. And who is that, or, you like, think? Maybe he's not in the league yet. We'll see. Maybe it's Victor Ma Robignana. Just oh, throwing it out there. Okay, all right. To, to hype up a guy who has not played in the NBA. Or maybe but it'll be Bronny. The, no, the yeah. last time we hyped up a player at that level, it, LeBron lived up to it, which was in, yeah. which is what makes it so insane. So the NBA will, will be fine in the end. Uh, it's just it's just going to be a little bit different, just like it was after Jordan. In between Kobe and LeBron, it'll be it'll be a little bit different. From XX Epic Jet XX, you think the Cavs should be able to move to the deadline, or do you think they're fine? I'm of the mindset, hey, you got Donovan Mitchell. That was your big swing before yeah, the year began. That's true. Um, I, think I think they'll be good. Um, I thought, I don't know, maybe maybe Bojan Bogdanovic would have been a decent move for them, sure. but he didn't get moved. So I, I think the Cavs are, are in a decent spot. Timing right matters here, but hey, you had come in and you were, if I had told you you got Donovan Mitchell before the year began, you would have said, awesome. But if I said, hey, we can't make any deadline moves, you're like, it's fine. Yeah. We got D-Mitch, so yeah. timing matters, but I, I like what the, where the Cavs are at there, Will. Why don't you tell us about today's sponsor Absolutely. for I'll the mailbag? Absolutely. i second tell you all about Athletic Greens. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's show. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chatsports. I give AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and wanted to supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 every morning, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. I came into this year wanting to get healthier, and starting my year in AG1 has helped me do just that. I take it every morning. I feel happier, healthier, and more energized. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be any easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. Done. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day. That's pretty good if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. Win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chatsports. Check it out. The link is in the comments and the description of today's video. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash chatsports. I started AG1 a few weeks ago. I'm already seeing the benefits of it. You will enjoy it as well. Go check them out. That link is in the comments and the description. All right, more mailbag questions. Should the Mavericks go after Russell Westbrook for the uh -huh. second unit? No. I got producer Coop, who's our Mavs expert, going, I, I, don't, I don't know if you want Russ and Kyrie and Luka on the same team. Yikes. No. Now, Beverly, Reggie Jackson, who apparently will be bought out, eh, it's a different conversation, I think, in terms of that extra ball handler, though. I would just ride with Jaden Hardy, but I'm, but I'm a crazy person, too. So I like Hardy a lot. Uh, from Rogue Brothers, do we know if the Clippers put Plumlee or Highland in the $9.7 million trade exemption? Um, Got to think back here. I think they put Highland in there. Okay. Because they sent out Jackson for Plumlee. So my guess, and I could be wrong here, so keep that Highland in mind. Highland salary is under 9.7. So, uh, yeah, I would assume they use that. So I would assume they put Highland in there. I I'll Eventually, the numbers and stuff will get evened out, but... Uh, I think they put Highland in there, or at least used part of it. Maybe split it across a little bit there. So uh, keep that in mind. Good, good question, Rogue. That stuff always comes out afterward. Christian Mitchell, feel about Westbrook going to Phoenix for backup guard help? Can you reunite imagine? with KD? Can you imagine? It's fun. I I feel like the Suns are not going to. No, but it'd be fun. It would be fun. For the memes Chris alone. Paul, Chris Paul has injury issues. He's getting up there, so maybe have some depth behind I, him. I think the Suns would look elsewhere than I, trying I to so do too. the KD. I think the KD Russ stuff. I want to see it because it's funny, but my hopes are not going to get up there. Shade your streams. I think the Pistons could develop James Wiseman. Thoughts on that deal? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he gels with some of those other centers like uh, Isaiah mm -hmm. Stewart and like Jalen Duran. Those guys have showed a lot of promise. But at the, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. James Wiseman needed a fresh start, and he, he, he needed one badly. So good for him uh, going to Detroit. A, a good young team. Has a lot of young talent. 
Yeah. Which trade of the two big, sexy blockbusters for the Nets uh, dynasty that never was, which trade was better? Type in D for Kevin Durant or I for Kyrie Irving. Let us know right now in the comments section which trade you thought was better at this year's roughly NBA trade deadline. True allure, the Warriors the favorites win the championship. Not even close. They're barely cracking the top five right now. That's Curry's going to miss I time. Think top five is generous, too, with Steph Curry yeah. injury. And they're, just, they're defending champs, I know. There's a lot of money on them, to be fair, but they're not the favorites at the Suns right now in the Western Conference. Christopher C., hot take. The Thunder created roster space for the offseason. They will get the first pick to get Victor Weminyana. He's either a Thunder or a Spur. I have no doubts about it. I would say he's a Rocket. You you want him on the Rockets. It's not going to happen, though. Uh, I'm an optimist. The the, uh, the the tankathon leaderboard was... as we sit right now. Houston's one. Detroit, San Antonio, Charlotte. Thunder actually kind of further down. But remember, they have all of the assets because Presti just hoards them. From Josh Fever, D'Lo is back, baby. I love his fit in L.A. Uh, that type of player, that guard who can handle the ball, w ball when needed and still be in the corner and actually shoot is exactly what you want yeah. alongside LeBron and AD. Frankly. Now, the defense, sure. it's not pretty. And you lose Pat Pat. But in the words, the Rams said F them picks, F defense. <laughs> yeah. Just score. You're fine. Just score. That's what the NBA Just is score. nowadays. All right, when it comes to the Lakers, are they going to be a playoff team? On the, they're on the outside looking in. They made that. I think they made that roster better. P for they'll make the playoffs. L for they end up being a lottery team. Get those votes in right now. Shamal, either Russ, Reggie, or Pat Bev going back to the Clips in a bot. Now, uh, Coop, I know you're in more in the nitty gritty. Beverly can't go back to the Clippers, right? You have to wait until after, is it June 1st, July 1st? July 1st, I think is. So can't be, uh, can't be Reggie. Bev or Russ, I think could though. Uh, in yeah. the end, and I wouldn't be that surprised. There was some interest that the, the, the Clippers wanted Russ. Wouldn't have to move. Could just stay True. in L.A. True. It makes life easier there. So thank you, Sham Allen. Gwendolyn Hill, Gary Payton Jr., returning to the, to the Warriors. Wow. <sighs> they got, basically a flip for GP2 for Wiseman. Very interesting. Basically straight up. But I think you made a good point earlier with Steph Curry injury. Having some guard depth yeah. is even more important than they get GP2 back. A guy that and he's obviously very comfortable there. With uh, Curry out, it'll be Jordan Poole, uh, Clay Thompson, and of course, Dante DiVincenzo, yeah. Gary Payton Jr. as well. If you want more NBA, NFL, and college football coverage, hit that subscribe button today here on YouTube. Free videos every single day, multiple times per day, right here on Chat Sports. Question for you guys, which trade was better? I'll do one last call here for any supers. And likes. Nah, we just end it. Uh, we are 200 likes away from a shot. Which could be done by you or by me. I'm open to either there. I've already there. taken nine. <laughs> uh, other very small news note. Uh, Quinton Jackson, a two-way contract for the Wizards. So, you know, whatever. Uh, it's fine on that front there. 200 likes away. Any supers that come in? We'll stay live, but we got other cuts to do, so I'll, I'll put a minute on the clock here. Reggie Jackson buyout. Yeah, that one's... Not a surprise. I wonder where he goes. You want him for the Mavs, Coop? You, you want him real bad? I'll take Beverly or Jackson. Beverly or Jackson for the Mavs? Thinking uh, maybe Mavs rumors today and then buyout candidates tomorrow? Christian Wood tweeting out, beat y'all's trade rumors. Do another one. Just thought. Thought. It's hot right now. Uh, uh, let's see, we got 20 seconds left. I'm sure it is. It's Gary Payton Jr., baby. It's, it's, it's heat. Whatever. Second junior tomato tomato. There's no difference. There's no difference. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. No, it's the full name. Whatever, it's fine. It's fine. All right, we will have some buyout candidates 
for you guys later on tonight. Make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out. We appreciate every single person who tuned in here on our live NBA trade deadline coverage. We'll see you guys again in the future. Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash at chat sports.